بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I uh, hope you all are doing well Alhamdulillah we got uh, our you know guests that you guys already know mashallah we got Ustad Adnan Rashid and Brother Maurice uh, mashallah joining us how are you guys doing you you you're both uh, muted yes Alhamdulillah very well mashallah Jazakallah khairan for inviting me uh, to address the stream Alhamdulillah. Thank you so yes. much. Always my pleasure. Yes. Maurice, you're doing all yeah. right, bro? Likewise. Alhamdulillah. Doing really, really well. Trying to stay warm in a little bit of the spicy weather. But um, Alhamdulillah, man, in good health and positive spirits. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Hope you're not complaining about California weather. I am always complaining <laughs> about California weather. It's either too it's, hot or too cold. You, you it was minus two here yesterday. So I don't know what, what the temperature is at your end. No, definitely not minus two. <laughs> <laughs> no way, <man. laughs> so yeah alhamdulillah so today inshallah we have uh, an interesting topic um, with regards to this event which is going to be happening on the 22nd of this month in january which is called the consecration of uh, ram lalla or as it's known you know the um, the hindu god uh, or deva who's called ram or rama in this in south india and this is a huge event um, in India. I mean, they have invited like 10 or 12,000 people, um, including VIPs like, you know, Bollywood actors from the North and the South, you know. Um, and also a lot of um, other VIPs, you know, politicians, uh, a lot of people, religious people, though many people have actually boycotted it as well. So mm. obviously the Congress party has boycotted it. Uh, they're claiming that it's um, this event on the 22nd is uh, more of um, a political football or a po political agenda of Modi. And it's um, to do with uh, the upcoming general election in, in this year, 2024. Um, it's, it's basically to, you know, promote his uh, kind of uh, early election election um, you know, to get the vote banks as much as possible. Uh, this is their claim. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's true because it's it's not the first time they have done this. Uh, every time when the general election comes closer, they bring up something that will, you know, stir up communal disharmony and kind of, um, it's 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 basically to, to win vote banks as much as possible. And that's why they try to appeal uh, to the majority who are the Hindus in the country. Uh, so with regards to this, we'll, deal, we'll be dealing, inshallah, on this topic. Um, it's about the Babri Masjid, uh, which was demolished by the Kar Sevaks or the Hindu activists, uh, the, the Hindutva activists uh, in the year 1992. And then later on, the Supreme Court, you know, decided in favor of the Hindus and they got possession of this property or this real estate, which belonged to the Muslims. Uh, how it happened, we're going to uh, touch upon that uh, shortly, inshallah. Um, Adnan Bhai, do you know much about this uh, topic? Uh, on I don't know if you were following in the 90s when this was a big issue uh, because of the communal disharmony in the country. Yeah. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, let me thank you, um, the panel, for inviting me on this uh, show. It's a very important topic. I remember as a teenager when this actually occurred in 1992, I would have been 14 years old. And uh, I remember this on the news. There was a lot of uh, noise about it. And I, could, I can still remember images whereby many extremist Hindus climbing up the, the, the minaret and, and the dome of yeah. the Babri Mosque and basically damaging it with tools with hammers and with uh, all sorts of different tools, right? They were damaging it, they were breaking it. And it was a very disturbing uh, sight for me to behold. Um, because at that time, as a teenager, I didn't know much about history. I didn't know what's going on. I knew who Babar is. Uh, I knew who Hindus are. I know what's India. And by the name, I knew this masjid was probably built by Babar. But even at that time, it impacted me negatively. You know, I was thinking, why is this happening? Why, why are these people climbing up the dome, having been raised in Pakistan as a young man, as a kid? Okay, uh, we knew that mosques are 
the, the places of worship for Muslims. We worship in mosques, we prostrate to Allah, we, you know, pretty much mosque is, you know, the main uh, community center in every single Muslim neighborhood. And why is this mosque being destroyed by these Hindus? So this was a very uh, difficult thing to behold at that time. But later on, I got more awareness than I realized that uh, th this, this Hindu extremist element in India basically had propagated uh, the idea that Babri Masjid was actually built upon the very site where Ram, one of the Hindu deities, uh, was born and allegedly. there was a temple yeah. yeah allegedly allegedly of course allegedly and there was a temple where ram was born there was a temple built by hindus and that temple was destroyed by muslims and then muslims had resurrected uh, a mosque on top of it okay so this this was the story and the idea was to basically break away the mosque uh, rescue the temple from the mosque and rebuild the temple and basically this kind of sent um, a frenzy you know if you like it it sent shock waves throughout india and there were many uh communal uh, events or incidents that took place whereby people died thousands of people died they were killed from both sides hindus and muslims so this was an extremist group that wanted to achieve this in order to inflate uh, hatred between Muslims and Hindus. And they succeeded, unfortunately. They succeeded. They yeah. did this. They demolished the mosque or they damaged the mosque. And by that, by doing so, they hurt the Muslim sentiment throughout India because Muslims love their history. They love their past. Okay. So there was a systematic plan in place to destroy the mosque, inflate the religious hatred, among people and cause them to commit something like this so that from the Muslim side, there is some retaliation and we can cash up on this retaliation and start making laws against Muslims and start marginalizing them. Since 1992, the BJP has been selling, has been selling, literally selling the Babri Masjid case as a roadmap for India, basically. They have been inflating non-stop repeatedly they have been inflating hatred between hindus and muslims okay uh, and this level of hatred has never existed historically speaking never i'm a historian specifically specializing in the history of the indian subcontinent i know for a fact that there were times when muslims and hindus fought each other yes for territory no doubt but hindus and hindus fought each other rajputs were fighting the marathas Okay, the Marathas were invading Hindu territories in Bengal and killing hundreds of thousands of Hindus. So there were, uh, there, there were fight, fights and there were uh, territorial expansions between all communities. Okay, there were Buddhists once upon a time ruling India at the time of Ashoka. The Buddhists were fighting Hindus and the Hindus were fighting Buddhists. And the Muslims came in from the north. They started to take territory. And then many Hindus joined the Muslims. And many Hindus joined... Uh, Hindus and many Muslim entities and dynasties worked with the Hindus. So this was a very dynamic period. The Middle Ages, the history of over a thousand years in India was a very dynamic period. There was no religious campaign as such. Okay, Of course, every single community tried to make it religious to gain support from the masses. Okay, But this kind of religious hatred that we find in India today, especially... Uh, looking at the Babri Masjid case, okay, which has been used effectively by the BJP, the Bajrang yeah. Dal, and RSS, and all the extremist Hindu entities, including even uh, Shiv Sena, okay, which doesn't see eye to eye with the BJP. Those of you who know Indian politics, you would know these names. If you don't know these names, I do apologize. We can explain very briefly in due course. If you don't know, the, if you don't know the names of these entities, these are political movements within India with different mottos and different uh, agendas. Okay, BJP uh, stands for Bharatiya Janta Party. Okay, uh, Shiv Sena is basically is also a, a right-wing Hindu uh, extremist entity. It was initiated by a man called Bal Thakre. Okay, he's now passed away. 
and now it's still uh, a, 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 you know a, a power to reckon with especially in Mar maharashtra in the province of maharashtra where bombay is okay where the bollywood is based if you want to understand it in more more simple terms so historically we don't see precedent of such hatred between the two communities because the two communities hindus and muslims in particular always worked together when it suited them okay this was happening during the Delhi Sultanate period. This was happening during the Ghaznavi period, going before the Delhi Sultanate, and even coming to the Mughal period. When the Mughals came to power, when Babur came in, Babur, the emperor, the first Mughal emperor, the, 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 uh, again, he is the man uh, who is basically uh, responsible for building this masjid. It is claimed that it's called Babri Masjid because... Zahiruddin Muhammad Babur, the first Mughal emperor, had, had laid the foundations. Okay, so Babur was the first Mughal emperor who ruled India from 1526 to 1530, only four years. Okay, only four years. And when he came into India, there were Hindu collaborators. There were Hindus who worked with him. And there were Hindus who worked against him. And there were Muslims who worked against him. And there were Muslims who were working with him. So there was no Hindu-Muslim hatred as such. And even in subsequent decades and centuries, the Mughals continued to use Hindu generals and rajas and kings to their advantage and vice versa. The Rajputs were using Mughals for their advantage and the Mughals were using Raj Rajputs and even the Marathas. Shivaji, the famous Shivaji, was also part of the Mughal court un uh, until he broke away for whatever grievances he had historically speaking. So, you see, the history of India is very dynamic. A lot of these people, BJP ideologues and philosophers, so-called historians, they like to make it black and white. That It was always a war zone. India was always a war zone, right? There were always Hindus and Muslims fighting in India. This is not the case. This is not the case, okay? This yeah. is the, the, this is the, this is the, this is the, the lollipop they're trying to sell to the, to the Indian population. In the fact, uh, and in, yeah, they, they fought together, the British, didn't they? Exactly, exactly. During the Indian yeah. mutiny in 1857, the Hindus and Muslims fought side by side this foreign invader. Okay, many, many Indian historians have documented this. I mean, let's go to a white man, if you like, you know, uh, uh, William Dalrymple, who has written this history of the, the Indian mutiny under the title, The Last Mughal. The Last Mughal. He documents the history of the Indian mutiny. Here we have a cowboy joining us from yeah okay. that's not the white man <laughs> by the way who wrote it <laughs> okay okay right okay so, so so we have a cowboy we have we have uh, something you know like i don't know what to call this hat you know i don't know what it represents pakistan or afghanistan or wider re wider region and we have a baseball cap as well yeah mashallah two guys in baseball cap. so this is a Headdresses. good blend man of it's a good blend of headgears huh <laughs> <laughs> mashallah okay so basically yeah. this is the story so babri masjid was made uh, into a symbol of this hindu resistance against islamization of india and now we are taking back our territory we're gonna now basically take back all our temples <coughs> that were demolished by the muslims and mosques were built upon these temples and this is now a, a process of reclaiming our past this is the rhetoric this is the this is the game bjp is playing and this is what they're selling to the masses absolutely and their right. game is only to come to power yeah right so uh salaam brother brandon how are you doing you're I'm right bro? i'm doing very good how are you guys doing man yeah, so good to be back. Us. alhamdulillah yeah. so yeah today we are dealing with uh, a topic that you probably might not be too familiar with uh, but inshallah you know your input is always uh, welcome because generally you know we we do deal with uh, most of these topics from a religious angle uh, less to do with politics more to do with uh, religion so today we'll be asking the hindus that is if they do join us what is the evidence for the existence of ram first and secondly, what is the evidence that Ram was born at this exact spot which they claim, right? In fact, they are so specific. They say the Babri Masjid, which has which had three domes, they say that Ram was born under the middle dome at that very spot. 
So we'll be asking for evidence, okay, not just claims, because you know anyone can claim, anyone is born there. Uh, so it's it's something which is quite important to this topic because the whole the whole thing revolves around Ram Janma Bumi, which means Ram's birthplace. It's not about Ram's name or Ram's temple. It is actually his birthplace. So just like um, the birthplace of Jesus uh, in Jerusalem, you know, sorry. Uh, uh, in, yeah, um, it, it's in, in Nazareth. It's, uh, it's, it's important. Sorry, Bethlehem. Yeah, in Bethlehem is quite important. Uh, similarly for the Hindus, the uh, the birthplace of Ram should be important as well. And I totally agree. But the important thing is that, do you have any evidence to prove this? Because, you know, anyone can claim anything. Even if, look, even if for the sake of argument, you say that there was a temple at that place and Barbara's commander, who actually was responsible for building this, um, he destroyed it and then he built it on top of that. Where is the evidence for that, you know? Because many people, uh, sorry, many times in history, you see that on the foundation of previous structures, which might be broken already, which might be destroyed already, yeah, they would just build it on top of that because many times the pillars were already there, the foundation is there already, so there's less work to be done and they would build it on top of that. It doesn't prove that it was literally demolished like the way the Hindu car savers demolished the Babri Masjid. There's no evidence that the Muslims demolished it or it was already demolished. You know, there were many Hindus who would actually destroy each other's temples because they would be upset about something like, why is your God placed over there or something like that, you know? And they would, there would be disharmony against them because one would be worshipping Shiva, another would be worshipping uh, Vishnu. You know, they are different gods and they are different sampradayas, different no, sects. They're gods. Uh, they're you, gods you, for you, themselves. Yeah. Just to substantiate this, you know, what yeah. you said, Brother Hashim, there, yeah, because a lot of Hindus, they start fidgeting when you mention this, that Hindus were also destroying and desecrating each other's temples, and they start, uh, where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? I will give the evidence. Go to Richard Eaton's book. Richard M. Eaton is an American historian uh, on India. He has authored a book titled India in the Persianate Age. India in the Persianate age and in the very first chapter in the introduction, he mentions multiple cases of Hindu kings invading other Hindu territories and desecrating the temples and breaking the idols and destroying the, the entire structure, the, the com compounds, right? He gives plenty of examples for those people who are interested, okay? So people, when they come and tell us or ask us, where's the evidence, where's the evidence? The evidence is there. You're just not aware of it. You haven't been told about it, okay? Because your narrative is one-sided. It is just simply, it, it, it gives you selective history. It talks about selective desecrations of Hindu temples. It doesn't talk about the desecrations done by the Buddhists in the ancient period or by the Hindus uh, in the medieval period, okay? They all, your BJP, uh, RSS, and Bajrang Dal ideologues and philosophers and historians, okay, only focus on selective cases, selected cases, so that they can inflate the hatred they want to do, right? This is an agenda-driven history. That's why most historians, most serious historians, are actually not even allowed to visit India now. They get heckled, they get bullied, they get, I mean, go on Twitter and see what happens to them, okay? So uh, there, there are many historians who are challenging this narrative, which is not history, by the way. It is pure hatred, and it's a hate campaign. Uh, and it never yeah. succeeds. It never succeeds. So this is something I wanted to mention. The evidence is there. Richard M. Eaton actually specialized on temple desecrations. He's a specialist on this, right? So uh, in, in the first chapter, uh, within the introduction, if I'm not mistaken, he mentions multiple cases of these desecrations conducted by Hindu kings against other Hindu territories. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. No, yeah. And, and like I said, look, un without evidence, there's not much and... To be honest, you know, even during the the 2019 Supreme Court verdict, you know, they actually relied on Hindu architects. Sorry, not architects. The the people who excavated those archaeologists, they excavated this. I mean, who is to tell whether they planted the evidences that they found there? Because the Archaeological Survey of India, you know, they they actually were all Hindus, except for one person who was this KK Muhammad, on whose testimony they all rely. I mean, 
he was just one of those individuals over there. wasn't in charge even. Okay, there was some Professor Lal or something who was in charge. What is to say that you know people didn't just plant evidences over there? For example, they say they found some inscriptions and stuff like that. I mean, who's to say? There's a lot of dispute. The Hindus themselves dispute that this. Uh, inscription was actually from there. They say that some of them say it was brought from a museum in Lucknow. Uh, and later on, actually, in Faisabad, it was moved there. And then from Faisabad, it was moved to this location where the excavation was happening. So there's a lot of uh, claims out there. But anyway, one of the most important things I want to mention is that uh, there was actually a battle cry in 1990. And the Hindus used to say, Ayodhya to sirf janki hai, kashi mathura baki hai. Now, the significance of this, what this actually means is that Ayodhya was just a trailer. Kashi and Mathura are still remaining, you know, still left. And this is something, what it means is that Ayodhya was just a start. There are other places in Kashi and in Mathura where they, they also claim the same thing, just like the Babri Masjid was built on top of temples. There are other mosques in these areas which were built on top of temples. So we are going to demolish them as well in future. And this is, I think this is how they are going to remain in power because all this right-wing Hindu, you know, the Hindutva movement, uh, the BJP, the uh, Vishwa Hindu Parishad, VHP, who are actually <coughs> the main, uh, you know, um, the, the main parties behind this, you know, the main conspiracies about these different theories that they have, you know, like uh, different masjids being built on case why are you creating so much disharmony now why are you creating all these problems in an india which is supposed to be secular it is supposed to be the largest democracy in the world what that what does that mean <coughs> everyone in a democracy in a secular democracy you have to look at them with equality yes not to cite based on religion and faith one particular uh the, the majority group and then ignore the minority i mean then what's the point of having a democracy which is secular might as well call yourself a hindu nation which they don't. So it goes against the constitution to actually destroy the masjid in the first place. And even before that, in 1949, when they placed an idol inside the mosque uh, in the Babri Masjid and then claimed that, oh, Ram Olam appeared there by miracle. His idol appeared by miracle. I mean, come on, who's going to buy that? Not even your courts are going to buy that. And they didn't actually buy that. And uh, I think that's how it started. It's, it's all by deception. So this land which belonged to the Muslims have been occupied now by the Hindus on the basis of lies, deception, and a government which is in power, which goes with the agenda to actually cause this communal disharmony, which we see. You know, after the masjid was demolished, something like two or three thousand people, and this is like a conservative estimate, two or three thousand people died in the riots that that actually started after this uh, Babri Masjid was demolished. I mean, do you think the blood is something which uh, is, is valid? And I don't mean just majority of them were Muslims indeed, but a lot of Hindus died as well. Now, that reminds me of a hadith, you know. Look at this hadith here. This is Abdullah ibn Umar who narrated from the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, uh, who was making tawaf at the Kaaba and saying, how delightful you are. So he's speaking in third person to, to, to the Kaaba. Obviously, the Kaaba doesn't answer him, but it's just a symbolic way of saying it, saying how delightful you are and how great is your scent, how magnificent you are and how great is your sanctity. But by the one in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad, the sanctity of a believer, his wealth and his blood is greater than in the, greater in the sight of Allah than your sanctity. And we do not think of him except good. This is reported in Ibn Majah. What this says is that the blood of, of a believer is actually much more greater than even the sanctity of the Kaaba. So killing one Muslim is, is like, it's, 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 it, you cannot equal that. Even if you, like, you know, break the Kaaba, for example. So the wealth and his blood is much more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than uh, this, um, the Kaaba itself. So, I mean, look, the Kaaba was, you know, broken many times it was demolished many times even the black stone was taken away and broken down uh, to i think modern day bahrain but the sanctity of life is something that the quran always values and also in uh, surah al-maida uh, verse number 32 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um you know killing of one person 
uh, unjustly is as uh, is as if you're killing the whole of mankind. You know, so the sanctity of life has always been treasured in Islam. Alhamdulillah. Uh, but you see, in India, even the cows are more important than the humans. Yeah, people lynch. And this is again, you know, it only came about during the BJP time. It didn't used to happen before, you know, where the Muslims are lynched just on the on the suspicion of the possession of beef. Okay, like somebody would just say, oh, this guy's got beef in his uh, fridge. And they would go and lynch him just on that basis. You know, vigilantes, this is worse than uh, any sort of hate preaching, any sort of uh, atrocities committed uh, during the time before 2014, before the BJP came into power. So, I mean, look, I'm not saying that uh, all the Hindus are like that. All I'm saying is that there are this <coughs> Hindutva movement, you know, which has been gearing up and it's not something which is going to be beneficial if India wants to be recognized as an international power, you know, in the future. If, you, if this is the way it's going to continue, then this is going to be harmful, both socially, economically, in from all aspects. Right. Um, I'm going to, uh, Brother Maurice, do you want to bring up the timeline? Yeah. Yeah, perhaps we yeah. can go through that just to see how all of this started. And after that, inshallah, we'll open up uh, for the Q&A. Uh, I hope there are Hindus out there who would want to come forward and give your opinion, you know, or tell us what we said is wrong in case we did say something wrong. The whole idea of this um, this stream is not just to be one-sided. Yeah, we don't just want to preach to you guys. We want to interact with you guys. So please come forward. And if you're not going to come forward, you know, then that's up to you because we did invite you. So it's your choice, you know. If you got something which is the truth, I would want to spread it. Yes, if I was in your place, I wouldn't want to keep it to myself. Okay, so, so here we go. Yeah, Bismillah. Yeah, um, make it know, a bit uh, bigger, bro. It's uh, just uh, zoom in a bit more. This good? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So okay. just briefly summarize. I mean, basically. Yeah, actually, Maybe just the yeah, titles even. Yeah. They did it. This is a fantastic article um, from the Hindu dot com, which uh, is is uh, it's a good resource if you want to peer into yeah. exactly. It's a prominent Hindu newspaper, by the way. And yeah. this is look at the article. Is it written by Muslims? If you go right at the top, it'll tell you the authors. So and it's recent too. This is from. Uh, January 13th, so. This is Suchitra Kartikya, okay, which is not yeah. a Muslim. Uh, okay, anyway. Um, so it goes into from... great detail, but they, they did a really good job of providing yeah. a timeline over here. That's good, yeah. And, you know, we know that we, we kicked it off in 1528 as far as the masjid goes. So this is fast forward to 1858. Yeah. So uh, just one sec, bro, before you start. So, I mean, yeah. bear in mind. It starts with the date 1858, even though the masjid was actually built in 1500 something, right. 1549 or something, if I believe, uh, if I'm right. Um, and you see, the thing is, no one claimed that this was the birthplace of Ram. Yeah. So in the 16th century, you had someone like Tulsi Das who had written the story of Ram Charitra Mans, and he actually wrote about the biography or the story of Ram, and in great detail. Even he did not once mention. This was the birthplace of Ram. So why did they wait for like, I mean, allegedly Ram was supposed to be born something like 7,000 years ago. Yeah. So imagine this for like 6,000 or for 5,500 years, no one lays claim to his birthplace. And all of a sudden there are some, I think this is, uh, it says the Nihan Sikhs, Sikhs. So they storm into the Babri Masjid and they want to lay claim to it that this is ours, you know. Uh, yeah, Maurice, uh, you can carry on. Yeah, sure. so I, I mean, even just from just personal reflection of of you guys speaking, uh, it's pretty wild that somebody can just think up of some random thing to be motivated to cause conflict, right? Such as like a birthplace or rights to land ownership or um, something of the sort, which I think is just completely unfair, especially when there's no historic precedent <clears throat> and evidence of that stuff. So. Um, yeah, it kicked off at 1858 where they stormed in and then, um, you know, starts the legal battles from there. So there's a lot of uh, back and forth. And then here is the miraculous event that Hashim was talking about, the supposed miraculous event where uh, these idols were placed in. 
And uh, in a nutshell, it just keeps going uh, bit by bit where they go through this uh, legal process and there's attempts for the demolition. And then finally in 1992, uh, the masjid is indeed demolished and you have riots that are, there's consequences to this stuff, you guys. Yeah. Anytime that there's a um, question of faith and uh, artifacts of faith, such as temples or massages and so on, it could lead to a ton of polarization. So these riots did break out because uh, likewise, on the not just from the Muslim side, but also from the opposing side, there's people that believe in justice and standing up for truth and so on and uh, crossing boundaries and, and these lines, these red lines, uh, because there was harmony, right? And it's just an unnecessary stirring of the pot, so to speak. So finally, uh, after some time, we have the high courts uh, basically overturning the decision of the lower courts and uh, taking this plot of land along with its uh, rights to uh, build that temple and passing it over to the, the um, Hindu folks. So as these hearings are commencing and so on, the judgments finally passed. And uh, this is where things get, you know, ultra political. And then we're up to present day. And by political, I mean uh, just getting people to start reminiscing and to start talking about the things that have been done for their party or by their party. And likewise, you know, counting that as a victory. And then likewise, um, basically belittling the opposing um, political opposition to uh, Modi and so on. So just understand that these events, they carry uh, massive repercussions, not only from a religious perspective, but they're used to charge the emotions of the voting base <coughs> agree with what's happening in present day. So I think that's probably one of the biggest reasons why this stuff is um, put in the limelight right now, uh, along with all the, the um, turmoil that's happening from within the country. But I, I highly recommend that you guys check out this um, article. It goes into much, much greater detail. It gives little plot maps and it gives um, some expansion on the uh, timelines, you know, so it's it's worth having a, a look at the minimum. So that way you guys can get a little bit versed on stuff. Um, it, ironically, you know, again, this is just from personal reflection, but uh, this has a very similar notion to what's happening right now in modern times over in uh, Palestine, right? So basically this was a Muslim plot and now they said, oh, you know what? This belongs over to us. So the way that this was put together uh, initially, here's the letter A, B, C, D, and E. And this area down below uh, was being contested and saying that we're going to start here and we're going to uh, build a, a small um, you know, section over here for, for worship. And this is your land over here where the masjid is. So they're just creeping up and then eventually you know they said we want the whole thing and when they couldn't get it through the initial court processes i could also see how uh the government in order to kind of quell the um anything that would ensue basically they just said you know what we're just gonna let this thing go because a bigger problem will stem from it if we just keep going back and forth and back and forth so it was definitely a great <clears throat> injustice and um the due process that was established just it just failed uh, yeah, absolutely yeah. so uh yeah i think that's an important point you mentioned so let me just bring up another image uh, which will show you much uh, clearer i just want to welcome brother mansoor i think he's here assalamualaikum mansoor bhai Waalaikum salam how's it going yeah alhamdulillah assalamu alaikum um, to those who are listening and to our panelists. Alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah, we already your, started. Your, uh, your voice, your sound is a bit uh, too loud, Mansoor. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. breaking yeah. me up. Is it, is it loud or is it um, breaking up? It's, it's, it's breaking. Kind, yeah, kind of. yeah, it's kind of whizzy, you know, like there's a whiz in the sound. Like, Yeah, maybe just set some setting or something. To, now, um, how about now? I'm just going to speak yeah, a bit this louder. Is, this is better. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm just going to bring up a, an image of the the site, inshallah. Okay, can you guys see this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so basically what it is, it's like, uh, obviously this is the site of the Babri Masjid before it was demolished, that's how it looked. Now, obviously the Masjid is the one with the three domes, yeah? The Babri mm -hmm. Masjid, that's the three domes. And this right in front of the gate, you know, on the left, it says Ram Chabutra, uh, this bit here. It is uh, where this they actually said that, okay, we are going to start praying to... Uh, one of the uh, to, to, to a statue of Ram. So they put this Ram Lalla statue in there, and this is within the compound of the masjid, as you can see. Yeah. So I think the masjid, uh, whoever was in charge of that, uh, the trustees, the masjid, they allowed them to do that, uh, provide they do it outside the masjid in the compound, and not within the confines of the the actual mosque itself. And so they started that, and as uh, Brother Maurice said, you know, gradually they started, they wanted to now uh, worship inside the mosque as well. And obviously the trustees didn't allow them that. I think they took it to the court. The um, uh, the government uh, uh, obviously threw, away, threw, threw out the case uh, the, the Hindus brought uh, to them. And later on in 1949, they actually, in the night, they placed... As you can see, you know, it says here, uh, nine, uh, yeah, before 1949, they were praying here. And after 1949, <coughs> they brought the statue inside the mosque. And that is when the actual problem started. Because what happened was when they went to the court, the court said, okay, we don't want any, any problems with this community because this is going to cause a lot of damage. So we're going to close the masjid. That was the first fault of this secular government, yes? And at that time, you know, 1949 is actually after the independence because they got the independence in 1947. So you're pretty much in charge. It's not the British who are in charge now. So this country, which started as a secular democracy, one of the first problems that we see in this Babri Masjid case is that they actually closed the masjid, which actually prevented the Muslims from praying in there which goes against their constitutional right. Because what does the Constitution of India say? It says everyone has the right to uh, worship and pray as they wish. Yes, uh, the freedom of religion is for everyone. Because it's not a Hindu country. Don't forget this. Even though the majority of the people might be Hindu, but this Constitution is something which gives the Muslims, the Jains, the Hindus, the Christians, um, basically every community, the right and freedom, not only to practice their religion, but to propagate it as well. So nobody stops them from propagating as well. So when the when the court decided that this is something which uh, the best uh, in the best interest of the people, we're going to close the masjid. That itself was actually infringing upon the rights of the Muslims to freely worship in a place which they owned, in a place where they have been praying for the last. 300 years or something like that, you know, <laughs> and all of a sudden the court says nobody can pray there anymore. So they locked it and that was it. Then I, I believe in 1989, it was a Rajiv Gandhi who opened up the masjid uh, so that the Hindus could then pray and put in some foundation stone, which they call Shalinias. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, uh, Shalinis or whatever it is. And this is something which uh, again infringed upon the rights of the Muslims. Yeah, because it's it just started the problem again, uh, which was laid down in off for maybe a hundred years uh, or more, and and then it's uh, it, uh, sorry uh, for, uh, for, uh, yeah about that time, and then the problem arises again. You know, like later on they closed it again, and then they went they went to the court and so on. But yeah, I mean to to summarize. The court finally decided in favor of the Hindus. The Muslims lost the land. The Muslims lost a lot of lives uh, because that was a consequence of the demolition of the masjid. Uh, there were a lot of riots which went on from 1992 all the way to 1993. And thousands upon thousands of Muslims had died and a lot of Hindus died as well. So yeah, I mean, in summary, that is basically the timeline. Uh, so if anybody wants to say something, or shall we open up for the Q&A? Yeah, you can do Q&A. Yeah. Okay, sure. I'm just going to post the 
the link. Uh, but, you know, I just want to uh, mention one more thing. Uh, I think as a government of India, the government should be focusing more on the education, on the health, on even, you know, the poverty. A lot of Indians are still below the poverty line. Uh, you know, on the hunger index, they are almost at the bottom. Even some African countries are basically well off in comparison to them when it comes to uh, the on the hunger index. So I think there are a lot of priorities which the government should actually look into and not play uh, political football with places of worship, which causes problems, which causes deaths, which causes uh, division. So this whole idea of this particular um, Ram Janma Bhumi, it's... I mean, did Ram give you permission to do this, Mr. Modi? Uh, whoever is in charge of the BJP, the VHP, the um, you know the uh, <laughs> all the other uh, right-wing Hindu groups, who gave you guys right? You know, even Ram did not give you the permission to do this. So why would you do this? You know, it's it's. it's I'm I'm pretty sure many Hindus they respect and revere uh, Sri Ram, uh, whom they consider to be the ideal human, ideal person to emulate and to follow would ram have given you the green light to go and usurp somebody's land you know take away the land by force demolish a place of worship and then knowing well the consequences is going to cause a lot of bloodshed would any hindu who is not you know one of those hindutva uh, right wing hate preachers, would they consider objectively this to be something that the Hindus should be emulating or that this is what Ram would have done? You know, Ram even forgave his enemies, you know. He eventually, I think, forgave, uh, even though he killed um, uh, Ravan, he, he he kind of, you know, felt sorry for him because it's uh, it is something that he didn't want to do. He did it uh, because his wife was kidnapped. You know, and that's the other thing we would want to go into, you know, to discuss about Ram, whether he was really good. You know, do our gods born, our gods uh, whose wives are stolen from them, you know, who leaves his wife in the jungle when she's pregnant, who leaves, uh, disassociates with his, even his children, you know. Sees does them God, does God even need a wife? Does God even need a wife? Yeah, I mean, a lot yeah. of things. So, you know, this is, you know, when we speak to Hindus and we ask them these questions, they say, oh, no, he's, he's not like, the God, he's a Deva, you know, a Deva is like an uh, incarnation. Dem of a demigod, a demigod. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's Brahma. Brahma, Brahma is the ultimate God, the ultimate Brahman. deity. And the, Brahman, yeah. yeah. Brahma, I mean, Brahma. So Brahman. Got the Trinity, isn't it? The Brahma, yeah. Vishnu and Shiva. So these yeah. are the main gods, the fundamental yeah. gods. Uh, yeah. Even from that, one of them has been demoted, Brahma, yeah. who is actually yeah. the creator. Yeah. The creator God exactly. has been demoted. That's why you won't find any any uh, temples in his name, yeah. Even though he created everyone, in, including I would say the avatars of of gods. Uh, so yeah, I mean Shiva and uh, Vishnu are the main gods who are worshipped by the Hindus. But um, you know, let's let's discuss this, inshallah. So I'm just going to put up the link. Uh, in the meantime, if you guys want to add something, inshallah, go ahead. Yeah, the main the main issue here is that Babri Masjid kind of divided the two communities that have lived side by side for uh, centuries, hundreds of years. Muslims and Hindus have lived together, uh, keeping their spaces of worship, okay, not necessarily interfering in each other's religious uh, ceremonies. Uh, throughout the Muslim period in India, Hindus flourished. They continued. They continued, of course, I mean, minus all those exceptional incidents and events where things didn't go uh, the right way. But Hindus and Muslims lived side by side, worked together, did many things together. But this extremist evil ideology, the Hindutva movement led by the BJP, the current government, okay, has really divided the people of India. Okay, some people are even warning that India will break. If you go out to kill all the Muslims, what is what, what is what is what is what is it that you're trying to achieve? You want to commit a genocide of the Muslims? Nearly 250 million people. You're gonna kill them all. What kind of genocide would that be? Okay. Yeah. Can you actually forcefully convert them back to Hinduism if they were indeed Hindus? Uh, historically speaking, many were, no doubt. Most Muslims in India, their ancestors were Hindus. 
once upon a time. And before they were Hindus, they were something else. Okay? So, uh, you know, people make choices. Let them live with the choices. Let them choose what they, what they feel comfortable with. Okay? There's no compulsion. But this BJP government ha is selling a dream, an impossible dream, that we will manage to bring back all the Muslims to Hinduism. We will wipe out Islam. We will completely abolish uh, the, the Islamic structure or Islamic community system. And they are doing it by doing false propaganda, by dividing communities along communal lines, along, along religious lines. And they are coming up with campaigns and slogans that don't even mean anything in the real world. They don't, right? They promote ideas. Babri Masjid was basically the beginning of uh, all of this. Of course, this hatred existed long ago. Muslim ideologues, Muslim philosophers, intellectuals knew that uh, this element within the Hindu community is very dangerous. It's very evil. Okay, it's very, um, how can I put it, hateful. Okay. And if this element comes to power, the Muslims will, will, will be reduced to becoming second-class citizens or they will lose their rights. And this is exactly what they were fearing. Okay, people like Jinnah, Iqbal, Sir Sayyid, all the founding fathers of Pakistan, this is exactly what they, their fear was, that if we don't get a state of our own, uh, a country to live in, uh, then eventually what might happen is that this element might come to power and they will brutalize what exactly was happening to Muslims today in India. This is what they were warning against. Okay. So, Babri Masjid is basically is a symbol. It's a symbol. It's not necessarily very important to Hindus. Okay. It's a political slogan that has been used uh, by the BJP and RSS and uh, all other extremist Hindu entities in India, like uh, Shiv Sina as well, okay? So, it's, it's basically a trick. It's a, it's a game to divide the people of India along religious lines so they don't have peace. And what is the end of this? Where are we going with this? What are you trying to achieve, Mr. Modi, Mr. Shah, Mr. Yogi, and all your cronies, illiterate, a bunch of illiterate thugs? This is what they are. If you look at them, they are a bunch of illiterate thugs. How can the Indian people allow these people to rule them? Okay, this is, this is a question that's beyond me. India is a country of intelligent people. Indian people have a very high IQ. They are a very noble people. Many Indians are absolutely amazing people. They are contributing on a global scale um, in science, in technology, in business, okay, in education. Okay, there are so many things Indians are contributing to. Okay, do we not have an educated person who can bring peace to India, who can bring harmony between the communities in India? Can we not find someone like that? Do we have to go with a chaiwala, a tea seller, who is illiterate, who is literally, this guy is illiterate. He's unpar, as we say in the Urdu language. You know, this guy doesn't know. You can't expect Einstein from him. He's not going to give you uh, anything other than hate because that's all he knows he knows this is the only way he's going to come to power because he has no credentials he has nothing to sell he has no philosophy to sell he has no ide uh, ideologies to sell he has no ideas to sell so wh what is he going to sell? hatred hatred the easiest thing to sell unfortunately in the Indian subcontinent the easiest thing to sell in the Indian subcontinent and that includes Pakistan, India and Bangladesh is hate unfortunately I so, just want to come here very quickly, um, Ustad yeah. Adnan. It yeah. seems like people are electing some not so intelligent people as their leaders. I mean, whether they look at America, for example, or in India. Why do you think this is happening? I mean, mass election or selection of people who are not suitable for the job, don't have the capabilities, uh, intellectual and otherwise, to, to run a country in which there will be prosperity, tolerance, justice, and fairness, at least um, to, to run any, any country in the world. Why do we see people electing? Isn't this a representation of, of the people's mentality? That means it's a two-way process. The people are electing like-minded people like themselves so that 
you know, they can be like that. So instead of giving the leadership to the people who can lead and govern um, and establish justice, peace, tranquility, fairness um, on on the in the country and all around the world through foreign policies and, and, and other relationships between nations and states, we find rather people are getting more and more right wing or more, you know, the, the concept in which they're going away from coexistence with others and going to exclusivity in which people like them are the only people who should live and who should rule the world and who should actually see the welfare or everyone else, meaning their own welfare. So what is the solution to such a thing? It's, it's a global phenomenon. I mean, we are talking about Babri Masjid in the context of India, but it's a symptom that is reflective of what's happening all around the world. People are not showing justice to be a key component of any governance structure. What needs to be understood and what needs to, what's the direction that people should follow? I mean, what is our advice basically to the Muslims and the non-Muslims and the people at large? Look, uh, that's a very good question you have asked. And one thing I want to highlight very quickly is that democracy, to put it in simple terms, is the rule of the Pipe Piper. You know the story of the Pipe Piper? Okay, the, 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 the Pipe Piper that blows the, the, the pipe and takes all the rats following him outside of the city. So this is exactly, I'm not saying the people who are voting in the democratic system are like rats, but this is the example I wanted to give that anyone who can manipulate the masses can come to power. Anyone. Okay, democracy is the rule of the manipulator, the spin doctor, okay, the charlatan or, or, or the showman. Okay, current day democracy is the rule of the manipulator, the deceiver, the liar. Okay, uh, this is how people are coming to power today. The more you can manipulate the people, the masses, the, the, the bigger the chances for you to come to power. Now, how can people like Boris Johnson or Donald Trump or Modi come to power? It is beyond me. It is beyond me. How can people like this come to power? What credentials do they have? What philosophical... Um, uh, ideals or ideas have they put forward to the world? How have they made this world a better place? Okay, mm -hmm. if you look at the profiles of each and every single one of them, they have nothing but hate to sell. Okay, Donald Trump was selling hate to the American people. Okay, Donald Trump was uh, a serial pervert. He was accused multiply by many, many people for abusing his power. Okay, Boris Johnson was a known racist. Okay, he was even questioned by other MPs okay, on this issue. Modi had the blood of nearly 3,000 Muslims on his hands killed in Gujarat when he was the, the, the PM. Okay, not the Prime Minister, but uh, he was the, the, the minister, the provincial minister of Gujarat. Okay, he, and he was banned from the US for being an extremist, for someone who was accused of a genocide banned from the US, couldn't get a visa to enter the US. And lo and behold, he is walking hand in hand with Donald Trump into a rally in the US. This is democracy. This is what democracy... Uh, look, I'm not against democratic, democratic principles. Uh, you know, rule of law, justice, equality, egalitarian uh, system to rule people. I'm not against... These are not necessarily democratic principles. These principles are universal to humanity. Even Islam has these principles to offer. Okay, so democracy as Plato, I mean, one of the most devastating critiques of democracy was authored by um, the very man who was part of that society that gave us the democracy, the system of democracy in the first place. Plato, his republic is one of the most devastating critiques of democracy. And Iqbal, the poet, the famous uh, Indian Muslim poet who summarized it beautifully in, in, in two verses, okay, in few verses actually, in a stanza, okay, Okay, 
جمہوریت جو طرز حکومت ہے اس میں بندوں کو گنا کرتے ہیں تولا نہیں کرتے دیٹ ہی سیڈ این انگلش مین بروک دس سیکرٹ ٹو می آل دو وائز پیپل ڈو ناٹ آفن ریویل اٹ دیٹ ڈیموکریسی از اے سسٹم ان وچ یو کاؤنٹ پیپل یو کاؤنٹ دیم یو ڈونٹ وے دیم یو ڈونٹ وے دیم سو دس از اٹ دیٹس وائی پیپل لائک مودی people like donald trump people like uh, you know boris jo- johnson come to power this is how they come to power by manipulating the masses that's why the role of the newspapers and media hubs is so important okay people who fund these political parties they put their money behind uh, news channels newspapers radio platforms where they are needed and they run campaigns of manipulation of lies of propaganda to bring people like this to power and they play on people's sentiments they play on people's feelings right they inflate hatred sometimes they prop up threats that don't exist they create the enemy to attack that enemy there is no enemy it doesn't exist so they prop up threats to scare people of these threats okay i mean if you have watched beauty and the beast cartoon <laughs> I used to love it as a kid, you know. Uh, there is this guy called, Gast- I mean, uh, what, what was his name? Gaston? Um, the, w- one of the characters. Yeah, Gaston, the, the yeah. strong man. Yeah. The, the, the baddie, the baddie. So, so in order to kill the beast, the beast is a gentle beast. Although it looks, <clears> like, <throat> it looks like a beast and Gaston. it's beastly. Okay. But it's a gentle beast. Gaston goes back to the villagers and he... manipulates facts he lies to them he he scares them off he tells them this is there's this beast and the beast will come and kill you and eat your children and you know destroy you so before that beast does it we need to go and kill the beast so the beast was created okay so this is exactly how democracy works there is an enemy created and then the, yeah and then enemy is attacked and this is what modi did babri masjid was actually Uh, did uh, it, it was done by the bjp bjp was the political voice of those extremists who uh, demolished the mosque and you know why it was done the, the the bjp wanted to come to power and they needed they needed a beast to attack they needed an enemy to attack okay so this is how they inflated hatred they yeah. created an enemy that it's, didn't it's exist for the, it's for the vote banks exactly exactly yeah. to to manipulate yeah. the masses to make them think that oh this is our political voice these are the real heroes they represent our sentiments they represent our culture they represent our religion okay so these people they manipulate the masses they inflate hatred and by doing so they they cause atrocities to to happen and on those atrocities they win elections modi became a prime minister unfortunately i must say this because of gujarat what happened in gujarat in 2003 there was a massacre there was a genocide of 3000 muslims okay uh, i mean look if you if you if, if i share the details you guys won't be able to handle yeah. them how by the way you know bbc yeah. made a documentary about that the genocide yeah. in 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 gujarat and yeah. uh, modi banned it obviously and he put yeah. pressure on the bbc to ban it as well removed it from youtube and this is what it is you know why do you not have the freedom of press you know if it is wrong then dispute it you know try to um you know give the evidence uh that you are right and the bbc is wrong but no they did not produce any such thing just complete ban you know that's that's how they deal with uh, criticism uh but yeah i mean one thing to understand is that uh, the population of india is now what something like 1.2 billion they have overtaken china even now, or going to overtake them and the muslim no, population is like it's it's nearly like 20% of that so you're talking about the second largest muslim population in the world you know after indonesia it's actually there are more muslims in india than pakistan 
And yes. it's going to grow. It's going to grow. And it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the largest it's the largest minority. It's the largest it is. minority yeah. in India. Okay, Indeed, yeah. even even though it's 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 one of the majorities in the in the Muslim world. It's one yes. of the majorities in the Muslim world. It's the largest. Yeah, minority. compared to the Hindus, they are like twenty yeah. percent. You know, the yeah, Hindus are absolutely. Different, so absolutely. it's definitely a minority. Right, we're going to get uh, let the guests in. Just want to remind that the Muslims will call you guys later, where you can join. So read the text that is crawling at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, so don't jo try to join yet. We want to give opportunity to the Hindus first. You know, we want to hear that side of the story because we don't want to have a monologue between the Muslims. We want them to participate and, you know, tell us where we are wrong or tell us what we are what we are saying is right or, you know, give us your opinion, inshallah. So I'm going to bring uh, you guys one by one. Uh, we are trying to, you know, make it easier for our guests to join. So we have got this... Uh, what do you call them? Uh, overlays. So I'm going to put an overlay uh, for our guest to join. So this Hindu guy is joining first. So I'm going to put an overlay just so we know that we are safe. Inshallah. Uh, hello there, Hindu. How are you? I don't know what your name is. You called yourself Hindu. So I'm assuming you're a Hindu. Uh, hello. Uh, so I'm a Hindu from India. Okay. And... Uh, I was watching random videos on the Ram Mandir. We have a grand ceremony on 22nd of Jan. Mm -hmm. Are you yeah, invited? Yeah. No, actually only the... Oh, you didn't get yeah. invited, man. Come on. What happened? See, just kidding. Isn't... I, mean, I know, it's just for the VIPs. Uh, yeah, where yeah. are you from in India, if you don't mind me asking? I am from a state called as Maharashtra. Okay. Mumbai? Uh, if you know. Uh, no, no, no. No, okay. I am no, from Pune. Pune. That's fine. So you've been listening to the stream from the beginning or you just joined? Uh, no, I have listening from the past 20 to 30 minutes or so. Okay, that's good. Uh, what do you want us to address you as? Just Hindu or you got, an, you got some a name we want, we can call okay, you by? Uh, you can call me just Hindu, it's fine. Okay, I'll call you Raj. Is that okay? Okay, okay. Because okay. there'll be many Hindus joining. We'll get confused which Hindu we are talking to otherwise. Okay, sir. So okay. I would like oh, to yeah. ask. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, Adnan Rashid, sir. Uh, yeah, if my net, if my network fluctuates, please excuse me. No uh, and okay. Adnan Rashid, sir. So you said that uh, just like a few minutes ago, you said that Ayodhya is uh, the Babri Masjid side was not that of uh, important to the Hindus. So can you please explain why why did you say so? Okay. Um, very good question. Thank you for joining. I really appreciate that. You're most welcome. Okay. First time the site was identified as the birthplace of uh, Ram was in 1822. Okay. Uh, the site was used for religious purpose, both by Hindus and Muslims. The claim that the mosque stood on the site of a temple was first made in 1822, by the way, by an official of the Faisabad court. Then... The Nirmohi Akara sect cited this statement in laying claim to site later in the 19th century, leading to the first recorded incidents of religious violence at the site in 1855. So, for some reason, before the 19th century, Hindus had no idea that this was the birthplace of Ram. And suddenly, in the 19th century, and you know what? I wouldn't even go as far as to say, I mean, I wouldn't hesitate to go as far as to say, that it might have been done by the colonial establishment to cause a uh, rift between the Hindus and the Muslims. They might be behind it because they did many things like this to break apart the Hindus and the Muslims to, so that they can rule them. They could probably see that there is a storm called the Indian Mutiny coming ahead. In 1857, as you know, the mutiny took place, right? Um, so I wouldn't be surprised. But this is the first time when the Hindus laid claim to the site and this was in 1822, on record. Before that, we don't have any trace, unless you can bring something, that Hindus laid claim to this site or as the birthplace of Ram. Do you have anything? What happened? Has he dropped off? Um, yeah, oh, I'm, going okay. to bring, I'm going to bring him back here. So. Okay, there you go. Were you listening, uh, Raj? Yeah, yeah. So, so the thing is, Babri Masjid existed on the site from, I guess, 500 years. No, because yes, Babri is the first Mughal. 
from 15 babar the first mughal emperor uh, built it exactly, during his exactly. tenure in india yeah yes so yes, you're correct you're right our religious text that were written way before like thousands of years the valmiki ramayana ever even mentions uh, lord ram's Amen. birthplace being ayodhya it's 300 dhanush uh, from the river sarayu which holds a uh, immense significance for uh, hinduism uh, it's also the river where uh, le- like uh, lord ram gave up his human body okay and okay, uh, so ayodhya is a huge state sorry a huge city do you agree thank you thank you Uh, yeah. it's uh, it's actually uh, it's actually a district so here in india uh, yeah, we it's a big uh, place right it's not like a small place like just the compound of the babri masjid you see what i mean so when even yeah, if yeah, yeah. for the sake of argument valmiki ramayana says he was born in ayodhya yeah the question is how can you as a hindu pinpoint the exact location in ayodhya and why 19th century so, so. why not before why not before hindus have been in india for the last at least 2 3000 years right uh, as we know hinduism yeah. today because hinduism went through many transitions and evolutions as a religion right and even yeah, uh, yeah. the the scriptures are diverse but why in the 19th century the hindus just woke up that this is the actual site why not in the last 2000 years yeah. no hindus are on record to have said that this is the birthplace of ram that exact spot that very spot fine ayodhya we we give it to you yes ayodhya is a big city it's a big place the river is wide and your calculations can go into any direction there is no specific reference to that very particular spot but that's where the mandir was or that's where the birthplace of ram was you get the point so 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 there is a reference and i'll tell you that so there is a chapter in valmiki ramayana known as the ayodhya kand in ayodhya kand there is mentioned that the uh, the very spot the palace where lord ram was born his father dashrath was a king so they obviously had a palace so the palace where lord ram was born it was 300 dhanush of distance from the river sarayu so in if we convert which, them to which, modern which times direction? and which, which direction which direction the, see, see, see. in the in the direction uh, in the direction of the uh in the direction where the sun uh, sun sets so it is west of the sarayu if we if we look uh, yeah, like it depends on our perspective the, the west the west of the river the west of the river could be anywhere yeah the west so, the, the so west listen. of the river. can you can you copy and paste the reference in the private chat if you don't mind me asking okay i will i will yeah so okay. uh, so i I'll, i'll just and, uh, and by the way uh, raj one question to you do you know the date when ram was born Uh, so yeah according to uh, according to the hindu calendar he was born in chaitra shukla navadashi like uh, i don't know the exact date from the gregorian calendar calendar but hindu today uh, hindu today celebrate ram navmi roughly on the uh, same date like uh, hindu no, cal- no, no, calendar is how many years ago i'm not telling 7, you 7000 years ago as per per- and the year and the month i'm asking you how many years from today was ram born because you know the christians don't know the exact date either when jesus was born but they say roughly 2000 years from now you know so tell us yeah yeah sure. tell us the so, approximate date uh, or the uh, or the number of years from now that ram was born and and so which source the, and which source which source which yeah. source specifically gives that date which source and when was that source authored so, is also another question so the yeah. the source the main source of all these things i am claiming they are uh, they are from the valmiki ramayana which was the original ramayana now to, uh, in today's date you you see there are many ramayans like uh, indonesia has their own ramayan known as the kokwin ramayana or something if i am not misspelling it but uh, uh, yeah there are many different ramayans in today's sources and uh they have minor variations like they may claim different things but most of them uh, most of them tell that uh, lord ram was born uh, roughly around 7000 years ago which was the treta yuga 7000 uh, years from today and the hindus know yeah, the, exact, to, the exact location where he was born yeah yeah he was and nobody claimed that. for the last 5000 years nobody claimed that place because the because the temple existed there The no, temple no, existed the there existed before. There see, 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 see. Hold on, you just said yeah, the palace yeah, yeah. existed see. first. So somebody must have broken the palace in order to build the temple, right? See, see, see. 
there like, mind, is uh, it a palace or is it a temple because the term no, mandir no, no. actually like the, you know before before the 16th century the term mandir only meant a dwelling place it didn't mean a place of worship are you aware of that mandir just yeah 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 okay so what like, makes you so sure that this is uh, the palace or the actual temple because if dashrath was a king ram's father he obviously had a palace he's a king yeah so was ram born at the place of a temple or a palace see like uh, see the harappan civil i i am just giving a example i am not uh, going off the topic the harappan civilization which was roughly around 4000 years ago is in ruins now so it it is possible the there are many Hindu, theory, but do you know that yeah the <laughs> the yeah 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 so don't, don't how do you know they know weren't hindu how do Sorry? you know they weren't hindu because they didn't have any warrior class in them the hindus have a kshatriya class the harappan were peace loving people you know they were both mostly vegetarians and uh, lived off their lands farmers you know they didn't have a army like the yeah, yeah. See, so see. they were definitely For, not first thing <laughs> See the first thing, the most famous seal from the Harappan civilization, the Pashupati seal. Yeah, it has a clear Shiva. reference to Lord Shiva, one no, of the no, two this most. This is a claim. This is a claim. Just because he had a. It isn't a claim. It is a claim. It of isn't Hindus, a claim. Okay, you know. It isn't just... a claim of Hindus. Oh, oh, no, no. I, we, 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 Hindus, we, we can, we can, we can easily, uh, we can easily deal with this claim. When was Lord Shiva worshipped, historically speaking? Hey, when I say historical, where, where is the physical? How how old is the physical evidence of Shiva being worshipped in the Indian subcontinent? See, there is uh, there there was a statue uh, found in Nepal. Uh, it uh, it necessarily isn't a statue, but it is a metallic uh, ma metallic structure, uh, like a metallic idol. It is called as the Kalpa Vigraha. You can Google it up. It is uh, according to carbon dating. It uh, it has been. Uh, like observed that it was 28500 years old so <laughs> that in today's in today's time it uh, in today's times that is the oldest we are oldest uh, significant uh, like the oldest proof of uh, that the ancients used to worship lord shiva and in no, even uh, in our text like <laughs> what look when i when i yeah. say when i say when i ask you this question that how old is the physical evidence for devotion to shiva okay i don't i don't mean to ask you about idols or images or uh, cave paintings okay or human drawings in caves i'm not asking for those things i'm asking for specifically devotion to shiva when do we have it recorded for the first time devotion specifically to shiva without any debate with, without any discussion without anyone disputing it do you know uh, the can you explain like yeah. i didn't understand your question what do you mean by physical evidence physical evidence like, for devotion to shiva as a deity physical evidence for devotion from human beings to shiva as a deity that has no dispute that that hasn't been debated because hindu hindus claim a lot of things and they 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 put they put ideas onto paintings evidence or idols on things like that okay that's why hindus claim that hinduism is the oldest religion in the world okay uh, just because we find rock paintings and we find idols or some something made of wood hindus claim this is the oldest religion that's not the case that's not the case you can't make that claim so from, okay uh, so let me ask let me ask you uh, is is any other religion does any other religion have a idol or a rock painting or something like that which is more than 2500 years old oh definitely i've actually seen one in malta which is 6000 years old 6000 and what is that <laughs> it's it's what one of the that? idols that oh, you know the pagans you know, pagans all over the world Mo pig, yeah, Moinjo Dog. Pagans all Moinjo over the world. They find idols everywhere. Yeah, absolutely, everywhere. absolutely. <laughs> Africa, African. Af yeah. I mean, even even in Latin America, we have people carving all sorts of things. You know, they what have about statues. Those big there. face statues in that one place that are real famous. Remember, those are pretty old. Yeah, too, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, heads. look, the whole world, the whole world is full of evidence for people worshiping multiple things, and there is evidence for people worshiping one god. 
the devotion towards one entity, one being. For example, Papua New Guinea. Okay, people living in those jungles mm-hmm. for the last 40,000 years, I mean, their belief is in one deity. They believe there is only one God, supreme God. Even Zulus, even Zulus had this belief that God is not begotten nor does he beget. They had this belief, Zulus. God is unborn. Okay, and there is only one. So, look, uh, we can go on and on and on. The point here is, like, a lot of these uh, claims and evidences you will present are highly, highly controversial. They are disputed by most academics. Archaeology doesn't support you. It doesn't support you. You can't ignore archaeology. Who said archaeology doesn't support us? How okay. can you claim what? that? Uh, sh- sh- archaeologically, can you show me a birthplace for Ram at the spot of Babri Masjid? Archaeologically. Archaeologically okay, can, you, can, you, can you show yeah. that Ram was born here? Uh, first of all, first of all, you need to show us Ram existed. There was someone called Ram that existed and there's historic can, evidence can, for him. Can I go on that? Yeah. Can I make a... Okay, okay. Make, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Somebody was speaking. That. Please continue. Yeah, who wants to yeah. speak? Then yeah. yeah, so actually according to um, a Hindu, Annie Rood Kenny Seti, um, I've got this. I found this earlier and I wanted, I'm glad you brought this up because uh, even according to Hindus, Ram was not a deity until uh, like a thousand years ago. So let's present. Share screen. There we go. So it's by, uh, and this is an Indian article written by a Hindu uh, talking about how political chaos with the Turks, with the Turks during the, um, you know, Muslim spreading of the Turks, that's when Ram was actually, uh, basically, he came about as a, as a deity. He was never considered a deity until then. So this, this whole article kind of just goes into that and talks about it. I mean, we don't have to read it all, but. According to Hindus, Ram is not even so. Like when you're talking about, is that we can go into each and every aspect of this and 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 break it apart, right? Like the, the foundations of of Ram even being a god, the son of a god, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so he's not a son of a god. He's not son of a god. He's an avatar. You know, and coming to a claim that Ram was... But, but, uh, Hindus but who, was gave, who gave birth to Ram? See, he was God in a human form. Like, the concept of Avatar is very diverse. Uh, so see, like, uh, Christians claim Jesus Christ was a son, uh, was the son of a God, a son of God, right? He was the son of the Almighty God. But we Hindus don't claim that Lord Ram was the uh, like. If uh, if God is the Almighty, then doesn't He have the power to come on Earth as a human? No. There is there is a slope. Why doesn't He? Because if He okay, can manipulate so, all yeah, humans, yeah, He can manipulate really nature. Did we divert away yeah. from the question of non bias, which was quite important? How do we know Ram existed? Let's start with that first. Okay. Okay. Uh, so first I'll answer that. Ram existed. So uh, he asked that thousand uh, thousand years before uh, before today, Ram wasn't uh, even a deity for the Hindus, right? No, no, so forget about that point. You... The other, he asked you a specific question. Can you provide evidence that Ram actually existed? Because, you know, there are many Hindus and these are pundits who came onto our stream and they said that all of these so-called avatars were mythological figures, were sometimes just for uh, narrating uh, moral values and uh, messages mm-hmm. with, within stories. And that's how these stories came about. They didn't actually exist. We had uh, actual Hindus come and say this on our streams. What, what do you have to say with regards to that? See, so uh, so we, we know Ram existed from our scriptures. Like, uh, if uh, if yeah, from that's today, circular reasoning, isn't it? You know, it I isn't say, reasoning. In fact, anyone, any religious people, they can go and say, "Oh, it exists in our book, so it must exist." That's called circular reasoning. The question yeah. Adnan look, by look, asked look, you was specific empirical yeah. evidence for Ram's existence. Do you have any archaeological evidence? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, uh, look, we want to be fair with this person. Uh, people, when they ask okay. us, is there any archaeological, physical evidence for Abraham? We say no, there isn't. Okay, okay. 
Um, is there any evidence for um, uh, an individual called Moses in Egypt? We say absolutely mm -hmm. not. We, we don't find any evidence. Likewise, you are worshipping someone as an avatar. Okay? Is there any mm -hmm. evidence for that? Because this is very... When people ask us about the evidence for God's existence, we go into many uh, debates and dialogues and discussions yeah. and give evidences, right? And we show why we believe uh, without a shadow of a doubt that there is a God who created the heavens and the earth. Okay. Likewise, we're asking mm -hmm. you a question. You you have built a narrative around Ram. Okay. Mm -hmm. And thousands, thousands of people have been killed. Okay. Okay. Uh, there, there is a government that is in power because of this this conflict and this divide between the Muslims and the Hindus. Okay, the BJP. Mm -hmm. Where where is the evidence for Ram? Where is the evidence? For for you to share I mean this is India is one of the greatest powers in, in the world today. Yeah. Economically, yeah. technologically, okay? And yeah. and and the leader of India is a man called Modi. And he sells this yeah. narrative on daily basis. Okay. To many intelligent people in India, scientists, philosophers, thinkers, academics, economists, bankers, you name it. Where is the evidence mm -hmm. for Ram? Where is the evidence for Ram? We, this is the question we're asking. That, that you have built all of this, this narrative for one person. Is this person even real? Is this a fair question? So, so if, yeah, it is a fair question. So I'll answer that. So as so see, as per archaeological, physical archaeological evidence, there uh, there isn't any. At least I don't know any. Uh, I don't know any of them. But if you if you know, if you tell religious uh, like religious evidence, there are many. I can name you a number of them from our scriptures, from like everything. There, there you can find thousands of year old temples in India where the whole Ramayana has been encrypted on the rocks, on the walls of the temple, or on the shikhars of the temple. So yeah, as per any physical evidence, there I I can't name any. At least I can't. There, uh, let me tell you something. There isn't. There isn't. There is none. There is no evidence for Hanuman. There is no evidence for Ganesh. There is no ev evidence for Ram. There is no evidence for Sita. There is no evidence for uh, uh, Ravan. There is no evidence for any of these figures. They are all mythical figures. Okay. And a lot of this, uh, these stories in your Ramayans and uh, your other holy scriptures, they are all uh, written by rishis. Okay. Thinkers. Okay, uh, we call them thinkers. Okay, they were written in the ancient time by the. We, we can't even authenticate this information. We don't even know who wrote this information. People okay, are living okay, and okay. dying. Pe people are living and dying over this information today. For example, if you ask us this question, where did your Quran come from? Where did your hmm. hadith come from? We would have to answer. Yeah. If we cannot give an answer, then we are on shaky grounds. If you ask me who. who where, where, we can trace back the Quran word by word to the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad. We know the Quran yeah. was delivered by him. And then we assess the Quran, whether it is from God or not. I mean, Muhammad wasallam could have been sitting in a cave somewhere and he might have written it himself, right? People make this mm. claim. They ask this question. Yeah, and we yeah. scrutinize. We scrutinize that question. I don't want to I want to I don't want to worship five times a day if Islam is not true. Okay, so we as human yeah. beings, we have to question, we have to ask and ourselves. And, uh, uh, and yeah. uh, this is a bit off topic, but uh, I'll come to the, uh, I'll come to the reference. So do you know that uh, Islam was referred in the scriptures of Hinduism? I guess many of the Muslim YouTubers have made videos on this. Yeah, I, I'm not fully convinced, but yes. Okay, if people claim and they point to things that may... Uh, maybe for telling the coming of Islam into India. Okay, it's an open question. No problem. But we don't rely on the Hindu scriptures to believe in Islam. We don't. It's true that you don't. But if any if any religion or, uh, okay, not religion, but any uh, any sadhu or a pundit like Tulsidas, the one who wrote Ram Charitamanas, like any, uh, he, uh, the one who wrote the Bhavishya Purana must be similar to Tulsidas, right? So if he's claiming that a religion will be born in the Kali Yuga, the current age we are living in is the Kali Yuga, right? In uh, like thousands of years before the birth of Islam, how is he not like, how are the Hindus uh, like, they can't see the future. How can you claim that? So first if Ram, all, 
first of all, a lot of people claim that these these scriptures, some of them were actually written after the Islamic invasions of India. Okay, many Muslim invaders oh. came in, they took the land, and many of these because the manuscripts of these scriptures don't go beyond a thousand years old. A lot of these manuscripts. Okay, oh, oh. Of, the oldest. No, no. Okay, okay. The Puranas go. The Puranas go even beyond Islam. They are they no, are older that, than the Islam. The whole damn religion itself. That's when okay. they say they and were written, but the manuscripts we the have, manuscript, the manuscript. Yeah, I the, can, the physical the physical copies I'm talking about. I can write a book. Physical copy. And say that this the oh, original yeah. ones that this book was copied from go back to ten thousand years ago. Does that mean the book that I wrote has something that it copied from? We don't have anything except for something that was. Few hundred years ago, and okay. and, and there are see, theories. That, there are theories that these scriptures were interpolated. They were added to by later thinkers and Hindu writers and authors. They kept adding to the scripture. Okay, and what we have today is not necessarily ancient. Okay, uh, this is why this is a huge topic: the origin of Hindu scriptures. Okay, and, okay. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. The origin of Hindu scriptures. How authentic are these scriptures? Are they word by word uh, exactly the same as the rishis put them down in the ancient period? Or were they actually added to eventually uh, from century to century, from person to person, from the from copyist to copyist, from uh, pandit to pandit, for let's say, okay? So a oh, lot yeah. of the people, the, a lot of the people, make, they make this claim that the copies we have, okay, where we find these references to uh, foreign invaders, okay, were actually mm -hmm. authored or added to after the invasion, Islamic invasions. Look, this this is a very interesting topic. This is an absolutely amazing topic. The point again, it boils down to: do, Does did Ram exist? And then you will quote scriptures. You will quote scriptures. You will say it is written in our scriptures that Ram existed. We will question who wrote the scripture. What on on what authority? Who revealed the scripture? Where did the inspiration come from? How do we know if, if these stories are even true? How do we how do we know that those rishis were telling the truth? It could be anyone writing an interesting story like Mahabharata. You know, Mahabharata is very interesting. It's a very interesting read. Okay, but how do we know these things actually happened? People who put these stories down. How do we know that these stories are even true? This is the point. Okay. 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 So the Sorry, Raj, one second. I'm going to bring in another Hindu now because uh, they might be able to help you. Um, so let me just add first human. Yeah, first human, are you there? Yes, yes. Hello, everybody. All right, well, thanks. Hello. How are you doing? Good. good. Where good. are you joining from, first human? Uh, USA. Okay. And what's your name? How shall we address you? You can tell me just human. Human? Okay. Uh, just, just to know that you're actually human good you yes, just yes. confirming that. i was a bit worried that in case you might be joining as an alien you know <laughs> uh okay yeah you wanted to add something uh, yeah, to what uh, our uh, friend already uh, said the thing is yeah so i just want to let you know that see the issue of like uh you are asking about the proof of whether ram existed or not in terms yeah. of what uh evidence do we have so we have the scriptures, right? So when we say the scriptures, it has been passed on uh, verbally as uh, Quran has also been passed on verbally, right? And then at point it's no, no, no. Well, let, 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 let me that. stop. Let me stop you there. Let me stop you there. No, Quran uh, anyway, wasn't. anyway, uh, let me just complete. Uh, I may be wrong about it. Uh, the yeah, Quran, yeah, but, uh, I'll just yeah, complete about yeah, the, the scriptures. Yeah. Okay? So okay, no like problem. how yeah. the things were propagated before was through uh, verbal recitations and slokas and everything. So when R Valmiki wrote the Ramayana, people were reciting it, people were learning it, and people were getting inspirations from it, and that is how it propagated. So when you say what is the authenticity of, let's say, Valmiki, that he was authorized to write it, we, do, uh, we believe that he was authorized because we don't specifically want to know whether that person was authorized or not, we want to understand what his teachings are. If his teachings are something that is going to benefit the society, it is going to benefit everybody, then we will say that, okay, yeah, this is something good that is being taught and let's add, start to adopt it. So that is how the Ram's story was propagated. So how how old is uh, Valmiki Ramayana? How old is Valmiki Ramayana? 
Yeah, what I mean by old is the the oldest extant manuscript of Valmiki Ramayana. How the oldest it? copy uh, uh, around so today. The, the oldest copy, copy, like a lot of copies, like a lot of literature was. Please uh, don't just make yeah. claim. No, no, I'm not saying that. Uh, just let me complete that. So, yeah. uh, a lot of scriptures, right? Uh, you might know that a lot of universities mm -hmm. in India were burned down. A lot of scriptures were burned down. No, no, no. The, hold on, hold on. Don't tell nature. us what you don't have. Tell us what you have. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The okay. oldest one, you will not be able to get that oldest okay. one. You don't have it. Just say it like that. One, yeah, Even. it will not be there. Because Just say you don't have it. Simple as that. Yes. yes By I'm the way, the universities, which universities were burned? So Nalanda University is one of them. Yeah. Was that a Buddhist or Hindu university? It was a Hindu university. Or no, it was a Buddhist university. university. You you know anyway, it was a Sanatani. Nalanda university. is not a Hindu university. It was a Buddhist university. It's fine. It's fine. It does. No, it's not fine. You don't even know the basics, man. Come on. It, You're coming on here trying to claim what that is you know stuff that you don't talk over me. Right? Calm down. Calm down. Yes, yes, yes. Nalanda was clearly a Buddhist university. Okay. Now, if the How Hindus do you know that it was a Buddhist oh, university? Finish, without talking over me. Okay. So Nalanda was not a Hindu university, it was a Buddhist university. If you're yeah. going to claim that all the Hindus in the entire India, okay, put all their scriptures in, in a Buddhist university for it to be preserved, then surely you're, you're incompetent to even preserve it in your own universities. That's what, okay. Uh, okay, can so I say uh, 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 claim that the universities were burned. Okay, can I say it's, something it's now? Actually, I, it's, it, it doesn't really okay, wash with the okay, Can I say something now? If a yes. Buddhist said this to me, I would have, uh, I would I, say, okay, you have I understand, it. I understand your point. Can I say something? So the okay. thing is, you're saying that, okay, uh, if the scriptures were to be put down into some other religions, universities, then it was never meant to be preserved, right? So you no, understand. All I'm saying time. is that if you have lost the evidence, then just say we don't have any physical evidence. All we have yes. is claims from the past. Say like that. It, it makes yes. the conversation easier to flow. It's it's because it's not that uh, it's not a black and white situation, right? It, it is, is a black and white. Because it's it just, look, when if I ask Muslims, about, when you're talking about history, right? It is always a gray area because not everything no, has not, food, food. not no. for everything. Not everything. Not everything. Has food, I'm sorry right? to say this. Not Otherwise, why would food. people study history if it's always going to be a gray area? Because yeah. not everything is proof. Do, do we uh, one do, do we from have a Shoka's columns? Do, do we have a Shoka? Do we have a Shoka's columns? That's not a gray area. Do we have a Shoka's yeah, we column? We do have a Shoka's column. Yeah, yeah. That that's not that's area. not a gray area. That's not. But that is because have, it is not do, that do, much do, of a history, one, right? One second. Do you have a two thousand years old manuscript of the Hindu scriptures? Yes, we do. Where? Yes, we do. Where? Yeah, where? it is. Uh, it is in the. Where? 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 Yeah, okay. it's in the Delhi Museum. We have oh, uh, let you know the museum. Don't, don't, know. don't make up things. Yeah, just don't, we don't know. It, of the it, it will be much it's more sincere fine. and it's honest fine. coming from you if it you say, fine. I don't know, instead of waffling and making false assumptions. See, the, uh, the, I thought that it was going to be a conversation where you are yeah, allowed yeah, to. No, but if you, you have to correct you when you give so. misinformation. It's fine. It, it is fine. It's not misinformation. See, the thing is like... You said you Nalanda know. was a Hindu university. Was that misinformation? Yeah, it no, was. not misinformation. Come on. For you, it is misinformation because you... What about you Takshila? Is Takshila Hindu or, 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 yeah, or so Buddhist? It is not. The truth cannot be like two spaces, right? So... You might be saying it on a different space. We might be saying it on no, a different no. space. Look, every every still... historian, every historian knows that Nalanda, Takshila are Buddhist universities. You cannot yes. come on our panel and try to say that you know better than those historians. Br brother, yeah, right, now, right now. Can you please name me those historians? <laughs> are you a historian, by the way? Can you I, I, I am a historian. historian? I, I, there are I'm also a, historians I, claiming... See, see, see. Yeah, there yeah, are I also have, historians I claiming have, that Nalanda and Takshila were Hindu universities. Yeah. Brother, so there are brother, both sides... There are both sides which of the story. Is, wait, wait. Which Hindu credible scholar says Nalanda was a Hindu university? Or Takshila? Buddhist credible scholar says that. Uh, give me Nalanda one name. Was a Buddhist, uh, yeah. okay, okay. I'll give you. I'll tell you what. Yes, I'll give yes, you the reference yes. about Nalanda yes. and Takshila being Buddhist. Can you provide evidence yes. for for them being Hindu? Yes, sure. Yeah, yeah, we can see. Start googling now. I've, I've, <laughs> no, I, I'm not googling. I follow Listen, a person I, named Abhijit Chowda. Have you ever been to Takshila? Have you ever been to Takshila? I've, I've been to Nalanda. I've been to Bihar. The ruins are still in Bihar. So, okay. yeah. So I, the, I've, the, been, the, the, I've been to Tex, I've been to Takshila multiple times. Takshila is entirely Buddhist. Okay. All the, all the remains in Takshila. There's no trace of Hinduism in Takshila. None. None. 
I've been to Tesla just, myself just personally. To, just to clarify one thing, right? When yeah. you say Hindu, right, it is not a religion. First of all, it is the Sanatan Dharma that is the religion. Exactly, and, exactly. Uh, so all the sects, yeah, but, but, and, and, Jain, and Buddhism, uh, Buddhism but this, is not everything Sanatan is a, everything By the way, this is this is the official is site of Nalanda. What does it say over here? It is uh, official. Uh, okay, I understand what you're saying. Let me just put it this way. When you say Hindu is different from the Buddhist religion. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Before you go there, look at is You ask for evidence about Nalanda. And all the other. Human, wait a minute. Are a of, you ask for uh, evidence about Nalanda. Yes, I'm giving it yes. to you. Do you acknowledge this is false? Or yes, I do. True? Yes, I do. Okay, so okay. you didn't even read it. You just yeah, said I it. Yeah, I'm looking at the screen. I no, don't no, see no, problem. no problem. No problem. Who, look, whom look. is this information for before you made the decision is false? Uh, I understand that it is from the government of Bihar or whatever the website yes. it is. I understand. Okay, I understand now you produce website. your evidence. Let's see. Yes. Uh, what no, I'm no, saying it doesn't. Is, look, it doesn't exist. Is, I, we're wasting time here. <laughs> look, guys, yeah. we're wasting time. The guys uh, just making you 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 stand, you're corrected now. Don't worry about it. We, we're not here to to yes, belittle no, you understand. or to put the you. Debate, yeah, the this thing is, is we not want... about whether it was a Buddhist university or anyway, not. The, thing the was, reason I brought up Nalanda is because to show that this guy here is waffling. So anyway, yeah. tell us the evidence, the uh, any archaeological evidence that Ram existed. Yes, archaeological evidence. <laughs> see, see, see. <laughs> Talking about Why are you laughing <laughs> because like uh, you cannot see the how history right uh, when you say archaeological evidence yeah uh, you want something physical right of course yeah right archaeological yeah. evidence is we can name you thousands of them the, the way but how see, see. Is one. they don't want thousands it it keeps on the that raw existence gathering gathering that, gathering that, that, no, see, see. evidence, is evidence not what, what let me explain what we're asking for let me explain what we ask so that's clear to you guys okay you okay. worship you worship a man called ram Okay? okay, or at least the avatar, the avatar, the avatar. Okay, you worship Ram. Yeah. Okay, obviously you believe Ram was real, right? Yes. That he was a real person. Yes, yes. All we are asking for is evidence for that person, not your scripture. Your scripture, See. we don't. Let me explain why. Your scripture, we don't know who wrote it. We don't know. You don't. You, I'll tell you one thing. You don't know who wrote those scriptures. You don't know. Okay, they have been added. Okay, to I'm telling. Okay, okay, okay. Do you know who who wrote the Quran? Yes. <laughs> we 100%. know the who wrote the Quran. We know the, the name. Who wrote the Quran? Okay, I'm gonna give you the name. Because names. Um, according to my information, yeah. Because, okay. because okay. according really to my information, Prophet Muhammad was an educator. Mansoor is showing you the evidence behind him. Can you see it? Yes, look. Can you see behind me? No, it's not. <laughs> Okay. That's the Quran from the first century when the companions the of Prophet Quran Muhammad were alive. Which are also the name of the writer who wrote it. What's the name? <laughs> I cannot read Arabic. Yeah, well, even if you could <laughs> read Arabic, how would you know? Because you haven't actually researched this. M Mansoor, Mansoor has been sitting with the evidence for the past one yeah. hour. Okay, one of the scribes' okay. name, <laughs> human, one of the name of the scribes is Zaid bin Thabit. Zain bin Zabid, Ali bin Abi Talib, Ubay bin Kam, Muawiyah bin yes. Abi, We can name you 60 of them Abdullah easily, you know, Zubair, quite easily. Abbas, so so now, also, what, listen, now, listen, listen, now you listen. give us the evidence can, of, of Ram now. Go on. See, see, see. We can, you we, guys always change topics. Oh, see, yeah. see, we can yeah. we can also name many we can also name many Rishis and Pandits who wrote the Ram oh, Charitra. Who wrote Pandits. the Ram So yeah. Evidence for you. I am asking you. I am asking you. I just want to interrupt you um, very um, humbly, and, and I request um, that you forgive me for that. You see, when we're dealing with history, we need to okay. understand what we're talking about evidence. When we, We're not talking about religious evidence and claims. Religious claims is claims of religious groups. Like, I can ma make a book now and write, okay, this whole India belongs to me. Akhanda Bharat belongs to me, okay? And I call this Mansur Bible or Mansur Gita, whatever, right? It doesn't make it a historical document or historical evidence. What we are asking is your belief needs to be based on something which is rooted and grounded in history. That's what they're asking. And when you go into history, we're looking for historical evidence. And I'm sure you know what historical evidences may look like. One of them is what we call archaeological evidence, in which we look at remains, what have left 
by people around that time so that we can look at it. Whether it's a rock inscription, just like behind me, as you can see, it's an inscription, writings mm -hmm. in a wall, in a, in a rock, right? This is form yeah. of archaeological epigraphic evidence. If you have manuscripts in terms of, say, writing in parchments, in books, any written materials, you can produce them as archaeological evidence. Likewise, you said oh, yeah. and temples in which there are inscriptions all around. The whole Ramayana is inscribed. These will count as evidence. So where are the historical evidence that goes back to the time the so-called person Ram was around and believed to be around? We need a contemporary evidence from the time that person existed. Do you have anything? If you don't have it, like Ustad Adnan earlier mentioned, I mean, this is well known in the religious history of the Abrahamic faiths, where the, the say, say, example of Moses, the prophet, for example, there are no secular historical archaeological evidence for his name, for example. That's hmm. not being ashamed of anything. We say, okay, there are various reasons no, but, why yeah. that might be the case, but various reasons that may be the case, because when we are talking about names, when we, names inscribed in Egyptian times, was it written really in a different name or, or, or a title? Various things can come into play and to understand why a particular name is not mentioned. Likewise, we know the pharaohs or the dynasties at that time, they did not want to write histories of many people at that time. They want to only continue is, is the history of the victors, the one who has been the victorious ones, and they obliterate everyone else from history. Many, many reasons can be given by archaeologists why certain uh, names of peoples or even nations are not mentioned in the historical record. You just need to be likewise transparent and sincere and honest and say, we don't have it. That's what we are asking you to be some human. You said first human. I want you to be the first human as a Hindu, and you both of you are Hindu here, to be someone who's transparently honest and say, yes, we don't have any such evidence. All we have is religious claims. Be open so, and transparent so and say it. Okay, so so I just mentioned a few minutes ago that we don't have a archaeological evidence as such, physical archaeological evidence. When I was asked about it by uh, Adnan Rashid, sir. Yeah, there's uh, not such but, thing as spiritual or archaeological. Archaeological evidence are physical. So you don't need to mention physical about it because there's no spiritual archaeological evidence we can we can trace back okay so so the thing is see language didn't exist when uh, the time when uh, you know uh, the, the the existence of hinduism is far beyond the human imagination as per our spirituality but if we go if we go by archaeological evidences there have been cave uh, cave drawing in, uh, drawings in africa when like human uh, when humans didn't know how to speak languages right uh, first uh, uh, the cavemen didn't know how to speak languages they used to write uh, they used to draw uh, draw the carvings or drawings so there are many carvings that have been uh, that have been you know recovered from the ruins of africa that uh, uh, a monkey man on his knees is bowing down to someone who has a bow and arrow in his hand doesn't it doesn't it uh, seem similar to the ramayana OMG. Have Seriously, you? is that what you're going to bring? Is that from Africa, by the way? Where is that? Where is that carving? Yeah, it is from Africa. You're going to have to prove that. Really? Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Tell me, which, tell me which Africans worshipped Hanuman. There are tribes in Africa which still... Have you seen the movie The, uh, the Wakanda Forever? Oh, there is a scene... No, wait, wait. I, wow. Have you seen there the movie Ram? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the movie Ram Setu? You believe all that seriously? Yes, That's movies. No, 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 way, no. How, but... how old are you, Raj? How old are you? Have you seen? I'm Pink eighteen. Panther? You're eighteen. Oh, okay, yeah. you're still a teenager, so I don't blame you. But look, you know, with all due respect, my friend, try to bring something which is evidence. By the way, you know your your Listen, books are if supposed gonna, to be in Sanskrit. Gonna... You're not going yeah. to yeah. Sanskrit wasn't in wasn't cave carvings, okay? According to the Hindus, so, the, listen, the, listen, listen. the the knowledge of the Vedas were given by uh, Brahman. Sorry, by Brahma, Bra right? Brahma, yeah. Brahma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In what language did the rishis get the get the uh, Vedas in? 
the 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 vedas weren't first of all received in the first one to receive the veda were the manasputras of brahma or the first creations yeah. of brahma the, they the were sons the sons of brahma yeah what language oh, yeah, yeah. did uh, brahma teach them in was it was it so, cave paintings or was it something else so we don't we do i don't know at I, i personally don't know i have to it, it must be a language that, right but, think about it yeah, even it though you're be, yeah, 18 yeah, yeah, years yeah, old yeah. i'm sure you can you you can imagine this when somebody teaches something it can be in sign yeah. language it can be in in a in a verbal language vocal language like the way we are speaking am i right so, so if, listen, listen. if the hindus are saying that sanskrit is an ancient language okay does it go all the way back to the rishis who are 302 million years old some of them so so listen the 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 rishis you are talking about are sapta rishis yes. the seven sages and uh, they are claimed to be millions of years old but the thing That's is hinduism said. hinduism uh, hinduism believes in the existence of several universes universes are destroyed and universes it, it are made matter. right it doesn't matter i'm asking yeah, yeah, what I'm, language I'm saying, I'm what saying. language if did God, they receive this knowledge of the vedas in see see if go, like see if god Uh, if god has been in the formation of and destruction of these many universes he he has the power to the like form beings the uh, the manas putras of brahma they it is possible that they used to speak some other language we never know because it was it was millions of years old right okay so do and, you know that language is wait wait how old how old is the oldest language how old is sanskrit Sanskrit is uh, Sanskrit is many uh, many international universities claim Sanskrit is four to five thousand years old. Okay, so that is but, not millions of years ago, right? No, no, it is not. Can, but can we can we say now that the the Saptarishis did not receive the Vedas in Sanskrit? Can we now say that? Can we conclude? Yeah, we can conclude. Okay, let me ask you. Not human, necessarily. I want to know if the other Hindu agrees with you. Human, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, so what language uh, did the Saptarishis receive the Vedas in? So, uh, see, the language that they received in, right? It was something that was understandable during that time. Now, what, yeah. whichever it might be, right? Uh, it is not only in terms of. So, when we say they received the language, we don't see that it was somebody who was speaking and somebody was listening. We say that because of dhyana and because of their. Uh, punctuation to the life and because of the momaya that was not there no, you are speaking a different they language were, now can you say it in english please to, they were able to get that knowledge directly we say it from the gods well, how do you mean directly were they were like, they uh, when we uh, like uh, one way to uh, understand is like when we close our eyes and we sit right so at that time at one point we say that uh, you will connect to the god okay. if you Uh, so through practices. through meditation they were receiving yeah, the through meditations yeah? and everything okay. it's not only meditation that's fine no no problem like, can we conclude everything. that it wasn't in sanskrit no it wasn't like see yeah, yeah, yeah it, it wasn't in sanskrit. sanskrit okay so it, it wasn't, wasn't necessarily in sanskrit, in sanskrit wait a minute wait a minute it wasn't necessarily we can, in we can sanskrit. now confirm that the original language of the vedas is not sanskrit yeah yeah we, it wasn't okay. necessarily sanskrit now you have you do not have the original language So you don't know how what the original Vedas actually said. In fact, uh, we have Brother Sam Stallone here, inshallah, who is joining us. He will tell you that the most of the Vedas is actually lost. Assalamu alaikum, Sam Bhai. Wa alaikum assalam, Rahmatul Lahi Barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Inshallah, we have pleasure to have you after a long time. Salam, boy. Alhamdulillah. Jai Sri Ram, Jai Sri Ram. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, the stream is going very good. Okay, alhamdulillah. It's a it's a pleasure to be around you guys. Yeah, always, always a pleasure, brother, to have you on our panel. Uh, mashallah, your knowledge on Hinduism is uh, much more than all of us combined here. <laughs> so tell me, uh, tell me, Sam, by these brothers, they have concluded that the Vedas are not in Sanskrit. Uh, by the way, can you tell them about the Vedas being lost? Most of them. Yeah, um, actually, the Vedas are not even one percent authentic because we don't find any manuscripts. Even one manuscript I haven't seen till now. which can be compared to today's vedas as like we have quran and which can be, which can be tallied to with the manuscripts uh what what no, see, see, first of all i would like to, see see first let of it, all i have finish. to stop you here wait wait never wait. Com- never com- listen listen never compare no, no, no. you need hinduism. to let him finish we gave you never chance. compare hinduism to a religion that 
Okay. Okay. This guy no will problem. not be quite so not to compare. mute him. Okay, go on, Sam. Yeah, I was just helping your brother. If you say don't compare, I will not compare. We'll just talk on Vedas. So there is no evidence of Vedas to, to be 100% authentic. Not even 100%. 1% I haven't seen. I have done many debates, discussions, live streams on Vedas, especially this subject of uh, uh, proving the authentic authenticity of Vedas. I didn't find even 1% authenticity. Uh, forget about 1%, I haven't seen one manuscript which can be compared with today's Vedas, which can be tallied and uh, uh, cross-checked with today's Vedas, what we have. So even, even Swami Vivekananda says in his uh, books, uh, the complete works of Swami Vivekananda, he says that uh, majority, most of the Vedas has been lost. Uh, according to his calculation, 89% of the Vedas has been lost. And what we have is just the bits and pieces of the manuscripts which is just uh, uh, five to six hundred years old. Just five to six hundred years old. That took bits yeah. and pieces. And because this is this the Rig Veda was actually found and is actually in, in the UNESCO. The manuscripts are from 1464 CE. Right. Okay, which is even uh, the Quran manuscripts are twice older than that. Right, exactly. Exactly. And, yeah, and, and all... as we were talking about the existence of Rama, so Rama, Rama, Rama. Rama existence is uh, uh, not found anywhere. Neither, neither in archaeological surveys, neither in history books. Uh, uh, this is this is said by Hindu scholars, not by any Muslim scholar. And coming to forget about forget about archaeological surveys. And as we are, as the as the subject of today is like uh, about the Ram Mandir. So this this construction of Ram Mandir and uh, making of idols is completely against Vedas. So the, the main question arises here is why a human being is worshipped, which is against Vedas. Why a building is constructed, named temple, which is against Veda. So it's your understanding of Veda might be different uh, from what a Hindu's understanding or a Sanatani's understanding might be. And I, do, uh, I understand where you're coming from, but that is fine. Now, in terms of like, uh, the authenticity of Rama, right? No, no, before, is, before you go there, human, you know, you said it's it's fine. It's not actually fine. Can you show us anywhere from the Vedas where it advocates that you should worship an idol? You should worship so, God in the form of an idol. Can you show us? So the thing is uh, to talk about that philosophy, right? To talk about that philosophy. So we don't, we don't fight in terms of uh, who is right and who is wrong. We fight you in not believe in the Vedas, who, which is the philosophy that you follow through which you make sure that you are benefiting the society and making sure that you are a part of the society. That, 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 that because you know, earlier, hold on, you know, the the earlier you gave that. references from Ramayana, so that was a scripture. You follow a scripture. So yeah, it's not a philosophy. You do follow scriptures. So the question yeah, yeah. to you is this: If you consider the Vedas to be Shruti, okay, and and it's a primary. Uh, scriptures of the Hindus, you can't deny that. Can you show us any evidence from the entire Vedas where it advocates the worship of God in the form of an idol? That's what I'm saying. Like, if you, you can't just say you can't, don't do like nothing. You'll we'll be caught out again. I know what you are going to uh, also in terms of reference that Krishna said that it, it is. Uh, no, no, I said from the Vedas. I didn't say from the Bhagavad Gita. I said, show me evidence from the Vedas. A anywhere from where, wherever you are getting that information about uh, in Vedas, it is saying that you should not worship idols. That, that is fine. You might not it's be It's a question, to, man. Come on. I didn't make a statement. I'm asking That's you a important. question. Show me That's evidence from the Vedas where, is, where it actually says, okay, you need to worship God in the form of this idol or something like that. In, in our Vedas or in our scriptures, it doesn't even say that you need to worship God. Just so really? you know, uh, yeah, it doesn't even say that you need to okay. worship. Is there a mention of any God in the Vedas? Yes. It is just about the way how you live your life and how you uh, make sure that when we when we say that we want to attain God, right? What we are referring to is we want to be so good, as good as God, that we will be a part of God, not be okay. a separate human being. The, that the, is the, the, but the, the, didn't the, Shiva the, the, kill her own son not knowing it was her son? How is that good? Sorry? I mean, didn't God kill his children and do all this other terrible stuff and not, you know, Shiva? Not knowing. Yeah. 
Yeah, not knowing, slit its own son's throat. Shiva said his, sh slit his own son's throat, not knowing it was him. Yeah, that How's was that Ganesh, good? the elephant god. Yeah. Yes, and yes. If, and then yes, they yes. have to put the elephant head on the... But if you're board. saying that we need to be good like God, how is, is that what you say is good? Yeah, it's uh, so that or, story, or, or what, or what the, the Hindus story. you cannot just or, take a part of the story and say, that, Yes, okay, I'm not going look, to look at what the, the Hindus are doing to Muslims today. And, what what the Hindus are doing, extremist Hindus, what they are doing to Muslims today in India is that part of your Vedas? Uh, what I mean, are they doing? Like, what are they doing? I okay, you're blind, it's, you're it's, blind to it's it? demolishing a place of worship. Is that a Hindu value? So that, that's what I'm saying. Like, see, I understand that you are saying that. Do you condemn it? Do you condemn it or do you condone it? No. Uh, what, Destroying the Babri Masjid. Do you condemn it or do you actually agree with it? Uh, I agree chances. that there should be a Ram temple in there, but uh, no. But do you do you agree with the demolition of a mosque? Yeah, it was before because the mosque was the uh, built upon a temple. That's okay. why so you're not following good values then. Because so the thing like is, anybody can claim, a mosque is you know, anybody can temple, claim that there was a temple there. Temple is built on a mosque. No, look, Islam. Which Islam, in fact, claims that you can demolish mosques to build temples on top of? Yeah, he's he's following his whims and desires, not the Why? values so which he was talking about. Earlier. It was a temple before, and if uh, after Baba came, he demolished it, and he. That's why the Babri Masjid was demolished because there was a Nepal. How do you know it was Babar who demolished the study? Also, how do you know it was Babar who demolished the even the Supreme Court didn't say this? Why are you making so, claims so like the, the first claim of Nalanda so, again? The Supreme Court did say that it, it, no, it, it never the said Babar destroyed and, it. Don't lie, yeah. it did not say that. Yeah, the, the, in fact, the Supreme sure Court that, can, can you you know, the Supreme that said that these car savers who demolished the mo uh, mosque that was an illegal activity. Do, do you have you read have you read the verdict of the Supreme Court? You yeah, haven't. Was, Most Hindus haven't actually. Do you agree it was, agree it was illegal to break the mosque? Yeah, it was uh, like I don't think so. It was illegal because there was a temple before that. <laughs> okay, you know, the goodbye, my friend. Because if you can't be sincere, I might as well bring somebody else in. Okay, uh, Hindu, uh, you want to say something before you leave? Uh, because I'm going to bring in others who have been waiting for a while. So, so the thing is, I see, I condemn the violence caused by both the sides, not only Hindus, but both the sides, because yeah. Muslims were also the one they were, uh, they were killing Hindus. So I no, condemn no, no. the violence I'm, of both the sides. You're talking specifically yeah, yeah, about yeah. the Babri Masjid. If the Supreme Court has actually stated that it was illegal to break the mosque, because you see, you can't be a vigilante. You can't just take the law in your hand. You have to go through the due process. The Muslims did not do that. Okay, in I know, I know, see, see. under Indian democracy, since the Muslims have been living since the independence, they haven't broken any temples, have they? See, see, they I mean, have, he, see, he just, in recent just, times, they haven't since the birth okay, of the so constitution. Why are the, Hindus, they haven't. why are the Hindus doing it then? Why are they taking the laws in their own hands, demolishing masjids, and then causing a lot of deaths and riots? See, I mean, car savers, car savers broke, broke the tank, uh, broke the mosque out of anger. I agree, but the many of the car savers were arrested, right? And even the leader, the leader of the UP pro, UP state at that time, Mr. Kalyan Singh, he was he was in the jail for a few days, and uh, like he was made, you know why uh, he, he was, was in made jail? to resign Do you know because why he, he wouldn't make? Because he uh, see, because he uh, he prevented the police from firing at the car savers because there were uh, see. Uh, he claimed that I will protect the mosque, but he couldn't. Uh, the car savers eventually broke the I, mosque. I know. Are you aware? Are you I aware? Know. Are you aware of the intelligence report from an Indian officer who wrote that this plan to uh, demolish the mosque uh, was devised ten months before the the rally on the sixth of December, nineteen ninety two. Ten ten months yeah, before yeah, yeah. that. The, yeah. So there was a yeah, plan. Yeah. There was a plan. Yeah. So this plan was devised yeah. by. Hindu extremists. Look, the, even even the term Hindu is problematic. Okay, uh, hmm. many in, Indians today they claim to be Hindu. Even this term came to be used, or as it is today, during the British period. People, uh, as you rightly pointed out earlier, that it's Sanatan Dharam people, uh, you know, um, prescribed to. It wasn't Hinduism. Yeah, yeah. Okay, people, yeah, yeah, yeah. people, people during the Mughal period and beyond, they were Marathas. They were Rajputs, okay. They were Jats. Maratha, okay. Marathas, let me correct you. Marathas, Rajputs, and uh, Jats. They are the caste that came into existence. 
they were yes, never but, mentioned but in the vedas but they hindus. are they were not called hindus never they were sanatanis they, they were sanatanis listen Sanat- listen, yeah, listen yeah look you can claim fine you can you can give them names today no problem but if you go to historic records in the persian language and whatever language even sanskrit okay uh, yeah yeah you you know kitab ul hind of al biruni yeah, yeah i have heard of it does he does he actually refer to people as hindus in, I in the religious see. in the religious sense in the religious sense he he highlights see, not, the caste not, caste system yeah go, go on go, go on yeah see see, see, I, see i am i am aware of that that hindu hindus is not the right term and uh, we uh, the other one that was uh, in the stream before we also mentioned before that it is sanatani the right term to refer us but hinduism is a modern word uh, n- not actually modern but it is a medieval word it it has been devised to see we, uh, we sanatanis have uni- uh, unity in diversity right we uh, there are many sects in here, modern hinduism it is an umbrella term to define the all the sects in uh, in one single term so hinduism yes. is not so hinduism I think, I think is we are diverting from the topic so uh, mm-hmm. let's by the way hindu do you you know have yeah. to take in another uh, uh, guest so do you want to say something before you leave see 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 yeah 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 just uh, give me 2 minutes okay. see the word sanatan is referred in our text so uh, i know the text aren't uh, the text aren't it is it isn't sure that it is authenticated uh, but if you see there are many civilizations that have been formed and destroyed on this earth do you agree yeah yes by the way we so, we asked you a question earlier which you didn't answer uh, that was uh, with regards to the question on worship of idols can you do yeah, you know I'll, anywhere I'll answer in the that. do you know anywhere in the vedas where this is advocated i'll i'll answer to that but listen to me the the word sanatani means eternal we, we right we discussed the sanatan word and everything in another stream already so let's not waste time on something which we have already done i want to come back to that i, I saw that and... see 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 i saw that yeah. clip but the hindu uh, hindu there wasn't uh, wasn't able to uh, uh, like tell you the correct meaning so i want to uh, see we are I mean, eternal why do you have a profile name called hindu on on your profile you should have called yourself sanatani <laughs> it is really i mean look at the irony I mean, if you really think sanatani is the right term why do you call yourself hindu see sanatani sana is uh, sanatani on your profile name it says hindu why this is why see, this, yeah, is, this why, is this is this why this when you claim hinduism the or is the oldest religion i can i can tell you with confidence islam is older than hinduism because how do Islam, you know there isn't I, tell, even a mosque that I, that's 50 brother, that more than 1500 year old there wait, is wait, a, name a single mosque is, that is this is what you I'm need to listen you. to what adnan has to say yeah i am saying the oh, quran dear. says the quran says in the deen in the lah al islam allah god tells us that our deen our religion is islam he names it islam you are muslims you follow islam okay now with hinduism you're not going to find that in the sources anyway you're going to keep claiming sanatanism sanatan dharam sanatan dharam okay but this is the point people are using badges today to divide from others without knowing that this badge is not even real it's made up it's made by the british the british gave you the badge of hinduism the british to divide you from muslims to separate you from the muslims okay so uh look we can go on and on i mean look go go ahead and answer hashim's question is there any reference to idol worship idol worship specifically in, in worshiping worshiping yeah. idols in the vedas okay okay so we don't necessarily worship the idol the object that is in front of us but the thing is we try to connect to god through the idol like see it is it has been in our values since thousands of years that I, we try to so see, the answer see, is see. no The let let me no, ask yes. you a simple question brother sorry brother yeah sorry. yeah uh, yes let me ask you a simple question brother hindu do you consider ram as god yes we do we uh, do do, do, you, do yeah do yeah yeah see see uh, ram to be god and uh, he 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 deserve worship yeah he does deserve worship any t- anything okay, that is okay. di- directly connected to god is the deemed okay, worthy of worship in hinduism let's, let's see let's see let's see, see let's see, see from see. the scripture let's see from the scripture do you do you okay. do you do you believe the god can be weak can god cry no i don't 
Okay, let me quote you a verse. Valmiki Ramayana, book number three, chapter number 63, verse number two and three. Here mm-hmm. Ram says, drawing a hot and deep breath, crying with grief, Sri Rama for his past, who was plunged in profound grief. Actually, it says that uh, Ram, Rama, Rama uh, uh, when uh, Sita was kidnapped and was uh, taken to Lanka, Sri Lanka, Ram was talking to Lakshman and saying that maybe some in the past, in the previous birth, I have committed some grave crime. That's why I am facing this thing in this life. My wife has been taken mm-hmm. away from me. So he was crying okay. and he was thinking that he has done some, some great crime in his previous life. Do you know what yeah, was yeah, the crime yeah. which was talking about? Ram was crying. So, let, let me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you the, something. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, Ram was I know crying that. Are... And he was saying that yes, he yes, has he committed was. some grave crime in his previous birth. Do you know what was the crime he committed in his previous birth? Yeah, yes, I'll answer to I that. God, see, Ram was crying because see, he was God in human form. He wasn't God in his original form. Like he was an avatar, a uh, Ansh. You know what is Ansh? Okay. Ansh is uh, Ansh is actually a uh, like a single jar or single glass of water from a river or or a water or a huge water body, is he, right? Is he God or is he not okay, God? Okay. Simple question. Can- is an avatar like i said everything that is connected it is in directly connected direct connection of god is but deemed worthy of worship god, in hinduism that's what i said for him? if he's not a god why build a temple for him because he's the can he's worthy of worship he's connected to god can, he is related can, to can god. god can god can god worship someone else no he can't but ram did when sita was kidnapped and ram was very worried and when he was helpless, he took help from the sun god. He was praying to sun god and asking for help. He was saying, please help me and let me know where my wife has been taken away. Which way? Show me the way. And he see, asked see, prayer. See, I told you. Let me complete. Please, please, please. Please, please, okay. please brother, let me complete. I'm quoting your, okay. quoting your Valmiki Ramana. Have, have respect for it. Valmiki Ramana, book okay. number 3, chapter number 63, verse number 16 and 17. Here, Ram is praying, literally pl- praying to two gods. One is sun god and one is wind god, wind, Vayu, Vayu Devta and Surya Devta. And is requesting yeah. them to tell him, show him the way where the uh, where the Sita has been taken away and who kidnapped her and which way. So how can a god worship some other god and ask for help? See, okay, okay, I'll tell you. The, I already mentioned several times before, Ram Ram is deemed of worship because he is an avatar of God. He is not God in his original form. God in his original form is uh, is right all knowing. He doesn't like he cannot cry, right? As you said, as so you must believe, be God can. God God cannot be no. weak, right? So God cannot me, uh, be ignorant. See, see, God see, cannot see. be helpless. Crying, God see, cannot I can, cry. I can also. See, 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 I can also give you the I I can also give you the reasons for why Ram the avatars of Vishnu have cried or they have emotions like anger, uh, anger. Between, what is the it, difference between what is the difference between him and a common human being? Common human being also cry. Ram being God also crying. He is also helpless. A common see. human being also will be helpless. A common common human being will worship someone else. Even Ram is doing the same thing. So what see. makes him God and what makes him worthy of worship? Okay, even think... in Satya Prakash, do you believe in do you believe in Maharishi Dayanan Saraswati? Yeah, yeah. The founder of Arya Samaj, right? Do you believe yeah, in yeah, him? Yeah, yeah. In his books, yeah. he condemned he, he condemned he condemned Avatar, the concept of Avatar. He says God cannot take Avatar. God cannot be weak. God cannot be helpless. God cannot be ignorant. God pray cannot pray to other gods. He has condemned and the why is that? Let me ask you why is that? He, he has said, see, he has I said haven't Krishna, heard. Krishna see, cannot see. Be God. I... Ram cannot be God, Shiva cannot be God, Brahma cannot be God. The only God is Brahm, the supreme being. Worship him alone. See, see, see. Okay, okay. I know where it is coming from, but see, I haven't heard of a single bro- uh, book of the uh, Diana and Saraswati. I respect him as a sage, but I don't follow okay, him. I haven't read his books. See, see, let see. me go. Oh. He has condemned idol okay, worship as well. Satya Prakash, page number, page number 380. He has mm-hmm. given the list, the few evils of idol worship. This is the title. Few evils of idol worship. He has condemned idol okay. worshippers. And he has said that every idol worshipper is a stupid person, ignorant person. And idol worshipping is a sin. 
he has clearly mentioned in satyat prakash and he has condemned all uh, uh, um, uh, all branches of sanatan dharma like uh, uh, the the followers of vishnu the followers uh, followers of shakti the followers of uh, shiva he has con- condemned all this uh, uh, branches of sanatan dharma and, and, and you know i that... <laughs> okay yes. okay you, you know, if I you want the princess i will give you from satyat prakash do you want it yeah. I think that no, will see, take see, us see, uh, see. away from I, I the think, topic. I think so let's believes, come back. Uh, the, look, then, I will worship. Something? Yeah, see, see, see. Let me, let me answer. Let the... me answer to what Brother Mansoor asked. So, see, what about so, my questions? No, what about yeah, yeah, see, see, see. A, you you uh, claim that God can see, see. Go, uh, what's the difference between Ram and a pro, uh, human being, right? No, I am talking about Maharishi Dayanand Saraswati. He has condemned idol worship and idol worshippers. See, not see, only see, not, no i i have some, some someone bigger the brahmans the highest caste in the hindu caste system okay mm-hmm. the brahmans they believed that idol worship is, is for the low life it's for the low caste okay it's not for the highest because brahmans themselves testified that there is only one god who deserves to be worshiped they call him brahma that's why they took the name brahmans okay people or brahman people who actually uh, worshiped one god the supreme deity but they even they conveyed this idea that idol worshipper uh, idol worshipers are low caste low people this is not for the high priestly caste okay this was actually testified to by al biruni in in his kitab al hind which is pretty authentic and pretty accurate in its description of hinduism in and the 10th, uh, and uh, the, uh, may i ask where century. are you quoting this from the this phrase is, from the brahmins no the the, this is from balbairuni abu rehan albairuni kitab so, so how can <laughs> it's his perspective it may be his yes, perspective it, of it, hinduism uh, uh, okay uh, you're right you're right this is his perspective okay and we can even present evidence today okay from brahman writings where they had actually uh, stated this you you want us to present yeah in fact, brahman, see, see, in fact this yeah. is a very the thing is thing is i'll yeah, tell you yeah, okay go, okay yeah. i'll tell you yeah so yeah. according to the hindu timeline we are living in the kali yuga okay yeah. i i'll come to your topic we are living in the kali yuga so hmm. in the kali yuga the people don't know the proper way of worship okay right? so in the kali yuga you can find thousand individuals that can claim anything right like, mm-hmm. uh, hindus are opposing hindus muslims can oppose the muslims or and w- people can oppose uh, their own religion and become atheist right what about so, vedas opposing idol worship where where is it recorded in the vedas and and okay. see 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 i am just a 18 year old i haven't read all the hindu text okay but i can uh, i can that's tell you brother, as you mentioned invite, before we, that's why we invite you and people like you to islam brother this is the religion this is the truth this is this is worship of only one god who created the heavens and the earth okay who sent prophets who made humanity who sent all the prophets okay and this narrative even makes sense hindu narrative as we know it based upon the vedas that cannot be authenticated does not make sense see, see. it doesn't make it sense makes because sense hindu in practice, the modern times okay no, hindu, it makes hindu, sense hindu, in the hindu kali yuga today. it makes sense in the 21st century okay brother hindu yeah. hindu practice contradicts directly hindu literature hindu teachings okay earlier people were talking about being nice and kind and ram being ramly or ram being la- ram like okay when you look at india today okay predominantly i'm not saying all hindus are like this okay there are hindus who are absolutely very noble people very gentle people compassionate people but mm-hmm. this B, this bjp hinduism has completely taken away the innocence from the people people are now a bunch of killers and haters that's what they are okay and it's, see, this see. is not going to yeah this is not going to help you people what was going to help is to wake up to the reality that this is all a sham it's all made up yeah. it's a man made religion it's a completely yeah. man made religion there is no divine origin to it it doesn't exist Okay, by the way you the said uh, hindu yeah, you yeah. said it makes complete sense sanatan dharma and all that how does idol worship make complete sense are you there see i didn't say that see see i didn't see the current age we are living in is kali yuga okay it like modern hinduism maybe um, has flaws i i am not saying that it doesn't have flaws but the narrative we were fighting for and we were fighting legally so uh, the, after even after the babri demolition which i condemn i said i condemned Bab- babri demolition 
but uh, it was it was done by the car savers out of anger but the thing but the thing is the uh, so half of them were punished they were in the prison Brother, some they were terrorists killed. yeah but that was in the question i asked you i asked you how does idol worship make sense they also did it in oh, anger they they also did it in anger so do you see the problem with this anger is that it terrorism breeds terrorism okay anger breeds anger uh, violence breeds violence this is the point the point is Hinduism today, as we know it, under BJP, okay, is not the Hinduism we see in Vedas. It's not there. Okay, idol worship is not there. Most importantly, idol worship is not there. Ken. It's not there. Idol worship is not there. Okay. Right. On top of that, there are noble teachings which these BJP thugs are not highlighting for the people. In fact, they are just, you know, yogi, for example, is supposed to be a religious man, yogi, Aditya Nath, right? Okay. okay. Yeah. And look at look at his works. He's a thug. He's a thug, right? And and he's okay. a cowardly thug. He doesn't he reflect the life himself, of a yogi. He's crying like sure. crying like a mouse in the parliament. Do you see that those clips? You see, you remember those clips? See, when see, he was, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, see. Yeah. So this is how cowardly these people are. When they have power, when they have guns around them, when they have uh, protection of the government, they are roaring like lions. But in reality, they are nothing but mice. Okay, these people are manipulators. They're manipulating the masses. I believe Yogi does not believe in Hinduism. Yogi probably doesn't even believe in God or religion. He's he's a religious, oh. a religionless man. Even even Modi's probably, you know, when he's sitting with his friends alone, he's probably laughing at the people. I look at these fools. We're manipulating them to bring the, bring us to power. So they're very clever people. I they can come out see, in public. See, see. Yeah, I yeah. can I can say these things even of the Muslim imams, right? The Muslim, the Muslim sheikhs, it's, the it's imams. Imam, name, wait, wait. Name one if imam Muslims, who, is, if, who is calling for if Muslims. I'll tell you one thing. Violence, yeah. If Muslims okay. are using using religion to commit violence against innocent people, to target yeah. innocent people, we would be the yeah. first people. Okay, forget the imams. We are people sitting on this panel. We would be the first people to condemn it. We would start. We would stand against. But you are not. That's see, see, that's exactly my point. But you people are not. Because which, which imam have you in mind? Which see, imam what's are you referring to? You don't even know the name of a single imam who actually calls for killing people. Do you, see, see, do you know about name, Sheikh Uthman Ibn Farooq? Sorry? Yes, I know about him, yes. He's not an imam. Sheikh Uthman Ibn Farooq, Dr. Zakir Naik. Yeah, yes. what about them? When what did they call them? to kill Doctor, people? See, see, Dr. Zakir Naik has been recorded several times insulting Hindu gods. See, we see the point is different that your belief is correct or my belief is correct, right? But but to disrespect but, 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 each other, see, yeah, see, our agree. religion does. What what has okay. Doctor Zakir Naik said about Hindu gods? What did, how did he insult them? Not that I defend his wrong actions, but yeah. what did he say that you deem as an insult against Hindu gods? Because he can't do it. Quran Quran forbids him. The Quran forbids him. The Quran says, "Do not insult other people's false gods, lest they may insult your true God in ignorance." The Quran yeah, is very clear that's, on that. See, see, see. That's exactly so could, my hold point. Hold on, hold on. You made a claim. Yeah. So, so where, I mean, what, what you did Zakir Naik say? Insult that insult is not actually an insult. It's criticism. I think you, it's highlighting. You, yeah, the okay. problem, the, the the problem absurd, is many of you guys, they don't know the difference between... Uh, Hashim, you're muted. We can't hear you. Oh, is it? Can you hear me now? Oh, I can, I can hear you just fine. Yeah. Sorry, I can't hear Hashim. Okay, so look... The difference between critical thinking and insult is great. You need to understand the difference between. I'm gonna, for I'm example, gonna, I'm gonna go back of, and come back in. I'm gonna come. Okay, inshallah. Come back in. Okay. Yeah, we might have to save a place. Oh, good. So, critical thinking is you know where you analyze the books, the scriptures, and then you say this is something. For example, uh, brother Maurice, uh, no, it was brother Brandon mentioned that a god who doesn't even know that he has a son and then he decapitates him. That shows that this God is not all-knowing. Because according to you, you know, according to us as well, God is all-knowing. That means we can actually, by looking at your scripture, we can come to the conclusion that Shiva is not all-knowing. Okay? If he is God, then he's definitely not all-knowing. This is not called insult. This is not called mocking your religion. It's called critical thinking. In fact, here so, so, in, so the, the, in the West, so we actually have the university courses. Islam. Is it... 
in see 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 right, let right. me let me come to this point is the bjp insulting islam or criticizing islam the insulting not islam, islam but the muslims in the muslims present in india and they're calling for the murder of muslims present in india are you B- saying B- who told you, they are calling I, for the murder i okay B- so BJ, bjp is calling for the muslim genocide brother yes, they are genocide experts <laughs> they are genocide experts and they have warned that there are stages of genocide that have been crossed if you know the story of godra you wouldn't be asking this honestly the story of the story of what happened in gujarat when when modi was see, the chief see. minister there okay yeah, anyway, yeah. i think look the, we are we are diving that from happened the topic. in gujarat see, we see, should see, bring see. In i'll tell you i'll tell you you have been given enough chance man come on right so, so i'll, I'll let me clear the thing that that happened in gujarat okay 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 right. let me clear the thing that happened watch in gujarat the, watch the bbc documentary which right. modi see, banned see, it happened it because the car sevak it happened because the muslims burned the railway railway box that was uh, like that was containing the car sevaks okay so who the muslims the started the thing who are the what car sevaks the car see the car sevaks they were a cult that was formed in order to uh, like for the uh, ram mandir pratisthapana right okay, so the, who started it's, it's wait, on... wait. who started it who's who started the actual violence you said the muslims see, did the... now you say you mentioned yeah, the, yeah, the muslims sevaks and you went quiet when i asked you who started see. it see see the muslims okay. did because goodbye my friend goodbye you know people should be sincere they should be honest when you come on the panel you get caught especially if you got five people you know <laughs> screening you uh anyway uh mr hindu i know you're young 18 year old uh you did quite well for your age i would say okay anyway uh, we're going to bring in the next guest lot to learn lot to learn in terms of you know actually understanding what constitutes evidence yes okay i'm going to bring in johan i think he's a buddhist he's not a he's not a hindu He's been here before. Johan, are you there? Um, guys, I'll take your leave. I take your permission to leave uh, because I have some uh, stuff to catch up with. I okay. I I initially planned to be in uh for to be, to be with you for an hour. It's been <laughs> over 2 hours. So you you guys it's a so rich panel. Know. It's a rich enough panel inshallah. Jazakum Allah khairan. Thank you so much everyone watching. You uh, welcome. Uh, okay. Always a pleasure. Jazakum Allah khairan. Until next time. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Okay Johan you need to Hello. unmute yourself Hello can you hear me Yes we can hear you yeah. So uh, actually I have some questions regarding Islam Shall I say ask that No the topic is not about Islam do you know what the topic is about today Yeah 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 I have something okay. By the way are you a Buddhist Yes you are a Buddhist So what is do you want to add something to this topic Yeah which yeah. is uh, actually, scrolling uh, at the bottom of the screen right now Yeah, I've shared one link. Can you open that? I want to share something. No, we are not putting any links. Just tell us what you want to know. Yeah, means uh, from that link, I've got some thoughts where, mm, where one archaeological survey was done. Uh, Alexander Cunningham, founder of ASI, Archaeological Survey of India. Okay. Because And what did he find? 1862. Yeah, it is said that he failed to find any evidence of Hindu temples, but did. find remnants of buddhist structures where is this that. was this so in ayodhya where yeah. is this yes ayodhya only okay so has this is, anything uh, to do with the possible. has this anything to do with the location of the babri masjid it is the babri masjid yeah yeah there's okay, he's yeah. saying that they got it wrong it wasn't a hindu site it was actually a buddhist site yeah okay. means there is a high chance that it's, it is a buddhist site because the survey was done during british time Right, and okay. he only found buddhist uh, structures but not hindu structures it's uh, mentioned in website i want to add this point okay so which part do you want to add i don't know which part of the so this is from the yeah. economic times of india yeah yeah there is one paragraph uh, i scroll down scroll down this one this are you there or not 
I can't hear him either. Hello. Yeah, Hello. I'm here. Which paragraph, man? You need to tell us. Yeah, yeah. One minute. Wait a second. Yeah, yeah. The, the top one, top paragraph. The first exhibition of independence. Okay. No, above, above that, above that, above that. Five archaeological surveys. Yeah, yeah. That paragraph you read. Okay. It says five archaeological surveys have been carried out in present-day Ayodhya. Alexander Cunningham, founder of the ASI, which is the Archaeological Society of India, conducted the first one in 1862 or uh, to 63. He failed to find any evidence of Hindu temples, but did find remnants of Buddhist structures. Uh, Alois Anton Führer surveyed the area in 1889 to 91 and essentially reiterated the discoveries made by Cunningham. Okay. Yeah, this is first evidence in the next paragraph where it's written that after first independence of India, the first exhibition took place. There also the same thing mentioned that they found Buddhist uh, exhibition, Buddhist buildings. Okay. So, so it says the first excavation after independence took place in 1969 to 70 when A.K. Narayan of Banaras University dug at three places not in the immediate vicinity of the Babri Masjid. So Narayan's yeah. excavations convinced him as a strong Buddhist presence in the area. <laughs> Under study, this also estimated habitation in Ayodhya in the 5th century. You know, this is quite interesting because what does it tell us? Yeah. If there were monasteries, you know, Buddhist monasteries, and which are not yeah. there anymore, so who actually destroyed them? Who? Yeah, we can say that. In fact, yeah. there is uh, evidence that a lot of uh, Hindu, uh, sorry, Buddhist monasteries were actually destroyed by the Hindus, uh, especially after, yeah, right, right. was it after Ashoka? Yeah, he built many monasteries yeah, and they are all destroyed in Ashoka nothing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Johan, is there anything else you wish to add? Bad joke. No, no, I just wanted to say that from neutral sources, we can find that uh, yeah. there is a high possibility that uh, it was a Buddhist temple before. In so fact, there are... That it was a Hindu temple, it was wrong. Yeah. He said to wrong that it was a Hindu temple. Okay. That's right, yeah. that. Well, uh, Johan, if it was a Buddhist temple, would you like to join Islam and become our brother today and accept that there's only one God worthy of worship? And his name is Allah? Yeah, but uh, I, have, uh, yeah, I have... You said yes? Is that a yes? I heard yeah, but... Uh -huh. Let's go with the but, yeah. Uh, I... <laughs> I have some doubts regarding existence of God, so I want to clear all this before I accept it. Well, look, I know we have a topic, but he says he wants to clear these doubts. Are you guys down to help this guy get the clearance no, of doubts? No, He's been here before, no, Brother no. Brandon. Oh, okay, we, okay. we have had the discussion yeah. with him already before. But, okay. uh, Johan, you're welcome to join us later when we call the... We'll North ask North. one question, though. We'll let you go, but I want to ask you one question. Yeah. Yeah. If I can succinctly and... Um, I don't. What's another word other than strongly? Um, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt, yeah, shadow of a doubt, prove that there is an existence of a necessary being. Would you convert to Islam? No, but uh, the second step comes that uh, did he send any message or not? And that's the that comes. That, I can do that in one. I can do that in the same exercise. Yeah, but yeah, after that okay. means uh, chances are there that I will come. We can discuss that in a later stream again, I guess. Okay. All right. No problem, brother. Thank you so much, Johan. Okay, Johan, thanks for joining and sharing the information with us. Thank I appreciate you. that. You take care. Bye-bye. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, Samba, you want to add something? Make yeah, we're mind. just listening. Yeah, we will we'll be just taking the colors. Yeah. Yeah. Mansu, you want to put the overlay? I don't know which one you put. Hello. Thanks. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible, Mega Man. Uh, my, where are you calling from? I'm from India. Okay, that's good. Are you? You are Hindu. Hello, Masu, yeah? How are you? Yeah, very well. Thanks. I'm doing good, brother. Ah, yes, yeah. What? What's on about? Okay, Mega Man. You've been listening to our stream. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you want to share something? Got a question, statement? Yes. Uh, you had one question. Uh, actually, there is some uh, little bit uh, language barrier. I'm not very good speaker. So I'm. Your 
audio is crackling, man. Loose connection somewhere. Uh, why don't you fix it and then we'll bring it back in, okay? That's terrible audio. Uh, okay, I'm going to bring in Ram next. Ram, the topic is on you. Uh, hello, Hashim. I'm good. Where are you calling from, Ram? Yeah, I'm from West Bengal, India. Oh, I thought you were in Ayodhya, man. Come on, you disappointed me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what's on your mind? Actually, the other day I was kicked out of this session. So I want to bring out that question that I have the other day. Is you have to come another day for that day. Uh, Today's stream uh, is ma ma different. And uh, Mansur, why I uh, especially I want to ask you. Uh, uh, I see. On the topic. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yeah, you are. You're audible, we, but we, we, we are only dealing with the topic at hand. If you exactly. want to talk about something else, come back when we have the open Q and A. Okay. Oh, so should I have to uh, talk about Ram Mandir and uh, the question should have to be? You can yes. talk about Ram. You can talk about Ram Mandir. You can talk about the Babri Masjid. No problem. Mm, actually, uh, uh, I I want to take your perspective about the you know uh, January twenty two that has been you know uh, a grand ceremony to build the Ram Mandir. How the West all will take it or rest of the world? Well, to be honest, uh, I don't think the rest of the world, unless they are Hindus, uh, they care much. To be honest, uh, actually, uh, 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 are you, you are a Hindu, of... right, Ram? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. What Actually, is the I, of, I want. What is the meaning of Ram Pratishta, which is the ceremony that's going to take place on the twenty second of January? What is Ram? Pratishta, yeah. What does Pran Pratishta mean? Pran Pratishta means the homecoming of Ram. You know, the place that Ram belonged from, the Ayodhya. What do you mean homecoming? Where was he gone? Uh, uh, he, he didn't. He didn't gone somewhere else because. Uh, uh, it was uh, the Kar Sebakas from 1992 who uh, believed that uh, there would be a temple in Ayodhya and Ram belongs there and he is coming to the place uh, he belongs to. What does to, Pran Pratishta mean? Just answer that question. If you don't know, just say I don't know. I don't know the actual meaning but uh, the sense is like that uh, Ram will be coming to his home uh, Ayodhya. Okay. As, as bring in as another Hindu who might be able to help you. Megamind, is your audio fixed now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, do you know what, what does Pran Pratishta mean? Pran Pratishta is just, just simple ceremony. Uh, what does the ceremony no. mean? It must have a meaning, right? Means, uh, yeah, meaning means uh, this is the temple and now you can worship there. That's no, no, that's not what Pran Pratishta means. Come on, we have to teach you as Muslims, <laughs> just like with, maybe we teach the Christians. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, okay just... Uh, 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 I'm going to your first question. You said uh, idol worship not in uh, Sanatana. No, no, no. Answer this first and then answer the other one later. This is it. This is what it. does Pran Pratishta mean? What, okay, what does the term Pran mean? Pran means what? Yeah. <laughs> are you, the, you are taking literal meaning of this. Yeah, of course I'm talking about the literal meaning. So the yeah, literal meaning yeah, is life, this, but, uh, life. Life. Now, good. Good. So putting life right. into into uh, putting life into uh, means uh, this uh, vigraha into what an idol vigra means murti into the statue idol. into the idol I okay statue. can you put life can anybody put no, life no. in an idol no so why do you have the festival then sorry why do you have this uh, pran pratishta ritual well hashim okay, okay, uh, okay. how do you worship someone who you, you never saw how do you how do you worship someone who you never saw? No, 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 no. By calling Actually. out his name. By can you prove? Him. Can you prove? Can you prove? No, Does yes, science can prove, prove that no, no, there no, is Allah? I, I can prove. Alhamdulillah. Oh, Subhanallah. Oh, Allahu Akbar. See, I'm I'm actually no, no, no. praising Allah by his name. Yeah. And this is the way. Who created him? Who created him? Who created him? Questions now. Every every creature is a creation. Who created him? No, no, no. You are talking about creation. Oh, I'm talking about the one who is Mr. Almighty Ashim. God, Mr. who has Ashim. no beginning, who, has, who is uncreated. And that and is so Almighty God. Believe... As soon as you ask the question, who created him? You're talking about creation, not the creator. Okay, anyway, Megamind. Yeah. 
So now we were yeah. talking about Pran Pratishta. You said putting life mm-hmm. into the idol. Why does is, anybody want to put life in an idol? And what does that even mean? This is the ceremony uh, we call this. Call this. Uh, this is not uh, literal. It's not literal, are you sure? No, no, it's not literal. So what does putting life in the idol mean? It is, it is word. It is ceremony's name. No, no. If, if the idol, if, if it doesn't oh, involve putting life in the idol, then it cannot be the celebration of this, uh, sorry, this festival or this uh, uh, ceremony called Pran Pratishta. Well, it's you... a belief. It's a belief. You no, can't yes, attack yes, someone. Yes. Believe by your logic. No, no, I'm What's not attacking. It's I'm not asking. Point. Come on, Ram. Calm down, man. Okay. Nobody's attacking. Just it's asking just, questions it's just, is not attacking. It's ceremony okay. doesn't but the us. tone is condescending. I prefer. How is it tone okay. condescending? I'm asking. How can somebody put life in an idol? Is a is a logical question. Okay. And by okay. the way, so, why can't I use so, logic in order so, to understand okay. these things so, about religion? So, uh, do you think uh, any stone can steal uh, uh, clothes? Uh, any stone can think? steal clothes. Steel cloth? Any stone can no, steal no, clothes. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait a minute. If, 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 God, if God gives them the ability, if God gives anyone the ability, <laughs> they can do it. But the thing is this. The thing is this. So, 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 even so after Pran Pratista, wait, 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 even after Pran Pratista, you don't see any life in those idols. They're still dead. <laughs> no, no. Only, only Krishna steals clothes of naked women. The stone can steal the clothes. Yeah, if God right? gives it life, why not? <laughs> but the thing is, look, the thing is that <laughs> Pran Pratishta <laughs> is just is just symbolic, isn't it? It's not real. Yes, it's symbolic. You cannot, yeah, you cannot yeah, compare actually. it. You cannot compare it's it to a, a stone getting but, life. So even the name is wrong. Putting life in the idol, that itself is wrong. Uh, if I uh, if you say uh, name is Samir, means uh, wind, so no name is wrong. Okay. Right? I'll tell you what. You have you heard of that? Have you heard of BAPS? What BAPS? The Hindu well, organization. Well, pan, pan Pratishta is metaphorical. It's not literal that uh, we are putting it uh, putting it some to into life or something well, it like that. Which Hindu you are? So these people uh, so, who are the BAPS, they are actually a Hindu organization. They say a Hindu practice called Pran Pratishta ritual of murtis or idols involves an elaborate ceremony by which a murti, which is the idol, is consecrated. During the ceremony, the hymns and mantra are recited to invite the deity to be resident guest and to infuse life mm-hmm. into the murtis. So these people, they take it literally. Yeah, this is good belief. This is belief. No, this is them this taking is it literally. This is not literal, By the way, are they wrong? Right. Being, uh... They are Hindus as well. Are these Hindus wrong or are they right? They right? are Hindu as well. And this is their belief. But is it right or wrong? It is right. This is belief. Belief okay, can so, be right. So they, they are, are actually inviting, they are actually inviting the God inside the idol. Yeah? Yeah? Why, don't, why don't you yeah, why don't we just stop talking for a second, what? bro? Jeez, man, catch your breath for a second. So well, see, Ramakrishna Paramahansa Dev said right, that Jato I think uh, Maurice wants to say something. Look, Hold on. Here, you you saying that if it's belief, it's right, right? Yeah. Okay, so no, if I believe no, you're wrong, nobody is saying that. Nobody is saying that. Uh, there is a person uh, in India called uh, uh, Ramakrishna Paramahansa. She said, Jato mat tato dot. Uh, if there is many belief, then uh, there can be many belief. There is many persons, so uh, many m- person can have right. their point of view, their okay. own respective point of view. I understand, but is every belief correct? No, it's not necessary. Okay, right. It's not necessary. It's necessary to be, yeah. That we're trying to talk okay. about, right? Let, so if these yeah, guys over. believe that this is actually giving life to this idol, it's not necessarily correct, right? No, they they don't believe that uh, this uh, Vigra is doing uh, something uh, physical work. No, they don't believe in that. Well, read it again. Just he it. says during the, the ceremony, they he says during the ceremony, the the yes, hymns and yes. the mantras are recited to invite the deity to be resident guest and to infuse life into the murtis or the idol. This seems they pretty much they, uh, that they, ritual, I would say. Yeah. It's not metaphoric. Yes. yes, it is metaphoric because they believe... Well, according the to them, it's literal. Yeah. It's not metaphoric. This is their belief. I know it's the their belief, but according to their belief, it's literal, yeah. not metaphoric. That's like your belief. 
Okay. It is uh, just yes, if I don't think you know what brand Pratishtha means. Sorry. So maybe we should ask some other. I know. Reason. I know. Your your saying is okay. look. Okay. What is what is metaphorically uh, inviting okay. okay. inviting the deity? The when I mean, you said, what does it mean? Oh, oh, oh. Just just I I'm uh, just want to go to the first question where we asked yeah. that uh, in Vedas there is no idol worship. Yeah, go on. Give us evidence. Yes, so there is a, a verse in Bhagavad Gita, uh, chapter. No, 10, no, I said Vedas. Uh, I didn't say no, Bhagavad Gita. Vedas. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Don't Vedas, try to switch your is... books. Oh, it's okay, convenient. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, there is a verse, uh, "Ekam sat vipra bahuda vadanti." This is in uh, Rig Veda. It say, uh, "I." Uh, reference. Please. What's the reference? I don't know the number, but it is in Rig Veda. I know the number because you see, we don't we don't understand Sanskrit here, so we need to see the reference. I will give you. I will give you in comment section. Give us in the private chat. Vipra Bahuja Vadanti means there is one God, but you can see in many different forms. That's got nothing to do with idol worship. No. <laughs> no. Yes, Even if it was true, worship. it doesn't say anything about idol worship. If you can see the, if you can see the God in uh, different uh, different forms, you can make idols of them. That okay. Have you have God you actually seen? Wait, wait, have you actually seen any God? No, you can experience. You so can how can you make an idol then? Uh, that's why you, we can make idols. No, no. You just said that unless you see the God, you can't make an idol. That's what you said. And when I asked you, "Have you seen a God?" You said, "No." You can see the God in many different forms. Yes, you can. See you didn't see your idol, idol either, Ashim. We don't make idols. <laughs> you don't. You can't use that on idol. us. Come on. Whomever, who, we are, we are the whomever last you believe, no, any sort of idol worship. Whomever you believe, we didn't see him. When he came to Mecca, the first thing he did was get rid of the idols. So don't use that on us, please. You're using okay, the, okay, using okay. wrong logic here. Okay, Mega Mind, go ahead. Okay, now now what is the point? No, here is the point. Uh, mm -hmm. Prophet Muhammad broke three. No, no, hold on, hold idols. on. First, you need to first you need to acknowledge now that there's, there is no idol they worship. Should reclaim this. Hold they on. Should reclaim first, you need to acknowledge there is no idol worship at the gate in the Vedas. What is the problem? Well, you haven't answered that question yet. You gave us a this reference. It's got nothing to do with idol worship. And you guys continued the no, trend I am that the Prophet thing. Muhammad started. No, you guys no, in Bangladesh, wait, you guys wait, in Bangladesh, one, 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 Yes. Make a mind. Do you just believe? Do you, make a mind. Just a minute. Yes, just a minute. I believe Ram is God, and the God. Okay. According to me, God, okay. by According believing to Vedas, of the God, your vocabulary is very limited. Just listen to me. Your vocabulary is very limited. Okay. When you say Devra, God, you mean Almighty God, God, God or just a demigod? Just God. Just so God. We Almighty never God. say Parmeshwar. We never say uh, Parmeshwar Ram. We say Ram, Bhagwan Ram. Okay, so he's he's not Paramatma. Do you agree? No, he's not Paramatma. He is the he's, part he's of the avatar. He's the an avatar of, of Vishnu. Vishnu. He, I know. I yes, know that. He, he is okay. is, is Ram, Vishnu Ram is an avatar, God? right? Yes. Ram avatar. is an avatar, not God. Not God, yes, right? Avatar. Not God. There is a big he difference between a human there is form. A, listen, listen, brother. Brother, please listen. You are talking. Let me let me speak as well. According to you, avatar is the same as God. I said the God word. You have very limited vocabulary. That's why there is a problem. We have Bhagwan. We say Bhagwan Ram. We never say Parmeshwar Ram. Mm -hmm. very, Bhagwan, Bhagwan. According different. according to this this particular Bhagwan word, right? Bhagwan is also called mm -hmm. refers to a righteous person, a human being who has some moral values, yes, who is righteous. Yes. Yes. But he is not considered as God. You can call him. You can call him a good human being, a moral human being, but not as God. Yes. Right. Yes. This is said by Maharishi we Dayanand say, Saraswati. You say avatar. Avatar. Avatar is no. not. Avatar is not no, God, no, no, right? No. Avatar is different. God is different. Correct. No, no. The uh, avatar and uh, Bhagwan. This all. Uh, they all are different. Uh, avatar means uh, it is the. Uh, 
क्वालिटी ऑफ गॉड टू बी वीक अवतार्स आर वीक avatars are ignorant this is not the quality of god the one god is, is a brahma which is which is which no, no, which no. is which is which which is in which is in vedas this is the ultimate god brahma in, 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 there are 10 in, different in, there are 10 different god, there are there 10 god, different avatars listen listen mega man you need to let him speak beyond all the emotions Well, he is not speaking. You guys, are, you guys are also speaking. Okay. No, Ram, when I am speaking, speaking. he is interrupting. You need to leave now because he is interrupting oh, yeah. unnecessarily. Yeah. Okay. Look, uh, Mega Mind. I think let's not get bogged down in terminology. It's very simple. Okay. When we talk about Almighty God, we are talking about Paramatma. When we are talking mm-hmm. about avatars, we are talking about someone lower than that. Okay. Okay. So let's use the term Paramatma and Avatar. It'll be much easier, Sam. By okay, because he understands yeah. that, and I'm sure we all yeah, understand they, that. Okay, yeah, so they, let's they, use the term Avatar. Do you What's agree that? Do you agree that Avatars oh, commit sin? God. Do they commit sin? Avatar commit sin. Yeah. Do this they do adharma? The they commit adharma. Topic is, not? I think, Babri Masjid. Sorry. No, no, no. The topic, the topic is, I think, Babri Masjid. No, but we we talk about Ram, we talk about Ram Mandir and Babri Masjid. Not not only just Babri Masjid. In fact, nobody talked about Babri Masjid. So, so Babar, Babar was I, okay, okay, uh, okay. Okay, so we are talking about Ram. Matter. Ram no, is no, a worship no, 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 The question is, can God, not, God, can God, Ram commit? Matter. Can Ram commit adharma? That doesn't yeah. matter at all. it does matter can, uh, uh, because if you going to build a temple no, for someone no, 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 no. who commits sins who commits adharma no 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 that doesn't matter we are wrong you are wrong matter. that doesn't okay. matter at all by the no, way no, they, do you believe right, not do right you now. believe in good and evil not Megamai? right now do you believe in good and evil yes i believe but this, okay. this doesn't can, matter at all right now can can the avatar or the god in hindus can they commit adharma can they commit sins can they commit evil this is a different topic No, it's the same because we are scrutinizing no, whether not. whether it's this not. person, which you it's call not. Ram, is someone who is worthy of having a temple no. at the, the expense of is, killing so many people. We want to we want to understand the concept political. of worship in your mega mind, if it is mega indeed. If I can compare mm. Prophet Muhammad with Ram. We are not. Then, uh, by the way, no one in Islam. Worship, we don't worship Muhammad in Islam. Nobody him. worships Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. He's, no, he's a messenger of God. You follow. You follow Sunna. Yeah, we follow him. Yeah. 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 Worship yeah. completely yeah. different things. Exactly. So different. Not compare apples and oranges. Topic is bullshit. A straw man, man. Yeah. You don't have. You don't understand the belief. Mega mind. Let me let me ask a question to you. Can I ask you a question, Mega Mind? Would you? Would you? Would you build a temple of a serial rapist, honoring, respecting, praising, and worshiping a serial rapist? Would you build a temple for such a person? That doesn't matter at all right now. <laughs> It doesn't. I'm asking you a very, yeah. very important question. It matters very Would much. Would you build a temple for a serial killer or a serial rapist to honor, to praise, to glorify, to worship that person? Would you? Okay. 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 So, in theory, would you? Serial killer and rapist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, Safiya, raped Excuse by. Me. Prophet Muhammad, uh, you need to. Yeah. I'm kicking you out because um, you are not really someone who is able to have a discussion with us. Dawah is is not for trolls like yourself. I know you're on the back chat, so I'm letting you hear what I'm going to say. 
here we are trying to have civilized discussion not something like what you are trying to have here this is not a platform if your level is to have discussions only in a fish market then go to a fish market this is not one of them okay here we're trying to understand and have a discussion so that we can learn from each other we can grow and we can develop and we can be more and more tolerant and more and more respectful so our level of tolerance increases by knowing the other because people don't know the other that's the way the fear is and you are fueling this otherization and making the other the demon the demonization of another group or another community and so on and so forth i asked you a simple question as a civilized individual people would know that this is not really something you know even imaginable as a civilized individual to erect a temple in which you worship praise and respect and glorify a criminal on what sound mind would people do that and this is why ustad hashim was alluding to earlier if ram is someone who's a sinful individual committed adharma committed mistakes committed something which is not right why would you build a temple for such a person this person is not going to be worthy of being praised let alone being worshiped that is the point so ram who is not even historical ram who doesn't even have a historical basis for having a mandir there in the first place not even have a theological spiritual religious basis for worship and you're going to have a ceremony the irony where is the civility the the rationality in your minds where is the fairness where is the humanity i mean we have people like yourself coming the first human you need to be human first and then show your humanity i mean we as often i mean more than often we are seeing that you lack humanity you lack fairness you lack justice you lack rationality you don't even know what it means to be a human and we want to have a discussion with human so next person that comes who needs to verify that they are humans first okay we got uh, andy before the next guest i am going to have to part ways uh, i'm going to go catch the hot and then tend to some stuff around the house so bark off feet Okay, I'll see. Are you going to come Can back? Uh, maybe uh, I'm gonna, I'll try, but I'll be. It, I don't know how long this will take me exactly. Maybe it's fine. It's that. fine. Just asking. I mean, you're welcome if you do join again if you want to. Inshallah. But uh, as always, it, a pleasure to have you on the panel. Jazakallah khair, bro. Nice thing. He took my cue. I was supposed to leave after that. I can't let you guys have two people leave at the same time. No, no, it's okay, bro. It's okay. We can handle it. Alhamdulillah. We got brother Sam still on here, who is the mega champion. <laughs> Alhamdulillah on these mm -hmm. topics. So you're more than welcome to stay as always, brother Brandon. But uh, you know, if you got some other commitments, uh, we don't want to hold you either. Right, Andy. Do you want to unmute yourself? Yes. So, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Where are you calling from? I am from I am calling from Maharashtra, India. Okay. from india that's good okay so there are lots of misconception here about mansoor that why ram mandir is not important and ram is a bad character see sorry hold on are you being... are you a hindu by the way yes i am a hindu but you're an atheist i am an atheist but i am supporting for ram mandir but how can you how can you be an atheist what does an atheist mean do you know it is to mean i i don't believe in god particularly but okay there so does for you does ram exist no ram doesn't exist so how can you support something that doesn't exist uh, it's like me it's like me saying oh i i support the existence of uh, of a unicorn but i don't believe it exists see, what It's, it's called Hindu. it's called fiction, by the way. Do you know that? Yes, yes, yes. Of course, the general. So this, this is like the Marvel Ram. DC comics, you know, where you just believe yes, something. Of course. Out of fiction. Yes, of course. But what? Ah, uh, again, Mansoor said is like you have you need some civilized conversation over here. So I am the one who can put that in this debate. Okay. Okay. Fair, so, fair enough. Before you go further, I would like Brandon to, uh. ask you why you are an atheist 
why you need this? this because i am a newtonian and just newtonian sorry what what, what, what you're are you more like? you're more atanian newtonian newtonian yes what does that mean no idea <laughs> And Newtonian means uh, the one who believe in physics. Okay, so How hold on. Are you an atheist or are you a Newtonian? Do you worship Newton? No. So what do you mean by Newtonian? Newtonian is just a term of philosophy. Like someone is like Shakespeare, then he's Shakespearean. Someone. I don't knows. think there's a Shakespearean. <laughs> You're just making <laughs> no, up terms, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> So there are some so, people. So if you if you read Marvel world. comics, you're a Marvelian. <laughs> <laughs> I am Marvel fan, by the way. Okay, okay. You, would you call yourself so a Marvelian? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, let me so let this, me ask you let me ask you a simple question, uh, Andy. Do you believe in existence? Of what? Of of this universe. do i believe in existence of yeah. the universe in reality do you believe in reality because many people don't actually you'd be surprised <clears throat> yes i believe in reality and realism okay. do you believe this universe exists yes yes brandon go ahead um indy yeah. what did newton believe was he an atheist please tell me i'm interested i, I i'm not sure about the You, you know he was a monotheist. he was a he, he was, he was a, monotheist. a monotheist he was actually very unitarian in his monotheism he believed in god he believed in god and that god was one okay that's a good that's so, a surprise for me so are you still a newtonian or do you want to change yeah we'll let you change your mind are you still a newtonian yeah. even though your your idol yes. your idol worshiped god Yes, yes, of course. Why not? Okay, no problem. I also believe in Holy Spirit. I also believe in whatever. whatever so you're not an atheist, man. Come on, you, you, you are a spiritual. You're, you're just a spiritual. You're, you're spiritual. You're not an atheist. See, I am not bowing down to anyone. I am just respecting every religion. Suspecting. You, you, you're, you're more yeah. like Confucian. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, Confucian. You know, Confucian. See, Confus- the thing about atheism is you're a Confucian. I was a Confusion. I am. So look at uh, here, here to me. Okay. See the the biggest. What you can say flaw of atheism is, uh, you you are easy to become more radical towards other religion, and that doesn't works in your favor. Yeah, we are not we are not asking anyone to be radical. All we are doing is, in order for you to believe something or to. worship something you must believe in its existence now you you believe in ram but you don't believe in ram's existence you know that no, no, that itself I don't believe in that ram, itself is illogical and I'm, irrational no no i don't believe in ram as a god but i believe that ram no, is a character you of the story you said he didn't even story. exist when i asked you do you believe that he existed you said no so how can i put it to you in english uh, i don't know how can i put it to you just just okay, once again like, simple question do you believe ram ever existed no it is a clear story and okay, people are misunderstanding that story as a god okay so if something doesn't exist would you believe mm. in that entity no so why do you believe in ram you said you support ram so let me tell you that why i support ram mandir but you do you not understand the, the do you not understand the irrational argument of yours for someone to be a newtonian you you should understand basic logic at least see my point of view of taking this uh, is i am separating ram as a god No, we are not even talking about him being God or not. We are talking about his existence first. You said he, you don't believe he exists. Okay, just think like, uh, does Allah exist, or does yes. Holy Spirit exist? We believe Allah exists. Yes, Allah. Okay, Allah exists and Holy Spirit exists. I don't know what you mean by Holy Spirit. What is your understanding of Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, yeah, what is that? 
Holy Spirit and Allah are the same. They both are the same, isn't it? No, no they are no, not. It, not isn't it? Not no. isn't it? Okay, so listen, and, listen, and he, I think this is a waste of time because it's nothing yeah, to do with the topic. Just go study. How, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I am 25, but just... 25? You know that 18-year-old guy who came earlier? I think he had more logical yes. conversation in comparison to you. So go and learn logic first. You are if something doesn't exist, logic. why would you still believe logic. in it? Okay. okay? Just go do your homework two minutes. and then come back. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for coming. It's a waste uh, of time, honestly. Okay. Is that yeah, okay? Yeah. In, uh, Varun next. Varun, are you there? Yes, sir, I am here. Hello. How are you? Hello, hello, sir. I'm just surprised um, that you people are repeatedly saying Vedas are against idol worship. So I'm please asking. Stamp, Sam Stallone, sir, can you please provide evidence? I mean, no, 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 it's quote, the other way around. Something. It's, it's the other way around, actually. If you, okay. if you believe that the Vedas advocate idol worship, you should provide okay. evidence. Okay, let, uh, let me ask a simple question. No, no, Is nature question, worship... answer the question hmm. first. Can you show us any evidence from the Vedas where it okay. says you should worship an idol? Yes, Ezra Veda 40 11. Say again. Ajurveda forty eleven. Yeah. What does it say? Okay. Let 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 me say what it says. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Ajurveda forty eleven. It says, but one who can pray sambuti and asambuti both together by realizing and associating them with the supreme personality of godhead he has true immortal knowledge he doesn't fall into darkness so what it's basically saying is you should realize ev everything in the universe it's god that's no, what it's no. saying okay you, wait 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 funny. Even, wait no this, even go if that back. is a belief where does it say to make idols of that thing which is no. god and worship it no, that where doesn't say it? the verse what he's quoting it uh, doesn't say that no, okay, go, go say, and sorry? and go back two verses to Yajur okay. Veda forty number nine. They okay. enter darkness. Those who worship natural things, okay. they sink deeper in darkness. Those who worship Sambhuti, i.e., created okay. things, you are okay. defeated by the same uh, Veda. So, no, so no, no, that no, Yajur no, Veda goes against you. No, no, no. Yajur Veda 40.9, 40.10, and 40.11, they should be read together. Yes, All three of them. Saying, none them of them mention idol worship. So you're not answering the question. It's done. Th 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 let me ask a simple question, sir. Is, is worshipping is sun, sun, sun God? Asking a question with a question 49 also. contradicts your idea yeah. that it's all God. The universe Either you God. acknowledge that nowhere in Veda tells you to worship idol, and then you can ask your question, no problem. First, you need to acknowledge that you were wrong. Okay, is is worshipping fire no, no, no. considered idol worship? Before you ask a question, you need to acknowledge that in the Vedas, it does not say to worship idols. There is a reason for that. See, idol worship is for Do business. Agree? Do you acknowledge that? No, I don't agree. No, Vedas are not against idol worship. Well, you'll, you'll never agree. You'll never agree. You just See, let, 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 even though the Vedas you know, no. you believe in you no, no, no. Uh, see, wait, pl wait, please Sam just look at. Sorry. Okay, okay. Another one. Another one. Do you believe in Maharishi Dayanand Saraswati? I'm I'm ignorant of all those people. I don't know anything about those what people. Is your I, I no, I, I, I'm, I just what follow scriptures. Sampradaya? I'm just I'm just a simple Hindu. Nobody asked me my sampradaya okay, except you. Simple Hindu knows this. What's your sampradaya? I believe now I worship all gods, all Hindu gods. I don't have a preference. Subhanallah, this guy is not even a Hindu okay. then. Okay, anyway, I you worship, consider, that okay, is my you, you worship you worship all, right, all gods. Brandon. You worship all gods. Yes. Okay. Take care, uh, okay. Do you consider do you consider Ram to be what superior or Hanuman to be the superior? No, he is yeah. there is no such thing as superior inferior. 
see there is only one god in hinduism but he was a so servant they, he was a, he was a servant of ram they, how can you consider is, he, he to be the god there is no such thing as servant and master sir in hinduism there is only one god okay. who is that one and only god one and only god who is that you can call him you can see generally the name is brahman but see in, in because there is a, wait, wait 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 does brahman have a will will is that's 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 why universe was created right was that brahman is is, is the one who is doing who is doing everything right does he have a will that means he has a will yes okay according to hinduism brahman has no attributes nirguna brahman have you heard of that term listen sir for the first thing you need to understand is brahman can't be fully understood if you understand fully what is brahman then I'm you are brahman you to, i'm not asking you to understand god fully even we don't understand god fully that is not okay. our purpose but at okay. least you should know whether god has attributes or not or none nirguna brahman means he has no attributes i asked you does your god have a will you said yes so he has attribute Which okay is, who is right are you right or are let me let, let me explain sir let yeah, me explain yeah. this let, let me explain this sir yeah, yeah. do you think both light and darkness exist at the, at the same time no i'm not talking about light and dark i'm talking about god light and darkness are also god right according to hindu definition oh, no no so you actually worship light and darkness See Hindus worship uh, many things right? like trees, sun, river, everything, right? Everything is God according to you, Varun. You're making it all up, man. Yeah, according Varun. to scriptures, according to scriptures. No, no, according oh. to you, is everything God? Yes, everything is God. I believe that. Do you worship Ravan? That's not what. That's not wait, what the Vedas says. Varun, do you worship Ravan? Yes. 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 Ravan. Ravan has some good qualities. Yes. Both do good and worship, bad qualities. Do you worship Ravan as God? Rava, I worship the good side of Ravan. What do you mean? You said everything when is God. When Ram kidnapped Sita, when Ram yes. kid, uh, when Ravan kidnapped Sita, was he God? If, without God, sir, he can't do that. No, but you said he everything was, is God, so he must be God, right? Based on your he, logic. Wait, 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 God. wait, wait, wait! Everything is God. Ravan is not everything. Ravan is just part of everything. Well, nobody is understand everything. the law. nobody is everything that's what i'm saying so there is only one god you can't just say ram is god krishna is god see there is only one god everything is manifestation oh, of one god you said everything is god that is, those were your words yes and you and i asked you do you worship everything as god and you said yes yes when i asked you it's ravan god at that time you said you worship his good side that means you differentiated him between good and evil good and bad which means the back part is not god am i right why why do you say that back part is also god ah, but we should not we should not go okay, so god as god then ram was wrong you, to kill him did ram kill god listen sir no, you should listen, understand uh, sir you're out of here okay i'll Zohair, bring you the next hindu because he's guys, guys. He's mocking the Hindus actually now. He's making. He realized he got now. caught out. He's and bro, now, he, in order to so maintain his integrity, that was so humiliating. Whatever is left there of. <laughs> may, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Zakhir, guys, may Allah bless you all. Alhamdulillah. Amen. Can't wait to see you. Hopefully, I'll be there next month. Inshallah, Inshallah. I'll be in London next. Zakhir, Allah, brother Bradley, always a pleasure to have you on the stream. Thank you so much, brother. Okay. Sorry, this Andy guy. Did we remove him or what happened? Did he leave? I forgot. Uh, T S, you there? Oh, he left. Okay. Prasun is here. Hi. Hello, Prasun. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? You're you're the only one who stays up late in India. I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Too much coffee, eh? Huh? <laughs> yeah, today I had lots of coffee. Yeah. Oh, I can remember. Yeah. Okay, brother, you you met uh, brother Sam? Uh no, 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 no. no. Pehle baat okay. I don't think pehle. So, yeah, oh, inshallah it'll be good. So, I don't know how how much of the stream you already listened to. I just about 10 minutes, 10 minutes back I I think I entered. I was just okay. yeah. So, yeah. I think the question we have been asking is uh, mm -hmm. one was about pran pratishta. Perhaps you can explain to us what that means. I I mean has it always been a discussion on that already? 
Already uh, well, some school. Hindus came, but uh, they were saying it's metaphoric. Some were saying it's okay. not. I mean, uh, okay. maybe you can enlighten yeah, us. Yeah. Because yeah. the reason I'm asking this question is because on the 22nd of January, you know, yes, there's I, a huge event is, in Ayodhya the, the, the where they're going to do the, uh, yeah, the inauguration the of the Ram Temple. Right, and they're right. going to place Ram Lalla, which is the, Ram I think it's, it's, it's a four-year-old Ram or something, four or five-year-old the, the, Ram. The child form of Ram. Fish. The child form of Ram which yeah. is going to be established because that uh, place is supposed to be historically it is worshipped as the birthplace of Ram, as in Ayodhya. Yeah. The the, the uh, yeah, and uh, so that that specific specific place has been uh, the uh, the uh, Ram Lalla form uh, being worshipped okay. over there. So tell us what yeah. is Ram Pratishtha. So Pran Pratishtha is uh, so sorry Pran Pratishtha, not Ram. I keep saying yeah, Ram Pratishtha. Right. Pran Pratishtha. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, there are, uh, in, according to the Shastras, there are certain ways and methods by which you ordain uh, um, uh, an, an, uh, an, uh, a murti as sacred. Because prior to that, it is just uh, another piece of rock or metal or whatever it is. But once you uh, do the Pranapatishta aspect, then it becomes uh, uh, worthy of uh, being worshipped. And uh, it, you know, it 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 uh, takes a life. It's supposed to take a life, life of life of its own. So it's like it's now it's a living thing now. So what is it's a living the, thing? The idol. The idol, yes. So okay. It, so it, is, it, this, it, it, is this a metaphoric belief, or is this the the belief is literally real, like living? No, I mean, met, living I mean, object. Course, I mean, metaphorically, in the sense, the all the uh, all the um, how do you say, all the uh, processes that a living being uh, uh, is you know given. Then now you have to serve him equally because now, like, now you have to serve him food, you have to let him rest, you have to let him sleep, you have to you know uh, clean uh, clean him, bathe him, all the all the things that a living person is done. I mean uh, that you do for a living person, you have to do for this also. In that in that but isn't God saying. isn't God supposed to sustain us? Isn't it the other way around? But this is a murti, right? Why are you giving food to a god? Yes, yes, yes. So this is a murti. So this is one form of the divine that we have. Uh, understood right so we, the, we uh, as of course uh, a person will only uh, worship or um, uh, consider a divine uh, um, divinity in the way he or she perceives or is able to perceive so the murti is the way in which the devotee perceives the divine and in order to make it more and more uh, lively for the pers uh, for the devotee and make it more uh, uh, tangible for the devotee the murti uh, is given all human or uh, anthropomorph anth rather anthropomorphic qualities which uh, are to be played out uh, in day to day, which in help help us in building the uh, the the bond between the the murti and the devotee. Yeah, but when you when you say giving life to the murti, you know, the, and, the, inviting the, life, inviting life, inviting life. Well, inviting life into an yeah. into into something which is lifeless, the idol. Mm -hmm. Okay, the mm -hmm. murti. The, yeah. the murti itself is lifeless. So when you invite the deity inside the murti. Now, is mm -hmm. the deity living inside the murti? Yes. And is that is that the literal belief of the devotee? Not a, not a literal, literal. I mean, okay. I mean, literal means the, the level of sacredness is not, is not higher. It's higher than, let's say, a, 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 for example, you know, there are products which might be selling, uh, uh, you know, even pan para kind of things which are sold with an, an image of Krishna on it, right? Now, that does not really mean that that packet is sacred. That, sacred, that packet is just a piece of plastic because, you know, no, you can't just... The people who, yeah. who buy those products with labels yeah. of uh, yeah, deities yeah. don't yeah. actually believe that there is a they know yeah, the exactly. in right. there. Right. But in this right. case, in Pran Pratishtha is a special ceremony. Yeah. So there in is which ceremony. they read mantras yes. uh, in order to invite the deity inside. The, deity. Now, the spirit is invited inside the yes. Uh, yes. the lifeless idol. Yes. Now look, on one hand, you believe that there is actually a deity invited, literally, okay, not metaphorically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, yeah, not or you say, or you say that it is something which is just symbolic. Symbolic, of course, symbolic, and uh, symbolic, of course, symbolism does not mean. Okay, mean, so so there is no a, real, there is no real invitation of a of a life in it. I mean, there is real. I mean, real in the sense, uh, uh, in, in uh, to the level that there is the uh, the, the, the the bhakti. That, to that level, there is there is uh, the invitation. Like you know, what you can what you can. Touch it. So uh, all of us can touch and feel different aspects of uh, uh, reality, right? Not all of us perceive reality the same way. So just the way, for example, uh, you know, uh, a bhakt can perceive something in a more more uh, detailed or more uh, subtle ways than others. So uh, for him, uh, uh, murti has got a much higher level of uh, 
um tangibility than in a than a, than in something else that that's something that's not transparent or you know sometimes some random object yeah but you know we yeah. as human beings we differentiate mm-hmm. between fact and fiction mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so things mm-hmm. you know like for example we mentioned the marvel comics dc comics many yeah. people mm-hmm. read this they right. don't actually believe that they know this is fiction mm-hmm. but they enjoy it as entertainment now so, for for a devotee right. i'm sure it's not entertainment when you feed right. the, when you feed right. the right. idol when you yes. when you cloth it you know during winter they put winter clothes yes yes yes, yes. so this They're is something fact, they in fact, in fact some people also fan it in, in the summer they yeah exactly yeah so and this is like the sweat yeah so yeah, this uh, is their literal belief then it cannot be fiction no, for it's them not, it's not it's not a literal belief see uh 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 when uh, when you are uh, uh for example there are t-shirts which you know uh, certain logo some certain brands and all those kind of things which you sell in like lv or uh, yeah. you know uh, those kind of t-shirts which are which are basically just a, a, a 200 rupee t-shirt or 300 rupee t-shirt but something now that sells for 10000 15000 rupees or you know hundreds of dollars or whatever now the, the t-shirt by itself is still worth 200 200 rupees but the placeability of the t-shirt is quite quite different simply because of the uh, the heritage that it carries or the the brand that uh, the, uh, brand value that or the you know the 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 power that it carries so yeah, that the makes, brand yeah the brand so you the, pay the, for the brand yeah you pay for the brand so the brand by itself did not become a brand in you know one day uh, these big brands yeah. became fashion houses it's called, over it's called marketing years. but but through hundreds of hundreds of years of hundreds of years of yeah. finesse marketing it's, it's not a, yeah i mean so today tomorrow i, all, I can go it's all to I, do with I, marketing you know that it is my going to do with marketing but you know yeah. i can't just go and put up a, a t-shirt tomorrow and say that it's worth 100 200 dollars because well, it depends on your marketing strategy you can nobody is going to nobody is going to no, Dep- like nobody. i said it depends on your marketing yeah. strategy yeah yes of course but the thing is that marketing is because of certain values of the that the brand has displayed no? it's not yeah. uh, it's so not it needs to have quality quality and then your brand quality. obviously is respected yeah. and yeah. then it it holds a value but so you see we are not talking about we are not talk about brands here we are talk about a god yeah so when you, yeah, when so. you say that during pran pratishtha mm-hmm. um this is a definition i got from you know the hindu organization baps you heard of them uh, yeah baps yeah swami narayan swami narayan temple yeah the swami swami narayan they had quoted in the definition of this in the pran this is a hindu practice called pran pratishtha ritual of consecrated during the ceremony of the mantra of the yeah ha ceremony yeah. by which the murti yeah, so. is consecrated is during the yeah. ceremony the hymns yeah. and the yes. mantras are recited to invite mm-hmm. the deity to be resident mm-hmm. guests and to infuse so, life into the murtis right. do right. you agree so, with this definition the definition yeah the definition is uh, i mean uh, somewhat what i said now let me explain okay. what yeah so uh, all rituals you know like uh, when uh, all of our rituals uh, they are like even when you are worshiping through fire or you you know like the uh, homa worship or the you know most of our most of our rituals are carried out in front of fire and all so there there are mantras and these mantras are basically uh, the the idea is to align ourselves to cosmic cycles cycles that are you know of a large very large nature and we align ourselves into those uh, cycles and we um, you know we you know the, be in tune with the cycles uh, similarly something like this uh, prana pratishtha so uh, ideally okay so uh, uh, going into the history of uh, idol worship and so on and so forth so to begin with uh, you know in, in hinduism we uh, essentially were nature worshipers right so worshiping the sun the sea the rivers mountains trees and those kind of things yeah and yeah and then gradually as we as we progressed and we started living in cities we needed more and more tangible forms of things because now you know the mountains and the seas are far removed from us so we need a more personalized form of god and therefore we have uh, the uh, the later gods like rama and uh, krishna and these are these are not as old as indra and varuna and agni you know these are those are the older god mission mission rig vedas so yeah. the, the now we, that's why we now we have the puranic gods the puranic gods are uh, uh, deities puranic deities sorry the puranic so, deities like so you believe do you believe ram is not a vedic god no ram is not a vedic so there is the chronology ram is not mentioned in the vedas ram comes okay. much later in the the, the does that age. mean the people in the vedic age did not worship ram or or a god no, 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 ram, no, or did not no. were not even aware of him So Ram is an avatar, as you know, right? He, he comes. Yeah, I know. He's, I know. Tenth, he's a tenth avatar of Vishnu, and yeah. chronologically, he comes much later. He comes much, much, he's, much later. He's the ninth avatar, I think. He's the he's the no, he's the eighth avatar. Ninth eight, avatar yeah. is Vishnu. Ninth yeah, avatar eight, is the eighth avatar. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So sorry, sorry, sorry. Seventh, seventh avatar. Seventh avatar because eighth avatar is uh, Krishna. I thought Kalki was the tenth. No, Kalki is tenth. He's the he's the seventh avatar. Ram is the seventh avatar. Yeah, yeah. He's not tenth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, anyway, yeah. so um. 
were there were there any prophecies of Ram in in the Veda? No, Vedic no, period? we don't have prophecies. No, we don't have any okay. prophecies. I mean, <laughs> there's no, there are no prophecies. Oh, there is one Bhavishya Purana, but that's again that's only one of the Puranas. That's not really uh, uh, okay. much. Uh, yeah. Right. So, so the next I, question I had about Ram is mm. that you know, as an avatar, mm. you're supposed to be this uh, ideal example. No, right? not necessarily. Not necessarily. Different avatars are different for different uh, 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 characteristics and requirements. So Ram can, is can the avatars different. can the avatars commit sins or do a dharma? Uh, no, no. Okay. So dharma, dharma is a is a is a much larger topic. Can the avatar commit other. errors? You, can, if you if you ask me, can the avatars commit errors? Is, is that a question? Can they or commit sins? Sins. Uh, so that's why you use the term adharma because that's more. Yeah. That's more. Yeah. Yeah. Say, yeah it's, that's of, pa of pa sins, pa yeah. sin is somewhat close to pap. Uh, the, okay. The avatars will do what they're supposed to do. Like Krishna, for example, he did a lot of so-called adharmic things, but eventually he established dharma. Right. Similarly, uh, I mean, if you look at even the Vaman avatar, he essentially he suppressed his own devotee, but he established Wait, dharma. Which, which avatar? The Vaman avatar, the uh, the dwarf avatar. Ah, oh, the dwarf. Okay, yeah. The dwarf avatar who pushed Mahabali back into the uh, the, the, the nether worlds. He uh, uh, for now some some say he established uh, a dharma, but in a larger context, yes, he he performed so dharma. What right? was what was his dharma? Who's the dharma? Uh, this dwarf uh, avatar. Oh, he his he he's, he uh, punished his own devotee. Punished like, them? Did they I deserve mean, the punishment? Punish, no, he, I mean, <laughs> see, so basically, uh, that's the whole point. These uh, the asura. I don't think punishment is wrong as long as they deserved it. No, no, no uh, punishment is wrong. Term, of course, he kind of uh, uh, how do I say suppressed or rather he cheated. I would say he cheated his own devotee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm failing to understand here because if somebody. Mm -hmm. Is an avatar, and avatar is mm -hmm. supposed to represent God on Earth. Yeah, am I right? Uh, Vishnu, uh, different avatars, different. Uh, so yeah, uh, they Ram, represent uh, God on Earth, right? Vishnu, yeah, Vishnu avatar, yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. Mm -hmm. So can, if you're representing God, how can you commit mm -hmm. sins deliberately, like other, ah, okay. like major okay, sins, okay. you know? Right, 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 right. So therefore, now we have to see the the sequence of the avatars. If you see the sequence of avatars, they are uh, from very simple beings to gradually getting more and more complex. So, uh, you know, if the first five avatars, like the Matsya avatar, the fish avatar, the Vara, they have very, very simple tasks. They don't have very uh, complicated tasks. But as they, they take a human form, the tasks get more and more complicated. And uh, uh, so I mean, when you look at Ram, the Ram avatar, his task was fairly complicated. And Krishna's the tasks were far more complicated, right? So it, it, it brings the, the duality of uh, or the, the, the paradoxes that we live in. Because uh, even in today's times, we might be have to do things which are seemingly, uh, you know, evil or bad or uh, idharmic. But in a larger scheme of things, they might be actually good. So or uh, dharmic. So that is what these avatars are supposed to uh, represent. They're supposed to represent uh, a larger uh, good of, of things, and um, you know, they're supposed to you know establish uh, dharma, the principles of principles of dharma in a larger scheme of things, and not not uh, not in a you know. Okay. Do you believe in the concept of good and evil? No, as uh, we don't have evil in Hinduism, we have good and bad. We don't have evil. So, what uh, is your evil. definition of evil? Because evil, uh, yeah, evil in Christian terms, uh, or uh, as far as Christian word, English word, it's it's entirely ungodly. There is no scope of good in that, right? There no, is no. What is your when you, when you say we don't believe in evil? What is your understanding yeah. of evil? Uh, it's removed from God. Removed from God. Yes, yeah, it's, it's anti-God. Evil is anti-God. It's the work of the devil. Okay, so do you think nothing anti-God happens in this world? No. Okay, rape. Yeah, I mean, the, in a larger scheme of things, in a larger scheme of things, everything leads to something. Uh, some every bad leads to some good eventually. And no, no, uh, how can how can rape lead to good? I'll I'll give you I'll give you I'll give you a much simpler example. Okay. Uh, 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 Samba, you can come in anytime you want. Yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so when you see uh, the animals, you know, animals are eating each other, and they're I mean, when you can. You can no, we're talking about animals, bro. Come on, we're talking yeah, about humans. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You so, can't so, compare so, morality with animals. Yeah, so, so the thing is morality. Now the thing is rape itself is a very very loosely defined term, and well, it's not. Are... It's not loosely defined it, it for is, human I, beings. It's not loosely defined. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it's loosely defined. I'll tell you why it's loosely defined. Uh, you know, uh, force, force, sexual intercourse, is a very very broad term which could include 
you know raped by uh, deception raped by uh, you know uh, promising of of a uh, uh, greater you know um, much much better things then there wait, might wait, be wait. rape yeah. by deception give me an example yeah i mean like you know you know if you lead somebody into a, 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 a scenario which you kind of you know through deception you you know you know deception you or uh, you know through force to again, deceive there, there someone to, to, de- to deceive to, someone to, in order to have sex so- with someone by deception deception in the sense in the sense in the sense you know you you kind of uh promise uh, uh marriage for example you promise marriage yeah. and you have right later on the, the women can very well say it's i mean rape right because it's it's a it's a unfulfilled promise no but hold on rape has a specific meaning you know that yeah no i mean there, there is a, there is a very wide variety of terms where rape is used i mean and that's that's the whole problem with the, the this term rape because it's in a, a, in a court of law in a court, in of, court law, of law if a, a woman law, if a woman says that uh-huh. i've been deceived to have sex i don't think the court yes. will consider that oh, yes. to be rape oh yes oh yes with the latest ruling no. unless uh, it's a sexual assault rape rape on the unless it involves marriage. sexual assault uh-huh. they will uh-huh. not consider that to be rape 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 on the pretext of marriage is no more considered uh, rape yeah but you're you're going all over the place now i'm asking yeah, about I, two yeah. individuals two individuals uh-huh. they don't mm-hmm. know each other one mm-hmm. forces the other to have sex with them yes right okay so that's now, called yeah. sexual assault a sexual assault is fine which yes. is Force which is what okay which is now, the now which is the, yeah. the context fine, of now, rape here yeah okay? now, now we're getting closer now we're getting yeah, closer now we're getting closer of course to the, i mean we we need to yeah. define rape in in right, its uh, broader yeah. term so rather than now, every specific Uh, not, 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 in, in, in examples a certain, of it. certain limitation because rape is a loose okay. button now now we okay, let's now, use the term sexual assault then come on sexual assault yeah if you don't like sexual the term assault, rape and exactly, it's too broad exactly. for you let's use sexual assault exactly sexual assault is the same now this this the same is still uh, loose or is that uh, specific no no that, no that 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 is that is pretty that is pretty uh, tight now that we got it so okay. this, this is is sexual assault mm-hmm. evil for you or is it not no it's so evil evil would mean evil if you would say evil means something that is beyond you know uh, it's beyond god's scope and uh, it's proposed by the devil and devil is trying to push away from god and that's kind of thing that thing right in the uh, dharmic way we say that everything when you what you do whatever you do is you yourself turning away from your own own good self you're turning away from your your, your own past self no but and, hold on i don't think look you said earlier when i asked you about evil you said it's something mm-hmm. un, something which goes against god yes yeah? yes yes So yeah. would would God ever advocate sexual assault? No no God does not advocate anything. God does not advocate anything at all. Uh uh you have a certain dharma, you have a certain nature, so something that is right for you to do, right? If you do that properly, then you are following dharma and who advocates that? You, you your own your own judgment has to advocate that, right? No no, who how do you differentiate between dharma and adharma? Ah yes, yeah. so uh yeah, so this is there is a uh, Is it not from uh, the scripture? a uh, scripture will only guide you to a certain level so scripture will yeah, not give, scripture will not say uh, this act is dharma this act is a dharma no scripture is not going is to there, do that oh, sorry 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 mm-hmm. to interrupt you brother is there any punishment mm-hmm. for rape in your uh, granth no it doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way uh, there are different ti- at different time there are different laws uh, books of laws for example there is manusmriti and then there is uh, other smritis and there are many smritis in manusmriti in manusmriti in manusmriti in manusmriti what is the punishment for rape I I'm not sure I've not read the Manusmriti entirely, but uh, the thing is, Manusmriti is not followed for over three thousand years now. Uh, Manusmriti uh, has a has a has a has a preface which says that this has to be followed only for for its time, so and it cannot be followed. followed which book? Which book is followed? Which which book is followed today? In today's there are, time, there are, Vedas there are, there are several, Vedas. There are several. There are several Smritis. You can, I mean, in fact, if you even if you Google up right now, there'll be at least seven different Smritis that we can see, and uh, these are these are the law books of our times. So is there any, do you believe in prashara samiti yeah i think i think what brother sam Parashar is Smriti. asking prashara yeah. samiti is, is there any yeah. i mean yeah, there are there are there are there are there are many smritis you can uh, each of them is valid for its own time as of today we don't follow smriti we follow the indian penal code right the is currently, there any any justice system in in hinduism I mean, yeah. yeah there is there is it is it is it is uh, again how do i say it it will not be a uh, how do i say it, it won't be a uh, uh, permanent i mean yeah, yeah it says there is a uh, uh the you know the the state has to establish certain ways and methods of uh, no no i'm state. talking about hinduism i'm not talking about secular states no no even 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 a non secular state has to establish a certain way of uh, doing things right it cannot okay. have the same as a hindu yeah. for yeah. example let's say let's say if you were only 
uh, governing the country that you're ruling based mm. on just uh, Sanatan Dharmic yes, yes. principles, yeah? Uh-huh. Would you as a king punish for anything mm. in your kingdom? Okay, so yeah, for that, you I'll have for that, that, that specific era will have a certain smriti written for it or a certain guidebook written for it. For example, yeah. Chanakya's Niti Shastra, that is was a guidebook for the uh, uh, Maurya era, Mor- uh, Mauryan era. Okay, similarly, Gupta era, they had a different... Uh, is that based on Sanatan Dharma or their yeah, own, yeah. is it their own no, no, do's and don'ts? No, 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 they have, they all, ultimately, they all go down to the, the, the Sanatan So based on Hinduism, there is no justice system. No, there is system, but it's not. It's not a permanent justice system. It is. It is. It is valid. Okay, uh, let me ask you. Okay, let me ask mm-hmm. you a simple question, brother. Uh, what mm-hmm. was the What was the punishment for a rapist in the Treta Yug? I mean, depends, huh? Because Treta Yug is almost a, a span of. I mean, I don't know how many thousand. Ram Rajya. Let Let make uh, Let make it more. Yeah, more yeah, so let make it Ram more Ram simple. Yug of Ram. Let, let's make it more simple. What, mm-hmm. what about Ram Rajya? In Ram Rajya, what was the punishment yeah, so, for the rape? So Ram Rajya would have its own, uh, have its own uh, set of rules, right? I what mean, was depends it? on. Uh, huh? What was it? What was the punishment? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but, but I mean, like. You, you you're not sure. Me. Let, let yeah. me help you out. Let me help mm-hmm. you out. In any mm-hmm. age, in any age, mm-hmm. any time, punishment mm-hmm. for rapist is death penalty. By but for whom? By whom? By the authority. No, no, which, 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 which authority? Authority of books, whether Which you books? take Vedas, whether you take uh, whether you take any smithy. No, 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 no. Yeah, there is no, no punishment for rapists in in Vedas. No, no, you you are saying it's death. Why not? It's not death. Death is not a so, permanent. Uh, the it's not death. Of, as, I told, as I've told you earlier, but, there are different. I mean, rape is not defined very clearly. Okay, at least uh, at least tell us at least tell us what is the punishment according to you. At least tell the punishment. Yeah, but, Name the punishment. I, I'm not. I'm not a lawgiver. You don't know. I mean, you don't uh, know, right? You don't know. I'm not at least you I'm say that you don't know. Brother, don't know at, least you, at, le- at least you say you don't know. Uh-huh. Because, because in every 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 yoga or every time of period, uh-huh. there are punishment, capital punishment for the people. No, no, it's not, it's not always death. No, you are wrong. Hold on, hold on, hold you, on. You don't hold have on. death always. Let me, let, me, let me answer. Let me answer. There let me are, answer. Even in India, even in India today, brother, brother, the I'm not talking death, about, I'm, rape is not death. I'm talking about, I'm talking about scripture. I'm talking about religion. I'm talking about the yugs which are taught uh-huh, in the religious yeah, so, so Indian laws are not. In those times, in those times, uh-huh. even today, mm-hmm. in even today time, Manusmiti is to be implemented. People are talking about. No, 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 no. Manus let me, let me, Manus let me speak. Can, can I get yeah. can I get one minute? No, let Please, me without first. Yeah, no, let me you, speak. I, I did not Manus speak. Priti, I did not speak. You're, you're only talking. I mean, Please, this cannot go Please. this way. Listen, hold on. Listen, let me finish first. You cannot do this way. Okay, hold on. Manuspriti is has got, got a very clear cut, uh, very clear cut statement that uh, the Manuspriti is valid only for a day and age. For another day and age, you have to write another set of rules. It cannot be. Can you quote me a word, please? Can I'm you sorry. quote me a verse where it says? I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can uh, search up the uh, thing, but I have, uh, you know, I mean, we have, uh, I mean, you know, I don't, uh, rather than verse, I can, you know, we'll uh, get into the. Uh, there is no, there is no such thing, brother. Sorry to say. Coming back, to, read, coming back to the have beach. Have you read the Have you read the manuscript? No, have you read the manuscript? Coming, 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 coming. No, no, yes, have I, have, I have read manuscript. I have read Manusmiti. Coming back you know, to the Greek. You know, coming back no, no, to the Greek. No, no, you know Sanskrit. Why should I know? What's it, what, no, what's no, it to be? Uh, guys, guys, no, no, there's no need to go know, into this. Let's, let's just I answer the to. questions. Otherwise, we mm. can move on, inshallah. Yeah. 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 Mm. Let's come to the bad. What is your question, Sam? It's not about fight. It's Whether it's not about fight, it's about learning. You learn from us, we learn from you. Yeah, that's the whole idea. You don't need to be emotional or like aggressive. So no, uh, it, it, according to is not aggressive, guys. It's okay. Sam by just asking okay. the question and then we can uh, just okay. go based on that. Sure. Mm. sure. According to Valmiki Ramayana, mm-hmm. Ram says that I might have mm-hmm. committed a grave crime in my previous life. Mm-hmm. That's why the Sita mm-hmm. has been kidnapped by an evil person. Mm-hmm. This statement is spoken by Ram to Brother Lakshman. So mm-hmm. do you know the crime which he committed in the past being God? Any idea? No, 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 Ram, we, when, Ram uh, being God, Ram is an avatar. Okay, when yeah. he's born as an avatar, he has all the discrepancies, all the fallacies of a human being. He's open to all of them. He's not He's not special if he's born as an avatar. Okay. So I'm asking, when, when Ram said to Lakshman that mm-hmm. I have yeah. committed a grave crime so what he's saying in my is, previous yeah, so what, birth. 
So yeah. So what he's saying I'm is, I'm asking, that, I'm asking, do you know about the crime, the the bad deed, no. what he did in his previous life? Okay, I'll no, tell I'm, you. I'm that not, was a rape. Uh, that was a mm -hmm. rape. Vishnu, Vishnu, the mm -hmm. God, Lord Vishnu. No, no, you, you are linking. Rape. No, no. Oh my God, you are linking. You are linking no. random things. Okay. No, I'm not. I'm not linking. It's, okay, fine, it's okay, mentioned fine, in your scripture. Okay, fine, let me explain it's to you before. Oh, brother, let me Vishnu, speak. Let Vishnu. me speak. This is not going the right way, brother. Yeah. I have given yes, you chance. Sorry, he give... asked you a question. What was a grave mm. sin? Then he said it yeah. was. It was rape. Yes. So I want to know yeah. which, where, yeah, where does he get this information yeah. from? Yeah. Right. 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 Go on, sir. So Vishnu. Yeah. So Vishnu. Uh, uh, the rape of. Uh, uh, Tulsi. Brinda. Uh, Tulsi. Yeah. Brinda. Tulsi by Vishnu. Tulsi. Yeah, yeah, is uh, is not is not to be taken in this concept because this is a larger uh, Vishnu is a uh, the, the, this is Itihas, right? The Ramayana mm -hmm. and the Mahabharata are smaller chapters of history, whereas we uh, the previous those are those are larger those are larger chapters and those are uh, and uh, even you know uh, even when Ram is uh, because Ram never said that I am God or I am Vishnu, right? Ram in his entire thing. He By the way, I, I still haven't understood. So mm -hmm. this this act of Vishnu, do you consider mm -hmm. that to be a dharma? So. Right. Uh, Okay, fine. Now the thing is, uh, we uh, we have these the larger scale of things. We we cannot judge in the in, in smaller in our, our, with our uh, with our set of. No, you can look when you see when you see an act. Okay, you can mm -hmm. give the context and say it's right no. or it's wrong. So give us no. the context. For example, why yeah. why would he actually? I don't know if he raped Tulsi or he deceived her no, into no, having he, sex he, with he, him. He he, he, decept, he, he decept, deceptively. He deceived he her. Deceptively. Yeah, yeah. So that, that if I remember the story, he took the form yeah. of her husband. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. and she yeah. she was under the impression she's having yes. sex with her husband yeah. when in fact right. it was right. Vishnu. Right. So right. are are Hindu gods? By the way, this is Vishnu, not an avatar. No, no, it's not an avatar. Yeah. This okay. Is Vishnu, yeah. So Vishnu, yeah. the god of Hindu, mm -hmm. commits deception and has yes. sex with someone other than his wife. Other than his wife. wife. Yes. Is yes. that would you, in your books? So, would that but, be but, yeah, would that be considered? Yeah, wait, wait. in your book, would that be considered to be wrong and other? Yeah, so now, so yeah, so now we have to look at the purpose. Why he did that? He did that in order to establish certain other uh, uh, larger, larger good. And uh, we, uh, you know, we can only judge in terms of whether it led to a larger good or no. I mean, that's the only thing we can we can judge by. We can't really judge in terms of you know with the act by the act. By was itself. he cursed? Was he cursed so, by Vrinda? Was he cursed by Vrinda after that? Yeah. Vrinda, Tulsi, you mean to say? Yeah, yeah Vrinda, Tulsi, is, Tulsi. Did Tulsi, yeah, yeah, Tulsi, Tulsi yeah. curse uh -huh, him? Yeah. It's yeah, the same yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right, exactly, yeah. And yeah, and uske baad, yeah, and then Tulsi, I mean... Uh, How can somebody Tulsi. curse God, man? Come on. The, uh, uh, so How the, can the, the creation uh, curse God? Yeah, yeah. No, and no, by no, the no, way, this no, is no, not no, an avatar. Vishnu is actually no, one of yeah, the prime yeah, gods yeah, yeah. of the Hindus. Yeah. So, so the, so, uh, first of all, I've told you, the creation and creation are not, not separate. They're the same. And uh, Vishnu, uh, so Tulsi, uh, yeah, so, and uh, let me finish the story also for you. Because then Vishnu promised Tulsi that from now on you'll always be on, you know, uh, on my, you know, uh, you'll always be my crown. And therefore we always uh, 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 worship Vishnu with Tulsi, Tulsi leaves. So, um, yeah. So, uh, the curse uh, or these kind of things that you say that how can one thing be cursed and all. The cosmic cycle or the cos cosmic laws will prevail whether it is God or no. Even even the divine is... Uh, you mean karma? Karma and yeah, karma and those kind of things. Yeah. So, they, they, so the they, god, so even gods are not even, uh, free from are, karma. Even they are not free from karma. Even By the way, kar like... karma only punishes adharma. No, karma does not punish or karma. Karma gives you back what you have. What is what you what deserve? You have, what you deserve? Yeah. Yeah. So which so, includes okay. adharma, right? So anyone uh, anyone who commits adharma, they okay, get punished, yeah, I, right? No, no, okay, fine. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish karma, karma theory. Let, let me let me get okay. that. Yeah. So, uh, 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 the karma theory says, uh, you whatever you do leaves a certain imprint in you, and then you desire uh, to be fulfilled for that. So, if you do somebody some wrong, you uh, in, in, internally your your conscious leaves an imprint of you to desire that thing back back on you. The, and same, the same thing with good, and that is how you are rewarded later on. Not necessarily the next birth, maybe it's in the same birth or even in the same with the same day or whenever, however. So as long as you are not, you know, fulfilled with fulfilled with the desires of uh, uh, of erasing those imprints, till then the karma is going to chase you, and that's it. It's not going to, you know, to judge in terms of good and bad. And there's a very interesting story regarding this. Uh, um, if it's know, not Dhritarashtra... good and bad, what's the what's the point of karma? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll tell you. So Dhritarashtra. The Trashtra, uh, uh, you know, the, the blind blind king in Mahabharat, the the son of the uh, the father of all the hundred Kauravs, the Kauravas. 
the hundred Kauravas. Kauravas yeah, and Pandavas yeah. in Mahabharata. Yeah. Yeah. So Dhritarashtra the was the father of yeah. So Dhritarashtra was the father of the Kauravas. So he was crying towards the end. You know, I've lost my hundred sons, and uh, how come? You know, why did this happen to me? So Krishna comes and tells him, "Ki you know, fifty generation years births back, you had in anger, you had killed the hundred sons of a of a of a of a bird, and as a as a consequence, you have to had to suffer these." The, the birth, uh, death of your hundred sons. So then he says, but why fifty gen, uh, fifty lifetimes back? Then why why is it now? Did I get the result? He said you had to work up all the good deeds over those fifty generations to get a hundred sons. It's because of the yeah. bad deed. No, 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 no. Because it, even Come on, you got to acknowledge to, it was a bad yeah. deed. That's why he had to so, go through so, the suffering. So, yeah. So even in order to get the suffering. You have to first do some good, you know, because as long as you're bound in the in the trap of good. No, and no, bad, you you need to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. The reason he had to go through the suffering is because of his bad deed. Yes, yes. But in but order earlier, to get the earlier you said you don't believe in good and evil. No, no. Good and evil is we don't believe in good and bad. Yeah, because evil. because killing. Look, when you kill fifty of something, hundred. Yeah, 100. it's obviously not to feed yourself. Yeah, I don't know what. No, no. Yeah, there's, there's a story that how he did it in anger and those kind of things. There, there, yeah, there exactly. So yeah. even if you did it in anger, for example, yeah. If mm -hmm. if I told you Hitler kill. Uh, millions of people out of anger. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, no, in no, your no. book, that wouldn't be evil, right? So first of all, we have to get down to what what do we mean by evil? I just told evil you. Evil is something. No, evil is something that is against the will of God. Yeah. 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 Killing, killing is against the will of God. Killing and killing and what Hitler did was that was, was that what God okay, intended? Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. That's what I'm, that's what now we're getting to. Okay. So in in the Christian or in the Abrahamic way of thinking, the uh, there is certain things which are against the will of God, which is uh, you know there is good and there is evil. So there is God and there is the devil which promotes the evil, right? I thought you in, said in, there is no evil. In the, in, the, in, the, in the Christian way of thinking. Oh, in, in the, the Christian. Abrahamic, okay. We are Muslims, Abrahamic. by the way. We believe in evil. Yeah, as well. Abraham, Abraham, so we Abraham believe in shaitan. Yeah. yeah and yeah, we yeah, believe right. in our nafs also, which is capable of evil. Yeah. Right. It means right, ourselves, right. you know, our own right. souls are able ah, right. to, capable of that. Right. Even right. the concept of divine is present in Hinduism. No. Yeah, no. in Shrimad Bhagavatam, in Shrimad Bhagavatam, Brahma Brahma gave birth to the demons from his buttocks. Those are Brahma Rakshas. Demons. It's mentioned no, like those demons. Are demons. No, those but, are demons. What, what are, what are, did Pisata? you not read? Did you not read from? Uh, was it from Ramayana where it says that uh, this evil person kidnapped Sita, referring to Ravan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but that's a translation, right? As a translation, and they, you, you don't, I, I don't expect them to have exact translation. No, but but if, if you but do, you, if, do you think God if, wants anybody's wife to be kidnapped? So I mean, God doesn't want any good or bad thing to happen. The good and bad things we are here for the experience, right? I mean, for, even as of now, a lot of bad things are happening, right? Do you think God is God? God wants that to happen or not? No, I mean, your God, your God is basically doesn't even have a will. Right. There is there's, there's, there's no. There's your no, God no, does nothing. In fact, yeah, it is. It, it is, cannot it is, even it is, move. It, it cannot even move a leaf. You see, in Islam, it's different. A leaf doesn't move without the permission of God. All of it is happening within within the same divine. The no, it's not because leaf. someone who doesn't have a will cannot do anything. Will, no, no, no. We are will is will is a will is a human thing. Will is not a divine or a well. Thing. Even the animals have will. Yeah, so it's a it's a human and you know a devolved species will have will. When there is duality, there is will. There cannot be will without duality. So what does your God do then? So the God state, the Brahma state is a one unified state, right? As it devolves and becomes more and more separate. No, no. What does experience. what does Brahman do? Brahman does not, Brahman by itself just exists. So it doesn't do anything. There is nothing to do or not do. There is there is no. Do how do you know? Do how do you know Brahman exists if it has no if it has yeah, no so have, attributes, right. no so, will, yeah. no nothing? How so do you know it exists even? Right, exactly. So this is our philosophical standing, just the way you have a certain philosophical standing of uh, yeah. Allah. We have a philosophical standing about, about Brahma, which is the, the unified. By the way, state. Allah does have attributes, but you're saying yes, Brahm, yes, Brahman yes, doesn't yes, have yes. attribute, doesn't have no, a will, no, no, no. doesn't no, do no, anything. Brahman. No, no, no. Brahma does not. Is not doesn't have attributes. Brahma is beyond attributes. No, he says nirgun. Nirgun and nirakar means without attribute, without form. The prefix nir, like for example, nishkam. Okay, that is nishkam is the prefix for no, no. So nish. Uh, nishchal, which means the one that doesn't move is nish. So the prefix for no is nish, whereas nir is a prefix of beyond. It's something that's 
super person in a pervasive beyond it so okay. niraka what does what does nirguna brahman mean nirguna means the one that is beyond good and what does niraka brahman mean niraka means the one that is beyond akar okay so nirguna doesn't mean without attributes no what does guna mean beyond. guna means any kind of uh, quality any type of quality any kind okay. of quality including num- including numbers right so yeah. the brahman doesn't have any qualities it's beyond qualities what does that even mean beyond qualities what does so, it mean right so the thing is it's, it's, it's a meaningless quality. word otherwise no, 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 if you're no, talking no. about attrib- no attributes okay. or beyond okay. attributes okay. you're okay. talking no, about no, yeah, 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 yeah. meaningless so, yeah so, so so quality is a function is a is, a, is perceived when there's duality you can perceive quality only when something uh, something exists from separate from something else right so a big car which means the car is separate from you and the car exists by itself a red um apple so the apple exists by, and, and separate from you right but when there's only one then the the, the function of quality does not does not you know you don't experience quality like for example when you're sleeping right you are one you are just one you you, you, you don't you know exi- existence itself is a quality existence is a quality existence is not a quality it is a quality is a... because obviously in order to for something to exist mm-hmm. it must have the quality of existence that it must exist in reality if you if you're Qual- talking beyond ex- beyond quality means he doesn't even exist quality is perceived you have to perceive a quality not necessarily you to... no you have to perce- I, I, no you don't I, have I, to otherwise how do you how do you know okay how, i'll how tell you quality? i'll tell you what as muslims we believe in angels we don't mm-hmm. perceive them we know they exist but we don't perceive them at all the oh, we know but, look existence but, existence itself is a quality whether you like it or not existence quality is perceived and okay a quality not has to be okay do you perceive do you perceive radio waves of course through a radio, you do? radio through a radio waves. through a radio of course no but that's not through you that's a ra- that's that's but an I, instrument but, that's not yeah, you yeah the instrument yeah the instrument perceive it right i mean ultimately anthropomorphic anthro- anthropo anthropomorphism anthropomorphism yeah yeah for for me yeah. right it gives it gives shape for something for something for me no no that's that's a that's a way to measure something i totally understand yeah. how are you right. going to measure apsaras for example how to apsar so apsaras are uh, i mean these are divine celestial beings which are of course do you know they know. exist do they exist so these are exist in the sense of, in, in what plane? not in our plane not in our physical plane no i didn't say physical exist. plane do they exist yeah. anywhere they exist in a in a certain realm which is uh, yeah. different from our do you perceive them do you perceive them i mean if you see so the thing is if you st- if you do those activities and those kind of things you perceive start perceiving no 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 i'm saying before that do you perceive it no you, you cannot perceive it you cannot exactly. perceive it why so you exactly. you believe uh-huh. in their existence which is a quality without mm-hmm. perception so quality is not perceiving only Like, anyway let's move on i think we have drifted from the actual topic at hand yeah. right yeah. so let's come back right. to the topic uh, you know earlier we were discussing about mm. idol worship itself ah uh, right and uh, okay. we asked all the hindus okay. if they if they can show us from the vedas mm-hmm. if idol worship is advocated anywhere okay can you show us where idol worship is advocated okay, in the vedas so, so the primary the vedas, hindu scriptures yeah so vedas essentially hymns and the philosophy and they talk about uh, you know uh, salutations to all the forces of nature all the forces of nature to the sun to uh, to fire to uh, water to those kind of things and uh, those are those are the those are the basics that we we, we bow down to and then beyond that we uh, bow down to for the for the intangible to be uh, made into a more tangible form we 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 worship deities so you know like uh, indra is a person is a personification of uh, rain so it's, it's not uh, you, since you can't worship rain by itself you worship indra similarly when you cannot worship surya uh, i mean the sun you know the, you know in his absence you you worship surya the, 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 and agni and so on and so forth so those are those are the personifications and going forward we have more so more, these uh, these are personification meaning they are not avatars they are not god no no these are not so these are devatas they, these are devatas these are the these are these are do they the exist do they exist yeah I mean, of course i mean you see the sun right you see that you see it every no, day right the surya itself is uh, do you believe uh, the sun is god the sun is a devta means god devta means devta no, no, means no 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 devta means a uh, devta is a higher enlightened form of existence it's not uh, i mean it's not the ultimate divine but it is divine okay so like no, a god is a god 
According to Maharishi, Dhanan Saraswati Deva is a person who is righteous. Oh my God. Listen, Maharishi Dhanan Saraswati Deva is a person who is righteous. Oh my God. Listen, Maharishi Dhanan Saraswati Deva is a person who is righteous. Oh my God. Listen, Maharishi Dhanan Saraswati Deva is a person who is righteous. Oh my God. It is. Uh, it is not very widely regarded as authentic, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can always bring it in. But uh, the thing is, it's not. Uh, the Arya Samaj is not hundred uh, percent compliant with. Uh, you know, they, for example, they do not believe in the Puranas and so on and so forth. Okay, okay, that's so not. The, I, that's I can't. Not I can't argue for that. Actually, no, 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 no. The actual point is, does mm -hmm. uh, does Vedas a sanction idol worship? Sanction or not sanction? That's not. That's Vedas are a book of philosophy. Vedas don't give orders. Okay. Vedas are a book of philosophy, and you can do th things as long as they are compliant with the Vedas. Can you quote a verse, brother, please? I'm quote a verse of what? Of whatever you are saying. Any proof? Because you're, you're just me. talking from you're just talking from like fifteen twenty minutes. You haven't provided uh -huh. any evidence from the like scripture. Like what? Evidence for as, what? As, as, oh. as, like what like uh, from from Veda, can you show uh, the worship of Ram is uh, actually is, sanctioned? Even if even if even if I quote something, it is not going to make any sense for you. Simply because no, it will make sense you, for everyone. You, you, everyone you, who, who is no no, no you're not trained in the Vedas. You're not trained in the Vedas. You're not trained in Sanskrit. Okay, there are, you uh, you need a person who is trained in all of these, and and then then there is a you know thing uh, you can debate. But the thing is randomly. If, okay, if we I want to learn from you. Okay, no, okay, no, no, we want I, to learn from quoting, we want to learn from I you. Start, I think, I, uh, brother, please let me let I, me also speak. Okay, if you keep uh, interrupting, then. Acha. Uh, if you mm -hmm. if you if you think you are learned, then please please mm -hmm. enlighten us. Can you please okay, show from Veda? Yeah, so I'm telling you. That's what I've been telling uh, you. Let me complete. Let me complete my statement at least, brother. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me complete my statement. Please, please. So there is no verse. There is no verse which says to worship Ram in Vedas, right? Let's Ram came much later. Statement. Ram came much okay, later. So, okay. So Vedas doesn't doesn't have Ram, right? Let's move on. Of course, correct. No. Uh, uh. Okay. So according to you, Ram is God. Deity. Ram is an avatar. Avatar. Okay. Avatar is not God, right? Avatar is a form of God. It is also a form of God. See, there okay. are there are multiple uh, forms, ah. Huh? There are multiple levels. There is so the God has form. form. Okay, God does God has form? The God is beyond form, so all forms come from Him or it. The all all forms come from it. What are you talking? Right? So beyond what is, form and all forms comes comes from it. What does right. that mean? So 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 the whole the whole physical world, the physical world is made of forms. Okay, you and I are living in a physical world. Is I, God I form or formless? Uh, that's i mean that's that's a that's a very uh, <laughs> that's a that's a that's a nice question uh, do you, are you on camera do you have do you, i mean do you have a camera i mean if you can you know come face to face it will be much better because it's right now i'm coming to a... uh, no, sorry brother i i would not yeah. be able to turn the camera okay fine cool 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 okay yeah. so so point is uh we you and i are living in a form form world our world therefore whatever we perceive is all through form Our body is a form. No, brother, I am asking mind. very, very simple. Uh, uh, brother, I am asking yeah. very simple question. As you mm -hmm. have said that uh, Ram, Ram is an avatar, a mm -hmm. form of God. A form of Vishnu. But earlier you said, earlier you said God doesn't have any form. Ra Ram is a form of Vishnu. Hello. Ram, Ram is, a is a form of Vishnu. Of Vishnu. Okay. Vishnu, yes. So, do you yes. consider Vishnu to be God? Vishnu is Mahadev. Mahadev is Shiva. No, Vishnu, Not Vishnu. and Brahma, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh are the Mahadevs. Well, okay, Mahadev, but they are not God, right? We don't have a term for God. If you want a term for God, Paramatma, have... Paramatma, Paramatma, no, Ishwar, Ishwar would be. They are not. Ishwar they are not Ishwar. They are not Ishwar, right? They are not Ishwar. They are. Huh? They are. They are Mahadevs. Yeah. Mm. Mahadev, Mahadev. According to scholars, according to according to scholars, Mahadev means a person who is righteous in deeds. No, a no, good no. person, a learned no, no, person, no. a learned person. They, no, no, they, no, no. according according to Bhagavad Gita. Let me quote verse. Are, let me quote I mean, word from Bhagavad Gita. Random, random. I'm, I'm just quoting a verse. I'm haan, quoting a verse. You, you can't quote one verse. We have to read the whole scripture in, from. You have to. You no, I'm I'm talking about I'm talking about devtas. I'm talking about devtas. Ah, so devtas. According to Bhagavad Gita, according to Bhagavad Gita, chapter number seven, verse number twenty, it says, anyone who worship the devtas. Mm -hmm. Are mindless people? Okay, can you can you please uh, tell me where you get this uh, uh, this translation from? Seven twenty, Bhagavad Gita, no, chapter number seven, okay. verse number twenty. Who made this translation? Who made this translation? Anybody, any translation you can see, you can no, no, no. for any translation which you like. You you have seen this translation. You must have got it from a somewhere. Scholar. Right? A scholar, a scholar. Which scholar? 
who who is the scholar any scholar any scholar which scholar do you trust you can check you can check his Baba, I, have, i have i have i have geeta press ka, uh, uh, okay fine check geeta press hai. check geeta press okay. the same verse is said so, the same translation is there no no the thing is are you are you are you uh, an expert in sanskrit brother the the, the scholar has translated for us brother ha, the translator has already accepted Baba, the trans the even, translator you have not even read you have not even read the whole geeta you have brother, not even read the whole geeta ha Yes. Do you believe in Do you believe in Gita Press Gorakhpur? Yes, to be a right translator, right? Yes, yes. If you know, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, Prasun. Why don't you read it in Sanskrit and okay, you translate fine. it for us? Let's see what's your translation. Fine, fine, fine. We'll get. We'll Is that fair? Yes. Yeah, we'll get the Gita Press. Yeah, Sam. Yeah, in the Gita meantime, can yeah, you fine, fine. can you bring up the Gita Press? Gita Press. Yeah. yeah. Can somebody uh, bring the Gita Press and uh, we can do that? Uh, you can. You can do it yourself, and you can. You can, can present. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can present it yourself. Yeah. Mm. So click on the present button at the bottom, and just click on share screen. Mine is a, I have an iPad, so I don't know. Uh... Yeah, it should be available on iPad as well. Okay. Do you not see at the bottom? Yeah, there is. Uh, it says present. My camera chat. Yeah. Ali. Okay, I'll try to do it on my phone. Okay. Okay. Those whose intelligence has been stolen by materialistic desires worship. Can you share your people. screen, Sam? They pass. I oh, know. Sorry, I'm. I, I, I'm just. Uh, oh, Are you on the phone, the phone as well? Yeah. Okay, no problem. What do I type? Is it just Gita Press? Gita Press Gorakhpur and the Gita from Gita Press Gorakhpur. Gita PDF. They must have a nice uh, Gita. Yeah. Yeah. The first. The first. Seven twenty. Gita Press. Okay. Now, which? Yeah. What's the reference? Seven twenty. Chapter seven, verse number twenty. Mm hmm. Uh, hold on. So I go to English, right? God, I haven't used this before. Yeah, I mean, even I haven't. Uh, I mean, I've never used the presentation. Oh, well, I'm on the home page. Where do I go now? Go to the beginning. Hold on, hold on. PDF. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look. Sign up. Close this. Down this way. <sighs> is it on? Is it under research? Okay. Uh, okay. Which one you're saying? Seven twenty something, right? Seven twenty. Yeah. Seven twenty. What? What seven twenty? Bhagavad Gita chapter number seven verse number twenty. Hold on, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's beyond seven twenty according to your definition, right? Hmm. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Thirty eight. Thirty eight. Seven twenty. Chapter number seven. Ah, uh, nine. Oh dear. So yes. Oh, this is a PDF eight. version. Yeah, yeah, PDF. Hold oh on. man, eight. this is going to take ages. That's the whole problem. <laughs> Why can't they have a simple search feature? Uh, the Gita Press uh, has uh, a lot of. I mean, it's done a lot of research. Huh? This is one of the most uh, reputed. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Gita Press. Uh, you can you can check in Gita Press as well. Yeah, yeah. Seven twenty. Yeah. Those wisdom has been carried away by various desires, being prominent by one nature. Read Sanskrit. Whatever. Say Sanskrit. Ah, listen. Ah, choose the worship particular. I suppose with the particular to that friend. Okay. Let me. Read Sanskrit. Those who's okay. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Please read Sanskrit. Okay, read Sanskrit first. Okay, brother, read Sanskrit. Yeah. Those whose wisdom has been carried away by various desires, being prompted by their own nature, worship other deities, are adopting norms related to each. This Whatever celestial form of devotee craving for the same worldly object chooses to worship with reverence, I stabilize the faith of that particular devotee in that very form. Take care. Brother, I am asking you to read in Sanskrit first. Read the shloka. You will. I mean, I, I, did I just explain to you? Please the, read the, the shloka. No, no, you told no, no, me. You, you told me about Sanskrit. Are you, are you interested in the meaning or the shloka? You first read shloka. No, no, you you will come. You will come across the word devata. You will come across the word devata in Sanskrit shloka. Please you read. Know, you know, I think I think you're using the. the I think word, you don't know Sanskrit, like, brother. Uh, I think yeah. you don't know Sanskrit, brother. You 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 can you can right? use the words. You can use the words pretty. Yeah. Okay, so I think yeah. Prasun, all all you need yeah. to do is can you confirm yeah. if the if the word devta is there in the Sanskrit? Or so not? yeah, so it says those who are being carried by devta worship other deities are having norms relating to each. Okay. Okay. Is it, so, so the term devta is there, yeah? Yeah, deities. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And devta, whatever, devta is there. whatever celestial form of devotee craving for some worldly object chooses to worship with the reference, I stabilize the faith of that particular devotee in very form. So basically, it says you can worship other deities. But whatever you choose, I I I stabilize your faith no, in no, that very. No, no, that's form. not twenty. That's not the worst twenty. That's not the worst twenty. Re that's why I'm saying read Sanskrit. That's 20, why I'm saying read Sanskrit. 20, read Sanskrit. Read Sanskrit. What's the difference again? It's uh, not visible. Read twenty. 20, 20. 
you'll find idol worshippers okay that, that's got nothing to do with vedic period no the vedic period no 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 it's got something to do with how can it the vedic period is about 3000 bc roughly around 3000 bc yeah. which uh, which presents to us about a philosophy a philosophy which is roughly you know like which is eternal but it is presented to us uh, in the i think i think you're confusing two things so one is actual idol worship by pagans yes. other than those who follow the vedas no even 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 hindus are pagans hindus are not not pagans no no not pagans. i'm not look there's different yeah. forms so i'm talking especially those who yeah. follow the vedas yeah okay even by the way the... you can you can be uh i think in in hinduism an atheist is considered someone who doesn't follow the vedas am i right no no, no 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 again 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 because that's nastic, that's what one nastic told me that nastic, this is nastic yeah yeah i know no nastic yeah, yeah. is not a believer in, a non believer of vedas he's not a non believer of uh, yeah that's what i said who the, doesn't the believe in nidishwarvad yeah nidishwarvad is uh, the non believer of divine okay so, uh, so uh, my uh, question was specifically about those who follow the vedas mm -hmm, okay mm -hmm. yeah I mean, why, unless and until it is mentioned in the Vedas, why can't we conclude that those who wrote the Vedas, those who followed the Vedas, they did not uh -huh. worship idols? No, no. Have Have the Vedas said anything against uh, against idol worship? It's not about no. against. It's you know yeah, you don't no, exactly. you, you cannot prove something that doesn't exist. Exactly. You so always, unless, you always yeah, so, prove the positive, the thing right, that, exactly. that does exist. Right, right, so right, you're not right. going to ask me. Uh, okay, show me in the Bible where it says, uh, I, I, I understand, I understand, you know, Jesus ate, ate pizza, for example. Right, exactly. Yeah? That's, what, that's what I'm saying. That, that, is. that shows nothing. I understand. No, no, that's I can only go by what's in the Bible or what's in the yeah, Vedas. Yeah, yeah. I cannot right. go beyond so, that. The Vedas, that's what I'm saying. The Vedas present to us a certain philosophy. They don't, yeah. they don't present to us rituals. Rituals are not in the Vedas. Rituals are in the Shastras. That's what I'm telling you. Rituals are present in the Shastras. The Shastras go ahead and tell you, okay, okay, this is if you want to do, uh, I'll worship you this way. Shastras? So... Yeah. ஜனா <laughs> Mm. but it doesn't give you the details but at mm. least we have the primary source telling us that you yeah. have to perform the salah yeah. which okay. is the prayers okay. uh, the okay. five okay. times okay. prayers okay. and okay. you have to give the zakat yeah. so yeah. Okay. You, yeah. Yeah. I, i think you don't even have the what do you say uh, the the primary source telling you anything about idol worship no the primary and source that's the point the i think you need to acknowledge that because every hindu who came on the show today uh -huh. they all struggle uh -huh. with this but they didn't want to acknowledge the fact that the vedas do not advocate idol worship anyway no vedas cannot advocate or not advocate idol worship because vedas are a book of philosophy well it does advocate yagnas the sacrifices yeah it does advocate yagnas yeah so you can't and say it cannot and, 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 and idol worship has been around even before the vedas became popular irrelevant right? irrelevant it worship so the i'm saying is, for for a hindu yeah for yeah. them to acknowledge this is so <laughs> difficult i don't know why because now they have been in, uh, so deep into idol worship uh into I the shirk that they, they cannot come out of it they cannot even acknowledge that the primary source Papa, doesn't con I, uh, I, contain any anything uh, any I teaching about idol worship idol worship is our way of uh, propagating vedic ideas it's not uh, i mean against the vedic ideas you you're, you're huh? paying adoration to yeah. to uh, to, uh, to something that is uh, lifeless no it's not lifeless yeah? this is this pran pratishtha is done it's not lifeless anymore no no pran pratishtha is not for all the time so it is only for so, a specific so, time pran pratishtha but after that after that it's just yeah. just a lifeless idol yeah so that's why we have visarjan also the ultimate the ultimate game of the, the role yeah visarjan is where you throw it in the rivers into the river yeah so it has to go yeah. back to where it whatever it, it doesn't no. matter no, 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 the no, point no, is no, no, this no. if you huh. if you understand what idol worship hmm. is okay and <coughs> if it is so important in hinduism where you have to mm -hmm. actually build an entire uh -huh. temple like the ram mandir and yeah, then yeah. place an idol in it and then yeah. go through this uh, this mm -hmm. event called pran mm -hmm. pratishtha pratishtha as per the shastras yeah these are as per the shastras yeah mm -hmm. yeah the shastras but not the vedas yeah. okay it's uh, it's something that is so important in hinduism mm -hmm. but it's it's actually missing in your primary source the vedas it's not missing in my primary source it is you cannot it's... show an example which means it's missing there it's not come on it, 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 uh, Listen, as, as we, the vedas you know, uh, come on you as, need to acknowledge vedas, this it's not that you struggle 
and you couldn't find anything. The, Similarly, no, the other Hindus who came on board, they also uh, struggled with this. So please acknowledge no, no, that the no, Vedas no, are no, silent no. about idol worship. Whether you huh. think it's right or wrong, outside the Vedas, that's a different thing. No, no, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the Vedas are the Vedas. Are, uh, I'm telling you again and again, Vedas are a book of philosophy. Vedas are not a book of orders. Vedas are not a bunch of orders. As yagnas, which are orders. No, no, those are not orders. Those are not orders. Okay, just subscribe. When you, subscribe when you say subscribe. orders, I mean these are rituals, which the Hindus can okay, trace back to the Vedas. Okay, okay, okay. hold on. Before we, before we progress, first thing, all rituals in Hinduism, these are all uh, for the benefit, and not it's not as if you're not doing this, not doing them as a sin. All the all the rituals, all the rituals, in, unlike unlike Islamic rituals, which have to be done, and not doing them is you know, that's not. <coughs> no, no, not not all rituals in Islam. Are, mm. are where you actually have to do it. So we have something called far than obligatory. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Yeah. So and it, others yeah. which are which are voluntary. Yeah. Okay. Right. Exactly. Like the yeah. nafil. The nafil right, prayers right. are voluntary. But right. the thing so is, they, if you miss the, the obligatory, then you get mm -hmm. you, you're sinful. Okay. Ah, right. And right. and so, this is so mentioned that, in our primary text. Yes, I understand. But it is but missing in your primary text, the Vedas. Exactly. It says that's what it says. There are no. Obligatory uh, rituals. Uh, the idol worship, yeah. Okay, so, anyway, so I brother, think it's we, not important. We, it's not important for any uh, uh, pran pratishta ceremony or ritual. Hmm? It's not important to have pran pratishta a ceremony or ritual. You know, I mean, while I, facing I, I the idol in temple, it's not I, important. It's not necessary, right? What do you mean it's not necessary? You said just now. What did you say? Repeat again. About no, it's the rituals, so, it's not command. It's not a command. Yeah, it's okay, not a okay, command, okay, and it's okay, not okay, not okay. necessary. So, so what? Doing, what doing, it's pran pratishta yeah. necessary. So when you do a when you do a ritual, when you do a shastriya ritual, you get the benefits of that ritual. Is it necessary? Not, I mean, to get the benefits is necessary, you know. If you want to get, if you want the benefits, it's necessary. What is the no, no, what are the benefits? Think, what are I the benefits? Is, according to Veda? Is, it, is it obligatory for you to do it? That's the question. Ah, it's not obligatory. You mean to say obligatory? No, it's not obligatory. Okay, okay. Anyway, yeah. I think we are we have uh, probably uh, uh, done a lot. Yes, of, I mean, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm I just uh, I'm just uh, considerate yeah. of those people who are waiting in the back yeah. chair for I, a I, while. So you know, I, I think I've been coming here for quite some time, but uh, I think you understand. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you are, you are one, one person that I don't mind having on the panel. Alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we learn well, something you. new every day. Okay, thank yeah, you very much, Prasun. Uh, until yeah, next you. time, really appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you so much, brother. You are, you are awesome. Bye. All right, take care. Mm. Right. Uh, so who's next? I think uh, digital human. You are a Muslim, so I'm going to keep you in the back chat uh, until we call the Muslims. Okay, Hari Om. Are you there? Yeah. Salaam alaikum. Namaste. Wa alaikum salam. Are you Muslim, Haryom? No, no, no. I'm not okay. Muslim. I'm You're just saying salam. Okay, no problem. Right. Uh, you want? Uh, I don't know if you've been listening to our stream. We have been on for over four hours now. Yeah. Uh, I joined, I think, 15 or 20 minutes ago. Okay, no so problem. I was listening to Prasun. Yeah. So one of the questions that we ask uh, the Hindus, sorry, I think one of your tab is open. I can hear an echo back. So click, close, uh, switch off the, uh, or close the tab, which has YouTube open. Uh, yeah. Is it clear now? Yeah, it's clear now. So my question uh, is, what is your understanding of Pran Pratishta? And uh, why is it important in Hinduism? Because uh, the reason we're asking the question is because uh, our topic today is to do with uh, the Babri Masjid and also with the Ram Mandir, with the inauguration on the 22nd, and they will be doing a Pran Pratishta. So can you please explain to us what is Pran Pratishta and why is it important? Actually, in, uh, in Hinduism, those who worship idol, they believe that uh, uh, if they uh, do prana pratishtha uh, to the idols, so after that, what will happen? The power of Lord and uh, angels, means devata, will come around there. So the and it will be easier for people to worship the God uh, because if okay. the devatas are yeah, assembled yeah. there. So yeah. let's say let's say on the twenty second of January in a few days, there's going to be this uh, ritual of prana pratishtha taking place uh, and during the ceremony they're going to pronounce some some hymns and mantras 
So when they do this, yeah. what happens to this Ram Lallan, the idol of the child Ram, yeah? What happens? No, they just do prana pratishtha so that the uh, uh, the angels or the devtas will assemble there. Sorry, uh, what, will, what the, will happen again? I, I didn't cast that. The, the devatas. Devatas will assemble there. Okay. Yeah. What will happen to the idol itself? No, nothing. The devata, but only it will become powerful in the uh, divin in the sense of divinity. If I say it will become powerful, as they say that uh, that idol will be called Vigraha after the Pran Pratishtha. Uh, so it won't be called the uh, statue or idol. It will be called Vigraha. Uh, what this does Vigraha? What does Vigraha mean? Vigraha means that uh, the idol, which is uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, when uh, something uh, its ceremony is uh, completed through uh, performing the uh, mantras and the slokas so yeah, yeah so that idol transform into uh, vigraha because uh, they are yeah, devtas vigraha. and uh, what does it mean what does vigraha mean i don't know its proper meaning proper, uh, properly okay. but it is just a transformed form of uh, uh, idol because after uh, performing prana pratishtha it is called vigraha does it mean that uh, the uh, the spirit or something comes inside the idol? Uh, exactly, exactly. That spirit means that uh, um, I said that devatas, the devatas assemble there where the idols are. Uh, idols have got uh, mantras recited of pran pratishtha. Okay. So devatas get assembled there. So would you say For that thousands life, of year, yeah. Would you say the life is invited, the life of the deity? is invited inside the lifeless idol? Uh, I can't say the life of deity um, because um, the, uh, God is uh, all powerful, it is uh, well known. But uh, uh, when you are saying that, uh, it means that uh, uh, when somebody is uh, doing prana pratishtha, so that uh, devtas are coming there. So when devtas come that you can say, yeah, I've got life. Okay, yeah, you when you say, say devtas, who is coming? Is Ram coming there? Uh, Ram, the, most of the Hindus believe that Ram is everywhere, God, God is everywhere. Yeah, but he's, so if they, he's, he's just a avatar, he's not the almighty God. Uh, yeah, when they when it is called that Ram is coming, so uh, they believe that the avatar was uh, the, just a human form of uh, God. Uh, people believe that it was just a human form, but the original he was the uh, Vishnu, who is the creator of the universe. I thought so that was he, Brahma. I thought yeah, Brahma created Brahma. the universe. Yeah, 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 exactly. So who is coming inside the uh, inside the murti? Is it Vishnu or is it uh, Brahma, the creator? Who is coming? Uh, actually, when they believe that God is everywhere, so they know that God is everywhere, whether it is in empty places no, no, or in the space or if if yeah. God was everywhere, then there is no need mm -hmm. to do pran pratishta. The pran pratishta is to invite the deity inside the murti. Um, you understand? Yeah. So what is uh, the yeah, point of, yeah. what is the point of this ritual, this ceremony? If God is everywhere, then He's already in there. He doesn't need to be invited. So this is pointless. Exactly. The ceremony is pointless. The, the, the actual is because uh, uh, Rig Veda exactly says about the Lord. So they are not following these things. But uh, okay. So uh, are you are you uh, one of those guys who actually doesn't believe in? Uh, idol worship ah exactly i don't yeah it is my point of view and my understanding after reading the vedas that uh, there is no idol of lord okay so when are you, they are say, you an arya samaji no i'm not arya samaji okay so uh, what, but, what is your uh, what is your sampradaya uh, actually i belong to uh, i uh, uh, in my, my family belong to uh, um, uh, yeah Vish, Vish, Vishishta but I'm not following that. I'm following, you know, uh, I have some influence of uh, Ari Samaj and some influence of Islam. So because I, when I go through the scripture, my my scripture, so I found that, yeah, my scripture says that there Arya is Samaj. no idol. You're saying you're influenced by Arya Samaj. Which one is it? Uh, no, just I'm not influenced. I can say common terms. Do you, do you not have a Sampradaya? 
Uh, no, I'm not uh, currently. I'm not following any sampradaya. No problem. Yeah. So, okay, brother, so brother, you know, when as you said, yeah, go on, Sam. Sorry, brother, uh, brother Hari, uh, as you said that you you got influenced by Arya Samaj, you follow. So you believe in the Anand Saraswati, right? No, no. I said that there is common terms in uh, from our Samaj, from Islam, from of Christianity. Of course, of course yeah. brother. So Dayanand Saraswati has condemned idol worship and uh, building yeah. of temples. Do you also condemn idol worship and building of temples? Should not be there. I um I am not condemning the building of temples, but I condemn the building of idol. So it's one and the same. Temple is only made when the idol is kept. Uh, no, uh, uh, the temple can be made like without uh, temple, without uh, temp with with without without idol, there is no temple. I think. So uh, instead of idol, they can you know uh, make uh, the yajna place of yajna yagya So yeah, that is the, that yeah. is different. But we are talking about in in the line in the context of Ram Mandir, Ram Temple. So do you have, have you seen any Ram? mandir without an idol? Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen. Uh, okay, so <laughs> what you're temple. bringing is not from the common Hindu understanding of a mandir, because a mandir yeah. without an idol is basically just a building, isn't it? Uh, exactly, without an idol. So, but so uh, for the purpose of meditation or for the purpose of prayer, they can use that uh, because uh, it is said in Rig Veda, uh, the uh, chapter you can 10. Use the house what, as well. uh, yeah. Okay. For doing meditation, we can use the house as well. Why the structure uh -huh. of temple? Even the house has uh, idols. Because the the yeah, place even of house puja, is the idol. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. yeah even at my home, there are uh, there is a special puja room, and there are so many idols there. I thought you said you don't worship idols. Uh, I don't worship, but oh, my family, family okay. worship. Okay. Yeah. Your family. You should I don't Muslim, worship. You, know? you have you have renounced shirk. You should become a Muslim. <laughs> Oh, I'll, I'll try that <laughs> in say, my near just future. Say uh, <laughs> oh, I have said this. I used it. You know, I, it's it my habit okay. to say. Yeah, many times I use that. It is common for me. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you want, then I can even I can recite uh, Ayatul Kursi or uh, Surah Al-Fatiha. Yeah. That I have memorized. I, I, I can't say that I do not use that. Uh, it, it isn't so. I using. I, I'm using when and whenever I fall ill, I can use Vedic mantra or I can use. Uh, I use uh, 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 Quranic verses, uh, any uh, surah or uh, ayat. What is I your learn. What is your understanding of the term Almighty God? Uh, yeah, that, that that I am going to tell according to the uh, Rig Veda, uh, if you allow me. So can I uh, speak? Why Why don't you say it according to the Quran? Why Rig Veda? Uh, according to because I belong to Hindu faith. Yeah, but, but you also learn right. you also learn Islam, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Do you know if you were reading the Quran, where would you find the most uh, basic understanding of who Allah is? Uh, surah uh, Surah Al Ikhlas. Okay, can you read it, please? Ah yeah, uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kul hu Allahu had Allahu samad lam yalid walam yulad walam yukulahu kufuban na ahad. I think okay. there may be. Uh, what nice What does it mean? Do you know? Ah yeah, uh, God is one, and He has no uh, uh, partner, and uh, He is Ben Yaz. Uh, that uh, Allah is eternal. That everyone yeah. takes. Yeah. He has no. Everyone he, takes a refuge in Him. He has no begotten. Ah, and he, he has nothing like unto Him. So. Yeah. Isn't this beautiful? In in four statements, it it clearly tells you the basic understanding of God, which even a child will understand. Okay, now tell me the Rig Veda understanding. Uh, yeah, in, in the Rig Veda, uh, or, or also there in um, Yajur Veda also, but uh, I am telling you about the Rig Veda. Yad diava indrate shatam shatam bhumiru tasiu na tuva vajrita sahastram surya anuna jatmast rodasi. It means that. What's, what's the reference for that? Uh, 870. Rig Veda 8, hymn uh, uh, 70, verse number 5. Okay, go on. What does it mean? Uh, in uh, The meaning is in actually is uh, in Hindi, but I am trying to translate in English. Mm, yeah. So it is saying that, O oh Lord, even if the infinite uh, skies and infinite earths, 
um, and infinite suns are um, uh, can bring collectively together yet they will not uh, uh, they, they, they are nothing in comparison to you okay so this is uh, addressing indra uh, yeah so indra yeah okay so indra is not god. almighty god do you know that uh, actually uh, people think that mm, but uh, you know I, li I like it when when you actually quote the vedas but you don't translate it accordingly because when you are when this particular hymn is addressing only indra and he says indra were there a hundred heavens to compare with you or were there a hundred earths or oh, thunder this is another god yeah or is it the same one i think it's the same one yeah or oh, thunder not even a thousand suns would reveal you yes no created thing would fill you nor heaven and earth so you do understand this is not talking about almighty god this is only talking about indra who is actually a deva a devta uh, no, the, this is clarified by the uh, Rig Veda, uh, chapter 1, uh, verse number 1. Uh, it's a god of uh, rain on thunder, you know. It's it's kind of like Thor in the Greek uh, mythology. So he's not almighty god. Are you there, Haryom? You're, you're muted. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I am here. And uh, okay. that it is, clar uh, it is clarified that uh, Indra, Mitram, Varuno, these are the... Uh, yeah, they are so they are Dev, they are Dev, so Dev, 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 They are not Almighty God. They are not uh, Paramatma or even Ishwar. So give me something from your Vedas which describes Almighty God like the way it does in Surah Al Ikhlas, chapter one hundred and twelve of the Quran, which you read earlier. Um, it is uh, in the um, especially in the uh, Sveta Sutra Upanishad. Go on, read so, it. Give me the reference so I can I'll find out. Uh, yeah, you can find out in the fourth uh, section of it uh, from 8 to 19. Between the 8 no, to give me the exact but... reference. Upanishad what? Uh, Shweta Shweta Upanishad. Shweta Shweta Upanishad. Okay. So what does yeah, it say? Chapter 4, uh, chapter four verse number eight to, uh, 8 to 19 and chapter number 6, verse number 8 to 19. Shweta Upanishad, is it? What is it? Yeah. Sweta, uh, Sweta, 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 yes, yeah, S-H-W-E-T-A, yeah. Sweta. Yeah, I got uh, it, yeah. Yes. And what is the reference again? Uh, chapter 4, uh, go, go to the chapter 4 and from verse number 8 to 19 there are uh, Chapter 4, verse number what? Verse 19? Uh, uh, yeah, 8. Chapter 4, verse 8. Yeah, verse 8, 9, 10, 11. So I'm just seeing just that verse and uh, making it clear right now. Okay. Just, mm. Yeah, read it, read yeah, it. And yeah, it. yeah, because uh, I have suddenly came here and I wasn't prepared for it. Yeah, so it's okay. No problem. Look, to... that's mm. the reason I asked you to read from the Vedas is I wanted to compare it with the Quran. If it's as clear and succinct as, uh, as you know, elaborate at the same time, keeping it very short and to the point. So if it's if it's this is the beauty of the Quran. You know, you even though the Hindus have several different scriptures, thousands of them, it doesn't. This one book, the Quran, tells you something in a precise and concise way and very clear without being ambiguous about it okay uh anyway i think mm. i want to know what's your uh what's your what do you say view about the the demolition of the babri masjid or any religious places uh actually when the uh, demolition of any uh, religious uh, holy shrines uh, it, it's not good uh, in my point of view and also when I see uh, Athar Veda, uh, Prithvi Suktam of Athar Veda. Uh, so uh, if you open that Prithvi Suktam of Athar, Athar Veda 12145. What does it say? Uh, 
uh, it says um, just wait Samba, if you want to ask any questions, you're welcome, yeah? Yeah, sure. As he already said that he's against uh, idol worship and uh, building of yeah. temples, and he believes in uh, monotheism and worshiping in one God. So it's pretty clear. Well, I don't know if he believes in monotheism, but he believes in Indra, who I told him is not Almighty God. So it's, it's, it's still questionable, I would say. Right. Uh, don't yeah. worry about it, Hariom, if you can't find it. Uh, but uh, No, I, I have got I'm, oh, I'm you got it? Okay, uh, right. reading. Right, yeah. yeah. So it is uh, uh, about the, uh, the verse that I, I said about, uh, uh, um, what can I say, Atharveda, uh, about the people, what it says. So there is a verse, uh, it is said in Bara, in 12, 145, mm -hmm. uh, Janam Vibrati Bahudha Vivachasam Nana Dharamanam Prithvi Yath Kausam Sahastram Dhara Dravinasya Me Duham Dravena Dhenuran Dhenuran Pasfuranti May my motherland bearing folk speaking different languages, holding different religious views, religious people treating them all as resident of the same house. Uh, poor, uh, like a constant cow that never fails, a thousand streams of treasure to enrich me. So, this, when I read this, and when I read a uh, part from Mahabharata also, so it says that uh, in the Mahabharata Anuparva, so it is said, Brespati says, that man who practices the religion of universal compassion achieves his highest good, one should never do one should never do that to another which one regards as injurious to one's own self this in brief is the rule of righteousness okay so yeah i mean yeah. do you condemn the destruction of the babri mosque actually i condemn the destruction of uh, holy babri mosque and uh, it is not only condemnable and i think that it is it was uh, for me in, in my point of view when Vida says that uh, this Prithvi, this earth uh, is consisting of many different types of people, many different religions. So we should not uh, break the um, holy places of any uh, particular faith, people who okay. belong to that. Yeah, I think yeah. You, you're the first sensible Hindu who actually condemns it openly. I think there was another one earlier as well. But uh, really appreciate your participation. I think uh, we, we hope and pray there are more Hindus like you, you know, who are open, who are compassionate and who actually abide by the constitution of India, which is uh, where there's religious freedom and everyone should have the freedom to practice their own religion without any, um, uh, without, without any discrimination. So alhamdulillah for that. And I just pray that Allah gives you hidayah and uh, inshallah keep learning. You know, that's the best thing. Um, yeah, you're welcome again next time. We we'll have to take uh, the other guests who are waiting. Uh uh, okay and uh, uh, okay sir please. okay hurry back you take care okay so right uh, we got uh, Brahm Rakshas yeah Brahm Rakshas oh, that looks scary <laughs> hi Hashim how are you I'm good how are you doing you alright I'm awesome how's good. the day uh, busy busy yeah, it's uh, it's good. Yeah, by the way, your name Brahm Rakshas. What does it mean? I know Rakshas means demon. Yeah, he's uh, someone who knows what's good, but he doesn't do it. Matab doesn't perform good. Okay, so what's the difference he between has the knowledge a Rakshas? Of what's right and wrong. A Rakshas what's is somebody who's bad. No, no. What's the difference between a Rakshas and an Asur? Asur are uh, basically more like um, uh, manifestations, personifications of evil that exists in Prakriti, in the nature. And okay. Rakshasas were, used, um, were beings of uh, human-like beings who were bad. Uh, Human-like? Evil, really? yeah. evil beings. Evil, evil beings. beings. So yeah. are Asur always evil or they can be good as well? Mm, Asur, yes. Yeah, mother, you are Asuri. If you are a Rakshas and you can be a Rakshas from that uh, species and not be Asuri, for example, uh, who, who, that guy, Ravan, 
Ravana's brother, basically. He was not okay. Asuri, but he was a Rakshasa. Right. No, no, I'm asking, can an Asur be evil? Sorry, can he be good as well or just evil? No, Asuras are not good generally. Okay. Did the Asuras, no. uh, did the Asuras fight with the gods? Yeah, they did. Okay. Right. Uh, and the Rakshas can be good and bad, yeah? Yeah, they can be good and bad. Okay. So like your, your Rakshas are like the jinn. That, uh, no, we no, we are not stuff. at all like jinns. We are uh, pretty physical beings. No, what I meant is like they are good and bad. They are both. That's what uh, I meant. Yeah, kind of. Okay. Anyway, uh, you've been listening to the stream today? Mm, I've been listening to the last two discussions. Okay, good. Um, Samba, you got any questions for our Rakshas Bayer? No, just yeah. on the topic. I would yeah. like to stay on the to continue the topic that uh, Tatsat okay. was talking about. So the earlier guest, uh, I asked him, do the you topic, condemn the... the topic is, yeah, the topic is about the Ram Mandira. Yeah, yeah. So I asked him, do, do you, you condemn the demolition of uh, yeah. the Babri mm -hmm. Masjid? What would you say? See, I actually don't. But to so be honest. You, you do what? I don't condemn. You don't demolition condemn? Of, yeah, okay. Babri Masjid, because it has been proven in the, in the court that the mosque was built upon an already existing temple of Bhagwan Ram and it was demolished. So just Hindus just reclaimed it. And uh, okay. it's been, yeah. why, I mean, did I why did no Hindus claim it for thousands of years? Why did no one even mention this was a birthplace no, of Ram? No, no, no. The fight's been going on for 500 years. You can Sorry, check only 500 years, but how old is Ram? Sorry, when Ram was he? Is, when was Ram born? Ram is very old. How old? The struggle old? for the mandir has been going on. No, no, since how old? How old is Ram? If he was alive today, how old would he be? If I cannot give you an exact date, would that give me? Make give me an estimate. Give me a rough estimate. Thousand years, people, two thousand years, five thousand uh, years, seven thousand years. How many years? Yeah, some people believe him to be eight thousand yeah. years old. Okay, right. eight thousand years, no problem. Yeah. We will we will some take that estimate. So eight, it, from eight thousand years, mm -hmm. only in yes. the last five hundred years, they are making a claim to Ram Janmabhumi. Why? Whoever were, were the Hindus that, asleep until now? Because that is when it was demolished. Because that is when. Ram what do you mean Hindu when? No, no, no. Hold Hadith. on, hold on. According to the mm -hmm. Supreme Court, there was uh -huh. a there was a temple in that area, in uh -huh. the year sorry in the eleventh century. Uh -huh. Okay, whereas the. Uh -huh. The Babri Masjid was built in the 16th century. Mm -hmm. So there was a temple long before that in that place. So my no, question is, why did no one, why did, nobody, why did no one uh, lay a claim at huh? that spot huh? to be the Ram Janmabhumi before 500 years from today? Because that is when people got up, banded, and they decided to go against it. Destruction of temples to build a mosque. That's not the question. Right. That's not the question. So what's the what's the point actually? I just I didn't okay. understand you. Yeah. Let me rephrase the question. Yeah. Do you have it. any evidence in your scriptures uh -huh. where uh -huh. Ram was born exactly? The Janma Bhumi. Yes, that is what we have proven in the court. No, no. If it was proven in the court, what yes. is it from the scripture? Yes, it is from the scriptures. Okay, which it is scripture from is Ramayan. it from? Yeah, it which from part of Ramayan? Ramayan? Do you remember? Ramayana. Oh, yes, uh, just, just, just a minute. Just a minute. Mm -hmm. He did. He did. Okay. Ramrakshas. It's from Ramayan. Valmiki Ramayan. It's, it's being proven from Valmiki Ramayana. Valmiki Ramayan and Puranas. A okay, lot can of. Can you quote the reference, please? Reference from Valmiki Ramayana. Ramayan. Go on. I can Valmiki show Ramayana. you the. I can show you the article that uh, people have. Uh, Mother translated okay, the ahead. text. Go and ahead. It does the article the quote the reference from the Ramayan? Uh, yeah, it does. Okay, so give go, the reference then. Okay. References. Let's see the reference. Uh, till then, can we talk about uh, the Vedas and Moti Puja? The, uh, yeah, we will. We'll we'll no first, first, give the reference. Okay. Ram Janmo Bhumi from Valmiki Ramayana. Let's see. Shana and and by the way, it shouldn't Googling. just say Ayodhya. It should give the exact location. <laughs> oh, yeah, the exact location, actually. Okay. <laughs> Oh. In Ayodhya, Ram is already there from 2000 years. Kala Ram Mandir is there. Chige, done. No shoes. So, uh, before. So go ahead. So you this know, is a, you know the, an article from Times of India. It's a very well-known uh, newspaper. It uh, clearly states that there was a mandir. Uh, no, give us a Ram reference from, from the, the Ramayana. That's all we're interested in. 
uh, here, sir, is it not enough that there was a mandir which was uh, no, demolished to construct no, Babri Masjid? No. Why no, is because, it not? Because you said you have evidence from the scriptures, so that's what you need to show us. Uh, I did say that, but yes. there was a mandir substantiate that was your, demolished. Substantiate it from your scripture, then. Sir, I could very well. But uh, I've been needing some time to bring you the exact proofs. You can. But what brother, I brother, I'll, give you, I'll give you. Hold a minute. Hold a minute. Hold a minute. Hold a minute. Let me just okay. complete, please. I beg you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, is it not enough that there was a mandir which was demolished? There was a Hindu not mandir enough. which was demolished. Why you know, there was enough? a there was a Buddhist guy why? who came earlier. He said there was a Buddhist what? temple in the same place. Why? Why is well, that? Where can you give us the reference? Undemnable. Sorry, oh, brother, brother Ashish. Uh, sorry, brother Ashish. Yeah, Ramrakshas. Yeah, Ram Ram yeah. Ram. 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 you you have said that uh, you will be giving proof from Valmiki Ramayana. Yes, I would. Can be. I would be. I don't think he has any proof. It's just uh... no, 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 no. Sorry, it's a claim. Time tomorrow, just till tomorrow, right? But is it not? No, no. Enough? Why we will be waiting here. We will be waiting here. I'll give you. I'll give you some time. Listen, Ramrakshas, listen. I'll give you some time. You can be backstage. Hear me out. Listen to me. Maybe I'm just saying uh -huh. provide the okay, reference okay, okay. which you have okay, just okay. spoken two minutes before. Mm -hmm. If you don't have mm -hmm. right now, take some time, mm -hmm. be backstage, and we'll pull you up again once you get no, the no, 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 just right let me complete my statement before you put me backstage. Right, let me complete my sentence. Am I allowed to hash him? No, yeah, you put your statement only with the reference. That would be Are better. You, if you, oh, I'd, if be, you the, I'd be, if you provide the I'd be, the, I'd be showing you the reference for whatever I claim, right. Right okay. now, I'm claiming that I have proof that there was a mandir, and you are asking people to condemn that demolition of Babri Masjid. That was not your claim before. You said that it's, it's in Valmiki Ramayana. Can you substantiate your claim? Yes or no? Mandir. Okay, so Valmiki Ram, Ramayana, can Ram, you give a reference? Yes me, or no? Let me ask you this. You said, you said the court has proven that there was a temple there. Yes, have sir. you actually read the verdict of the court? Yes, sir. I have I have the article in front do you of know, Do you know what the there. verdict says? It says it was illegal for these car uh -huh. civics to demolish the uh, the masjid. Do you agree with the verdict? Uh, it says there was a Monday before. Uh, that wasn't uh, my was question. Are you listening or not? Yes, Did sir, you it just was. listen? The court, the court said that. The court said it was illegal for them mm -hmm. to demolish the mosque. Do you agree with the verdict of the Supreme Court of India? Say, yes, sir, it was illegal. Okay. If something is illegal in India, uh -huh. is mm -hmm. that punishable by law? People were punished. People were killed for demolishing Babri Masjid. No, I'm not talking about people. But what I'm asking is, I'm talking uh, about the leaders. People, people killed by the government. The leaders, like the leaders, like the leaders of BJP and VHP, were they mm -hmm. brought to justice? Because they knew why? they planned the whole thing. Why? You know, it why was a, it didn't happen have... in a vacuum. They, in uh -huh. fact, they planned the whole thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Shiv Sena wanted to demolish, you know, Al Kadwani, the mm -hmm. BJP leader at that time in mm -hmm. the 1990. He was the mm -hmm. first one to take a Rath Yatra and he wanted mm -hmm. to take the uh, the car savings to demolish the mosque. So dear okay, sir, but he you failed. Feel, he was, a, he a, was arrested a, in Bihar and he was so sent back, pardon, back pardon home. To you. Okay, so my... No, this is... Come so on. Do you he, share he, the same feeling? What, what feeling? That uh, people who demolish sacred places should be punished. Do you? Share if it's that against case? the law, then the, the the law should punish. The, the law was the law was not be, the law was not there five hundred years before. We are not talking about five hundred years ago. Practice. We are talking. So, uh, Sam, Matab, we are talking uh, about it was done then, before uh, five hundred years. He acknowledged, years back. He acknowledged that they did Does wrong. It like was it illegal. Direct. The yes, court gave the verdict. Legal. It was illegal. It is, but no one was brought to justice. None of the leaders. It is illegal according to the law, bro. I'm accepting it. So why right? Why were none of the leaders brought to justice? Is it bad? It just shows the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court of India is not just. Because no, if it, it was, just, if it considered the activity of the car but savers to be illegal, then it should have brought the leaders of the car savers, right. the BJP, the VHP, all these people, they should have actually been punished by law. Because if something okay. is illegal, it has to be punished by law, as you agreed. Okay. But none of them were brought to justice. But sir, you are asking people to condemn uh, the leaders who demolished Babri Masjid. And no, not just not condemn. Saying anything no, about no, no, Babar. not just condemn. Killed. But I'm who saying the court should arrest them. The mandira. I'm saying the court should arrest them. But are you willing to condemn who those who destroy sacred places? If it's look, if it's against the law, then I'll condemn it. Yeah. For example, in the time, in marrying, the time of marrying, marrying, marrying wait, wait, sorry, don't change I'm the so topic. Sorry, I know you guys like it is about topics. the law. If it is wait, about wait the law, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not telling you to change the topic 
because you guys do this every time you're cornered no, yeah, I'm not going to do it I'm going yes, to do it so during the time of Babur let me ask you this during the time uh, of Babur what was the what was the law what was the law he did wrong he killed people he killed people to demolish the mandira constructing well, so mosques so did the car savaks gay... so, so did the car savaks <laughs> so sir it is bad according to the law of the islam as well he constructed the mosque no, for a no, gay no, no. Gay i'm gay saying lover. look look i'm saying about what about that i'm, I'm talking about the planned destruction in a democracy there's a Sharia difference between there's a difference between an emperor like like babur okay mm-hmm. who has his own law you know that do you know what is um, aristocracy okay yeah, now when yeah. he was an aristocrat the he is the law he's above the law in fact okay mm-hmm. so he can do whatever he wants he can command whomever he wants he can do now in a democracy mm-hmm. is a different system do you not understand when india mm-hmm. declared by its constitution is it a secular country or a hindu country so it's a secular country okay in a secular country does everyone have the same right to worship mm-hmm. and uh, you know to to go about uh, believing uh, the, the, sorry with the freedom of religion mm-hmm. they do right so why did Because, uh, why uh, did, repeat, repeat, did repeat, in please. 1949 why did they stop the muslims mm-hmm. from praying in the babri masjid when the hindus put the idol in the mosque which was also illegal according to the court they did not stop uh, muslims from praying in yeah, the mosque they just in 1949 but, when the when the statue well, was put in there would you please let me speak and answer would you just court, answer your question put a lock on the masjid they can't so pray let muslims me let me anymore. let me hear me out there was yeah, this thing no. called vivadat dhacha as you answer the question right. and not change yes, the I'm answering it just yes, yeah, i'm answering right. it matlab there was this portion which was known as vivadit dhacha where the where the idols were found that no, no, no. portion the was the idols locked. were put inside the masjid which was off limits for the hindus yes this so was that the part report. that part was uh, matlab considered that portion that vivadit dhacha area was that uh, portion is the masjid yeah locked no that portion is not the masjid bro you what's wrong know. with you man this guy doesn't know even the simple basic <laughs> thing about the history of this thing ram rajas anyways anyways tell okay, your team I've to got, pull up the I've reference got, of ram varmiki ramayana i've got the i've got the i've got the i've got the reference yeah, yeah, ram rajas ram rajas just a minute yeah okay yeah, just just references. a minute ram rajas one, once again once again once again uh, i i know that you you have a backup uh, with your team so tell you please tell message your no, team to pull up the varmiki ramayana reference one on one so i have it in front could you please share this okay screen? code me the reference so please share the screen i'm sharing the screen is I it is it a reference to the valmiki ramayan yes uh valmiki ramayan and skanda puran was is valmiki it the puran ramayana or is it the valmiki ramayan yeah. valmiki ramayan and skanda puran okay okay give give the reference i'm just was, checking here no no that's fine google translate why did you go to google translate are i'm not google translating bro could you please just share the screen thanks that is hindi yeah that is hindi actually uh, because it is from a hindi newspaper english. hindi newspaper Ch- change it to english okay. what is a paper which paper is this news nation google it that's not a major newspaper ha <laughs> ayodhya verdict how valmiki ramayana skand puran gave proof of ram janmabhoomi that's the article mm-hmm. let's see the and, reference uh, for valmiki ramayana yeah neither lay <laughs> why are you laughing bro So the yeah, talk was further said that shlokas and Valmiki Rama refer to the birth of birth of Lord Rama Which and shlok? planetary situations at Ayodhya. There's no reference given, <laughs> bro. It's <laughs> a newspaper. Yeah, I know. So what? Hold on, hold on. This is and not even is a major quoting, newspaper. Uh, it is quoting the quote word. Where is the reference? Matter. Give us. You said you were going to give us a reference, and you lied. The paper is a reference. Oh, oh, oh! Hold a minute, hold a minute. I told you that I'd be giving the article which says. that you court said, said that they have got the proof the from the valmiki said, ramayana yes, and yes, the skanda yes. purana where which reference give us the reference number so, you know uh, what it says i can actually now, read now it here know, it says according to the top court <laughs> shlok 10 <laughs> of valmiki ramayana stated that kaushalya gave birth to a son who was the uh-huh. lord of the whole world and ayodhya was blessed there's no reference to the janmabhoomi okay. <laughs> oh man you're a joke keep reading should, keep reading should retire reading. your channel you know Oh, bro, <laughs> keep reading. Please keep reading. Go ahead. Why didn't you give us give a reference? reference? I've asked you so At many times. You give the reference. Give us a reference. There is no reference, right? Somebody read it and he brought it after that. But that had been oh, the, brought oh, in front of the court. Oh, bro, come on, please mind it. 
Oh, he ran ran away. No, Good. no, no. Actually, I removed the article, and by mistake, I removed Brahm. So, if you're listening, Brahm, come back. It wasn't intentional. I wanted to remove the article. That's all. Okay. Um, shall we bring somebody else in while we while he's waiting? So, uh, the Muslims can join in now. Inshallah, I know you guys have been very patient. Uh, if there is space in the back studio, uh, we are going to bring in the Muslims. Inshallah. Right, uh, Jai Shri Ram. Are you there? Jai Shri Ram. Hello there. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm awesome. So Where your you question is, your question was that should we have built a Ram Mandir there or not? Am I correct? No, our question was to give us evidence that Ram was born exactly at the location where the Babri Masjid was situated and oh, so that, demolished. Uh, if you ask me for evidence, I don't have an evidence. Okay, so why did you come on the stream? I thought you said you were asking that if Ram Mandir should be built there or not. Okay. Do you think it should be built there? I mean, before that, do you believe? Absolutely. Do you believe that the destruction of the mosque was illegal? Destruction? No. Well, that is I what the Supreme it. Court said. It. The Supreme Court actually said it is illegal, and whatever the car sevak did was illegal. So either you so are against the Supreme the, Court, or you are you are with the Supreme Court. Which one is it? Uh I haven't read in a way that you reading it that it was illegal. So yeah, I might have read the Supreme Court verdict, you know, to to but destroy Supreme any Court place did, of worship. The verdict that Ram Mandir should get built there, no, right? You're, you're jumping the gun. I'm saying before that. No, no. The but Supreme Court. If that? You, so, so, same if Supreme Court with two verdicts. If you're going to accept one verdict of the Supreme Court, why are you rejecting the other one which goes against you? So Supreme Court gave two verdicts. One yes. saying you cannot break the Uh, yeah. Mask and another saying you can build the temple. No, so why are you said, taking the one? It said the breaking of the sorry the demolition of the mosque was an illegal activity by these car sevaks. Do you accept that verdict of the Supreme Court or do you reject it? Uh, if it if it, if it was broken yeah. illegally, yes, I will take it. Yes, it was illegal. Then I will take it illegally. I think the Supreme Court mm -hmm. when it gives its verdict. as illegal mm -hmm. it knows it knows that it is illegal based on the law what is do you think india is a hindu nation or is it a secular nation hindu it should be hindu nation i didn't ask it, you it should be i'm asking mm -hmm. you based on the current constitution is it a secular country or a hindu country current constitution secular okay. but when it was separated when the constitution was built it was not secular it was it was british the, the division the division division happened based on It's religion it was it was under One, the british no religion uh, the division happened based on the religion if a division what division what are you on about between between I'm india and pakistan that, no no india got independence from the british not from the pakistan agreed but in so so is the pakistan that but time it was in india you, so, i didn't so ask you india. for independence no. from uh, india. Anyway, india. all i'm saying india. is that india. according to the current constitution Do you uh, do you respect the constitution or you don't? No, I don't. The current constitution is not given by Indians. It was given by British. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I do not. You can laugh as much as you want. Where just because something, why, why, why just the because of, something exists doesn't make it right. Okay. Okay. How, why, why, do you, by the way? why do you think? Why do you think so many Hindus are being being wake up and realizing that this constitution must be changed? This constitution Change was. Up? Say again. Drafted, do you know who drafted the Constitution of India? I know who drafted, but who this Constitution no, was who drafted. Let's from... see if you know who okay, drafted but... the Constitution of India. Which British, care. which British uh, person drafted it? Because you said it's by the I British, so you should you should give me a. British I don't know. I, I don't know which British person. Uh, so you are ignorant uh, and you're making claims. But yes, you can say that I'm making claims. I'm not ignorant, but I'm making claims. No, but when I you're ignorant, you shouldn't be making claims. No, I, I'm not ignorant. I'm not ignorant about a lot of things. I'm not ignorant about Quran. I'm not ignorant about 
uh, no, no, I didn't what ask you in India. You okay, uh, what you, happened in you, India? I, I, lived in India. I don't live in India anymore, but I lived in Ram, India. Ram, so Ram, I have seen. Hold on. I have I didn't seen say you're everything ignorant about on everything. ground Listen, level. Calm down, calm down, man. I didn't say ignorant about everything. No, but you guys are talking to me. I said you're time. ignorant Take about one. the constitution, which you said was done by the British. Yes. It wasn't drafted by the British. It was drafted by the Hindus of India. Okay? So when Jawaharlal Nehru was the prime minister uh, at that time, and even before that, you know, I think it was... Um, um, Ambedkar. No, it no, wasn't Ambedkar. Ambedkar. Ambedkar was one of the persons, but actually there were other people who actually right. drafted right. it. But the important thing is this, they were all Hindus and not British. So please acknowledge that you're ignorant about the history of India and its constitution. Those Hindus the, who, whose hands were tied behind their back. Why? Who tied Those it? Hindus, their who hands tied, their tied hands? behind the back. Who tied the, their the, hands? Jawaharlal Nehru, Mahatma Gandhi. They were Hindus. Jawaharlal Nehru, who Jinnah, all. Okay, so, so you're saying you're saying the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi. Who calls him father? You calling him father? He's not father of the nation. No, no, I'm saying Indian. You're calling him father. He's not father okay. of the nation. Do you do you use Indian currency? India. Wait, wait, wait. That again? Sam. Jay, do you use yeah. Indian currency? No, I don't. So what what currency do you use when you go to US India? dollars? US no, dollars. When you go to India, what currency do you use? I use my credit cards. Huh? I don't have currency. I I use my credit cards. Everyone doesn't accept credit cards in India. Yeah. So what do you use when they don't? Everyone when does don't nowadays. The credit cards, what do you use? Okay, even if you want me to Answer say it, okay, Indian currency. What do you use? Indian currency. You know why I'm Indian asking currency. you about the currency? Indian because, currency. Yeah, of course, Indian currency. Okay. Why does why does every Indian government office, including Modi mm -hmm. and Amit, Amit Shah, they mm -hmm. have a picture of Gandhi in their office? Who tied Sir? their hands? <laughs> Who tied their hands? That's why things are changing. Who's that's changing? why you guys are waking yeah. up. That's why the, the government years, is being built. That's why the government is being built. The picture has been there in the Indian government offices. You know, you just said it. India is a secular country. In order to change it, you have to live with the same people. They are going to make the changes to constitution. They are going to make changes to your currency you're talking about with the Gandhi picture. It'll be gone soon enough. Mm -hmm. They will start. They start changing the history. In 75 years, what's happening? Because they were not there in 75 years. He just came in 2014. And from 2014, everybody's ass is on fire. I want to ask, ask, ask a question, uh, um, Jay. Yes, when, when India becomes a Hindu nation, when it becomes a Hindu nation, you change the constitution. What are you going to do with the Muslims? Are you going to do something? Yeah. With, with 200 them? million Muslims. What are you going to do? No. What if, are you going to do? If you follow your faith peacefully, Peacefully is the word. Everyone is welcome, just like America. Everyone is welcome. Everybody is. Why? Why are you in America, by the way? Why? Do you have a Do you have an American passport? Yes, I do. So you're not an Indian. No, I'm not. Okay, get out of here then. Stop. Why? Stop why should I get out of here? The, the Constitution of India. If you can't respect it, get out of here. You know, these are the kind of patriots we have today, who have American passports and they're going against the Constitution of India. No wonder even the Americans don't respect him, I bet. We have uh, Brahma Rakesh, Rakesh uh, back oh, again. Back? Okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Brahma Rakesh, I didn't do it deliberately. I wanted to get uh, to actually really remove, to remove the article. It. Uh, yeah, it was an intentional. Yeah. Where were Brahma we, Rakesh, uh, just one, one quick question. Uh -huh. Are you running your stream simultaneously, this stream on your mm. channel right now? No, I'm not simultaneously, but I'd be reviewing it. Is that okay with you? He's just copying I the stream and he's be, running on his own no, channel. I will be reviewing this stream, but I'm not running it right now. Were you running it before? Yes. Were no, you running before? Backstage. Yeah, before. Okay. Did you ask you know, everyone, everyone who wants to put our videos on their channel needs our permission. So if you're doing it without permission, it's an adharma. And I hope you don't get uh, the karma doesn't bite you for that. The copyright karma, right? Well, okay. it's karma, copyright or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you do when you do oh, something against uh, without mm -hmm. asking for permission, do you not consider that to be adharma? No, no, I get your point. True, that is not an issue. So it's it's not it's not moral anyway. It's not uh, something that you should do. I mean, ask our permission at our discretion. Mm -hmm. We might give you permission or not. Uh, anyway, where were we uh, earlier? When yeah, uh, okay, I'm asking. He for was showing us the reference of uh, Valmiki Ramayana. Yeah, yeah. The yeah did you get it? Yes, I got it. Okay, what's so, the, the reference? 
Yes. Uh, so the first reference that was given to the court was uh, this. Uh, can you can you copy and paste the reference in the in the in the private chat? So uh, the reference number or the whole Sanskrit shloka? Well, give us reference a link. Number. You know where, where we can read this. Uh, See, so uh, this is the first this shloka text from the scripture. In, okay, so this is in Balkan. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you what. Why text. don't you post? Listen, why don't you post mm -hmm. a link in the private chat? Uh, until then, I'm going to bring in a few other people because we have already gone nearly five hours, and I want to. Make sure okay, that no, uh, we finish the list. So it is a uh, uh, Sam Sloan. You can uh, just uh, look it up. It no, no, you a... you post the link in the private chat. That's what I said. Okay, okay, so nice. If you got the reference, post the link for us to check the mm -hmm. reference, uh, at least in with the English translation. So am I not am I not allowed to share the screen? It's the same thing, right? Okay, take because it, last yeah. time you tried it and we didn't have the reference there. Okay, take it. this time can. Okay, so this time make sure the reference is there. Yeah, Otherwise, right. I'll have to remove you because you keep saying you have the reference and you don't actually. Yes, sir, please check the reference. Okay. Are you certain the reference is there? By yes, the way, what sir. was the question we asked you? Do you remember? So, from the books, you want the references that there was this Ram Janma Bhumi. The exact location exactly. of Ram Janma Bhumi. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, which part of this? says mm -hmm. the exact location of Ram Janmabhumi. So this, uh, this shlok is from the Ramayana and this shlok that I'm going to give you is from a Purana. That's a 6th century Purana. No, no, before mm -hmm. you go to Purana, the reference you gave mm -hmm. me, does it have the reference, the exact location or not? Mm, yes, sir. It is supposed to have... Not supposed to, man. Come on. I thought you checked it before you gave it to us. It just tells you about the auspicious science. Nothing yeah, let me, let me let me let me let me just uh, share the whole uh, whole set okay. of references with you. Just a moment, and there you'd be getting the uh, English translations as well, and you can check them out. Uh, please okay. uh, do share them on the screen. Yeah, I, I mean the first one you gave doesn't have the reference. Okay, this is Sanatan Prabhat, and these are the shlokas that were presented in front of the court. So this is not Valmiki Ramayana, yeah? No, it contains the references from the Valmiki Ramayana as well. Go ahead. Okay, so open it. what is the reference from Valmiki Ramayana? So it is, uh, the first look is from the Balkan proving that the mandir was in Ayodhya. The other reference Balkan is from the Quran. Can you give the complete reference? No, but so just saying chapter? Ayodhya doesn't mean the exact Straight reference. On the screen. Which, which chapter? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Bilkul, all the uh, Sanskrit shlokas are mentioned in the website. Balkan, chapter number? The no, no, I'm, I'm actually, number? brother, I'm actually looking at the reference he gave. None of them tell you the exact location. Just saying right. Ayodhya is not enough. Sir, in Ayodhya, already Ram, Ram is already there. Okay, Ram it, oh, shoot, uh, please uh, listen me out. It mentions the city and the Skanda Purana mentions the exact location. Okay, it so says here, the, it says here to the northeast to... of that spot is the birthplace of Sri Ram. Now, how do you know northeast is like a huge location? Okay, it doesn't because give you the exact location, exact does it? Mandira. Sorry? To... North -host, uh, northeast of which is Ram Janmabhumi, we have that location still there. Yeah, but northeast is a huge location. It's not just a s exact spot. So could you please share the screen so I can better explain to the public what we I are I think seeing. you can read it. It's in front of you. So read it. So what part are you reading? I'm the reading. I'm reading I thought you, all, you knew really which part. Brother, I'm, first of all, I'm really interested in reading Valmiki Ramana reference. Very much so curious. Ramana uh, Valmiki Ramana clearly says that the Ram Janam Bhumi is in Ayodhya. The yeah, Skanda Ayodhya, Ayodhya, Ayodhya already location. is there. Kala Ram Mandir is already there from 2000 Aap years. Exact location you're getting from Skanda Purana. What's the issue in that? No. Where, where is it? Where is the reference? I'm asking you. you said... Give me the exact reference of Skanda Purana. Sir, I'm giving you the exact reference. and uh, Otherwise, it's a waste of time. You know? to open, sir. It's a waste of time otherwise. Okay, take a yeah. look. Siskan Purana clearly says that to the northeast of the spot of birthplace of Sri Ram. How is northeast the exact spot? Do you not understand geography? Sir, if I, I tell you, if I tell you that there is actually a treasure buried in the northeast of mm -hmm. uh, Ayodhya, for example, which northeast location would you go and pinpoint? Okay, so then read the second line. It is said that the birthplace is situated to the east of. Vigneshwara and the north of Vashishta and the Even west then, of Lomasa. 
even then if you According go to the, to the northeast and all this place it will not give you the exact location the only way you can get an exact location is if you have the north the longitude and the latitude of that area please you won't get an exact shuka. location otherwise Sir, if you or, or there is some the or there is some permanent structure there which says okay next to this or something like that exactly exactly what? ramjan bhumi is in north north of what uh, let me let me just repeat it right is in a east of Vigneshwara, north of Vashishta, and west of Laumasa. Yeah, it's not but even it, then you won't get the exact location. It, it covers so it covers maybe like getting, 20 kilometers. You get, you're getting no, everything. No, it covers you're more than everything that it surrounds, <laughs> right? <laughs> Can you everything <laughs> Brahmachas, Brahmachas, huh. at least give yeah, the man. reference of uh, from the Skanda Purana reference number? But it is from the Skanda Purana. You can Google it, right? I mean, <laughs> no reference. Just... Okay. There is no reference. reference to... Yeah, there is no reference. He's, he's right, actually. There is no reference okay. of Skanda Purana as well. Please, please share the screen. I'm showing it. Uh, no, just but you said you wasted number. our time already Skanda last Purana? time. You said you have the reference, but you didn't actually have it. So, you know, I'd be showing it in my stream. I'd be showing it to everybody. No, no, you can you can show what it, I but if you don't it. have the reference, what's the what's the point? So what's the problem? Why are you not bringing it on the screen? Because you don't have the it, reference. It That's the, what we asked for. The shloka. You just want you just want the shloka. Brahm, number? Brahm Rachis. Brahm Rachis. You want the reference, man. That's what we asked for. How difficult just, is that? Just ten seconds. I'll give you the uh, reference number. Just Skanda ten. Purana, book number, chapter number, verse he number. Have the reference. Can you please just the reference. Abhi it then. No worries. Okay. No. That's what you. you that's what you said numbers. earlier as well. No worries. I'll give you the reference. Still no reference. But you're not opening it, bro. Bro, At what's the point it. of opening At it when there's no it. reference in there? Uh, uh -huh. there see, is no Skanda Puran Khand Do Vaishnav Khand Ayodhya Mahatma Adhyay Das. Read it out, please. Okay. okay. Just type it in the uh, private chat. You know, when you say north of something and, and northeast of something, you'll never yes, get the exact location. Huh, you get that. You'd be knowing everything. What is uh, north of it? What it? Uh, what is west of it? What is east yes, of it? Yes, because it covers a huge exactly. area. That's the reason. So that's, that's the reason. Not it covers a huge area. area. Why are you and and you know, look, one, you know why, I know, why I know for a fact that this cannot be the exact location? Because for 5,000 to 6,000 years, the Hindus had no idea where the location was. Only after oh, only 500 yeah. years ago, always, they started saying, always, Oh, we want always, this as a location. Ram Janam Bhumi, KK Muhammad, a Mumin, a Muslim proved that it was the Ram Janam Bhumi and the worship Muslim, as this such. one man. So, if I if a one that, Hindu says Muslim, the opposite of that, will you believe that? that? Muslim is not just anybody, he is the if a, if, if, he's if, if the a Hindu, the if a Hindu he's not the head of the archaeology. Hindu, no, he's not. Listen. Professor Lal was the head, he was ah, working he, under him. Just so Google that means he had, he had no jurisdiction at that time if they came and planted some evidence over there. He is an archaeologist who he who I, no, I'm not denying is I'm not denying this was called Ram Janmabhumi, bro. No, that's, Ram Janmabhumi. So let me get let me get this right. Place if if another archaeologist, if another archaeologist says that this is not the Ram Janmabhumi and this is a Hindu, would you believe him? I'd be needing to show him the evidence. Uh, would you believe uh, it? No, you wouldn't. But he showed the evidence, bro. It goes against your agenda. No, he. Okay, Brahmachas, Brahmachas, do one thing. Brahmachas, do one thing. Give me the so, Skanda Purana reference Skanda very slowly. Puranam. See, okay, so very mm -hmm. slowly. Skanda Puranam. Yes, no, no. Tell him to copy it in the private chat. Right, Why are you wasting right. our right. time? Cop copy copy the reference the, in the private chat. That's all we need, man. No issues, no issues, no issues, Type it in no the problem. private private chat, brother. That will be easy. See. That's not a reference. That's a wiki source. That is not what I'm pasting. Uh, it is somebody else. Oh, that was Mansur. Okay. Version of Khand. Adhyay 20. Yeah, let me just give you the exact shloka. Just a moment, please. It's 10. Just a minute. Hmm. No, no, that's the uh, skand, right? Uh, give me the, the okay. Give me the, the uh, okay. Give me, give me the uh, give me the uh, verse number. Uh, it is uh, 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 19, uh, 18 and nineteen. Go ahead. Check 18 it out. Eighteen and nineteen. Okay. 
the northeast of that spot in the place of birth of ram this holy spot of birth is it is said the means of achieving salvation etc it is said that the place of birth is situated to the east of vigneshwara to the north of vashistha and to the west of lomasa yahan kahan bata raha exact location bhai and exactly. vigneshwara vashistha are the temples between which ram janmabhumi is located Google, Google, करलो, Google करके बताओ। Why didn't you, why didn't you draw a map of those places and then tell us if we can find the exact location? हाँ, that is what was shown to the court on the basis of which the court gave its verdict. Okay, so, so let me, let me ask. Location of Babri Masjid. No, no, I don't think the court would decide based on belief. The court doesn't look at your books because I think the books can say anything. Based on the facts that was written in the Puranas. No, no, it's not a fact. Purana. You don't even know the earliest manuscript of that Purana. These are the shloka, shlokas that were presented to the court. And okay, how can you prove that Purana is something that is credible and not like Manusmriti? Bro, you asked for the references. I gave you the references. I gave you the article. Yeah, but the references doesn't complete. give the exact spot. How many times I told you? So hear me out. Hear me it out. It gives you a rough out. estimate of something. Are all the temples that are still present, not okay. destroyed by Babylon? Why didn't you? Why didn't you find out? Present. it is for, because you are providing this uh, reference why didn't you find out the exact location based on that uh, shloka have so you we done the research knew, yourself we always knew that is the that that was the ram janma bhumi always and that is how it was when was the first when was the first uh, demand of ram janma bhumi could you please tell me what was the name of the mandira that baba destroyed to build a mosque for his gay partner What was it called then? Irrelevant. Now you're disrespecting. Now you're, now you're losing your temper and disrespecting. No, I don't need to lose my temper. I'm still Anybody smiling. Look, I'm not losing my temper. You're the one raising your voice. Okay, you're you're acting like a rakshas now. So calm down. <laughs> I'm just asking you if you're saying that it was not Ram Janma Bhumi. Could you please tell me what was the mandir that Baba destroyed to build Baba, a mosque? Baba, Baba, Baba during his aristocracy, he. can do what he wants it is not a democracy okay, i'm not saying you don't understand wrong the or, difference between the two wrong or right what i'm saying is if that was not ramajan bhumi that is what archaeologists say and yeah. the puranas say by the way the you know the supreme, out, the supreme the supreme court Ashim, the please, supreme court never out. said this is the exact location of ram janma bhumi the verdict did not say that so the verdict the need, verdict only I... the verdict only said that there was an existing temple here they didn't know what temple it was and that mm. the temple actually has been dated to the 11th century mm. when was the babri masjid built in the 16th century so you got like 5 4 to 5 centuries of a gap okay. when baba didn't even exist uh, baba didn't destroy it right so what no, no, i'm saying baba did not that, that, that so, temple which existed there it what? doesn't mean that this was destroyed by baba it just existed there at that okay, in the 11th century like, uh, because it was dated I, to be from the 11th century I so the question you... the question arises baba uh, did not exist in 11th century that's a different question who actually also, destroyed uh, it right you just said that the court didn't say that it was at the exact place of ram janma bhumi what yeah, if i did show not you say that. that the court so did the say that it is the exact place of ram janma bhumi what based you, on what, what based on what i'd give you the article on the verdict i just showed vigneshwara, you vigneshwara 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 do you consider vigneshwara as a temple coming back to the point hashim rakshas 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 in skanda purana in skanda purana they are, hmm. in skanda purana vigneshwara is written right so vigneshwara ah. is a temple so what is vigneshwara i am asking you so what is it if is it's it not a temple? mandir if it's not a mandir of lord ganesha what is it then vigneshwara Huh. Vigneshwara this name this the name with this temple doesn't exist in Ayodhya Vigneshwara is it is it is it a city or what what is it then you tell you say temple so i am telling with this name the temple doesn't exist in Ayodhya Vigneshwara you said it's a temple right Vigneshwara temple doesn't exist in uh, Ayodhya right yeah with this name Okay anyway let's uh, let I want you to ask you one more question while you're here is uh, that okay uh-huh. uh ahead. do you do you believe in idol worship I do you do do you believe mm-hmm. ram existed I do do you have evidence for that 
see Hashim, right? Uh, do you need matlab, to worship somebody? Do I need to prove its existence first? Is that what you're saying? No, because Ram is not Ram is not Almighty God, right? But I'm worshiping him. Do yeah, I, I know you to, worship uh, him, but I'm asking I... you if you're worshiping a human hmm. as God, then hmm. for a human at least you need some evidence for your worship. What do you understand by Bhagavana? Not What's your Almighty understanding God. Of it? They yeah. were like not, almighty not Almighty God, right? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, you shouldn't be comparing him to, him to Brahma, right? He was just. I didn't compare Bhasana. him to. I know the difference between Avatar and Brahman. So, so he's an Avatar. There's no need right? for the basic uh, basics to be discussed. If you if you know the difference, exactly. then so you understand am, it. So my question, am, my question oh, to you is this, okay? By the way, I just noticed Sister Swati is in the back chat. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> That's a surprise. <laughs> nah, Hashim, go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a simple question. Look, if you ask us for evidence of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we have got mm -hmm. lots of evidence for that. And I mean, archaeological evidence as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you ask me for evidence for, say, Musa alayhi salam or Ibrahim alayhi salam, I will not have evidence for that. But for exactly. me, the connection, for me, the connection is Musa alayhi salam. Sorry, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because mm -hmm. he, he is a prophet and he represents, he, he communicates directly to God Almighty. And God mm -hmm. Almighty can give him that knowledge about the previous prophets, which he can confirm. And what if I how... tell you that he did not communicate to God Almighty? Would you be able to challenge me on that? No, no, that's existence. Look, right now. Existence. I'm explaining to you why I believe that someone like Ram, he is a human. And if you that is why I'm believe... challenging the fact that he did not uh, communicate to God. He did not communicate. Who, Ram? Neither, neither did, neither did Muhammad Sahab. Would you be able to answer me on that? Just a second. I just. Uh, Aslam, Why are you changing the topic? Wa alaikum salam. Nice to see you, sister. After long time. Yeah, I know. Uh, after, Glad to be here. I just wanted to ask something. After all yeah, the shlokas, we move to a new point. Uh, Am I allowed yeah, to ask? The guest who's here. Can Sorry, I think. Look, sister Swati has come after a long time. Uh, I would want to hear from her if you don't mind. Yeah, I just wanted oh, no, to she, ask. No, she, the guest is here. Brahmarakshas, you were saying that he's Bhagawan, right? And there's a difference between Bhagawan and uh, the Almighty God, right? Yes, he's not the Brahman, yeah? He's, he's not Brahman. the Brahman. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to... Yeah, I'm talking about Brahman. I'm not talking about Brahma. Brahma, Brahma, Brahma. Yeah, yeah. So it's written N in English when it's written. It's written N at the end of the eight. So yeah, Brahma. Yeah. So I just wanted mm -hmm. to ask out of curiosity, since you know much about Hinduism and you have a channel and you, you know talk about it. So mm -hmm. why why is it, you know, all this violence and you see, you know, within the uh, country, you're seeing so much of UN cry, so much flair, which is there with regard to this lot of animosity. I beg you. Yeah. Understand the context, please, because it's it's an issue which is very close to everybody's heart, including yours. So I just want to ask, mm -hmm. with all this UN cry and all the violence which is inflicted with all this, and he's mm -hmm. not even the Almighty. So as mm -hmm. Brother Hashim has been asking, wh what you know, which text? And since you say Vedas are the uh, uppermost, the superior ones, right. the Shrutis. Mm -hmm. So what gives that authentication? What gives that permission? to build that for a human uh, who is a Bhagawan, revered one, definitely. People, you know, mm -hmm. sort of rever him. But when mm -hmm. you see so much violence being created, then why can't it be sort of, you know, shut down in terms of why not let it go? When it's killing people, when people are having mm -hmm. hatred and communal violence over it, then why can't it mm -hmm. be let, why can't we let go of it? Because dharma, as you see, the very first mm -hmm. principle of dharma is non-violence. And it says, that you know, so, parmo dharma. Ha, so this letting it go, clean. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm getting your point, right? I just put it again. So if he's a good guy, and uh, for the dharma, you should have let it uh, go. So that is the point. Uh, so as to avoid all the communal violence and everything, is yeah. that your point? Yes, because that, Ma'am, I don't uh, think that's what that's what Brahman Brahman Brahma would also say. You know, teach to the to Brahma the doesn't say there. he's a karta. That's actually the, the question would be: there. Would Ram give you the permission to destroy a place of worship like like the Babri Masjid? Yes. So forget about you, Ram. Forget yeah. about Ram. Tell me with with will this ideal? dharm will this dharm mm. will this dharm mm. allow this kind of violence in the name of somebody who you rever so much? 
मैं देखिए द प्रॉब्लम इज लाइक द गाय हु डिड दैट टू हिंदू आफ्टर किलिंग द मैन बिल्ड डिमोलिशिंग द मंदिर एंड बिल्डिंग ए मस्जिद ऑन इट राइट देन फॉर धर्मा फॉर नॉट बींग वायलेंट टिल वेन अहिंसा पर मुधर्म इट कैन चेंज द हार्ट्स ऑफ पीपल बट इन सोशल धर्म इन का तथा है बच्चा या बट व्हाई नॉट परस्यू दैट फर्स्ट एंड सी हां व्हेन यू आर फेस्ड विद अ धर्मा वायलेंस इज जस्टिफाइड धर्म इन का तथा है एंड व्हाट विल यू कॉल अ धर्मा व्हाट विल यू कॉल अ धर्मा हाउ विल यू डिफाइन धर्म एंड अ धर्मा बेस्ड ऑन coming yes. to a place conquering their territory killing them for their belief system and demolishing their place of worship this particular you mean like the car seven yeah? just like the car seven no this demolishing this demolishing no, their no, no. well the demolition which... and building building a mosque on their place. where are you getting this definition so from of partner. dharma where are you getting this definition of dharma and adharma from uh, manusmriti ved also oh, now we like believe in the manusmriti Uh, for the definition of dharma you can go to there <laughs> but we can't use scriptures for you can choose what you want isn't it when it comes to it caste system no manusmriti okay. when it comes okay, to definition ask. okay manusmriti no but i yeah, totally me believe a, in vishuddha manusmriti let me ask a simple question yeah sure let me ask a simple question ram rakshas let's get to the mm-hmm. point straight do you go believe uh, ram to be god and he deserve worship i, I will worship i believe just a simple question i ask and you guys are running I'm so sorry. No, we are on the word. question. We are on the what issue. What I said, which is so what I claimed, what I claimed okay. is that mm-hmm. Rasulullah or the Moses no, did not. Uh, no, no, I'm asking. Uh, no, I'm asking a simple question. Do you, do you believe in idol worship? You're changing the. Do you believe in idol worship? It's not about Islam today. Come on. Uh, at least do you believe in idol worship? At least understand the difference between the two. Ram Rakhis. Ram Rakhis. Simple question. When we have Q&A, you can come and talk about it. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Ram Rakhis. Simple question. You promising me that? Yeah, I never said no. Take a bro, you. Yeah, awesome. Ram Rakhis. Yeah. yeah, simple question. Do you do you do you believe in idol worship? Yes, I do. Do you believe in Satyat Prakash, Dhanan Saraswati? I respect it, but I don't. I'm not Vedanti. You don't believe. I'm not Vedanti. Yes, sir. You don't believe. What what I are you? In, I'm not Vedanti. Advait Vedanti. He had said. Advait. But Advait you recommend. Vedanti. But you recommend people to read Satyat Prakash, right? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And you have said, and you have said, Dhanan Saraswati never said anything wrong, right? Mm. He has never Did said I... anything wrong. Whatever he has Did said, I... he has said correct, right? Yeah, मतलब I respect him a lot and I respect his opinions on stuff. Did he say? Uh, did he say anything? Did, did he? Say... Did he say anything against? Did he condemn idol worship? Yes, he did. Did he condemned? Did he condemned uh, avatar concept of avatar? Mm, yes, he did. So. You don't believe in uh, Satyat Prakash, and do you? From here on, do, you don't recommend uh, people to read Satyat Prakash, oh, and you I never say that. I recommend. It's a very good read. It's a very good uh, start. So it's, point it's talking. It's talking Hinduism. about condemning idol worship. But I do not agree with him on certain points, and I think I'm free to do it because Hindu allows it. So, 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 so according to you, according to you, uh, Swami Ji, Maharishi Dayanand Saraswati, uh, did mistakes, according to you, right? no there are points i do not agree with him right uh, yeah you don't agree That's because you fact. you think you think it's wrong no because right? i think matlab if i it may be that i'm wrong that is why according I, to why according to dayanand saraswati him. according to dayanand saraswati those hmm. who worship idols they are they are they are adharmis uh, reference right please. and they are they, they, they uh, idol worship is a sin according to dayanand uh, saraswati please reference adharmi oh, but you did not give the reference for demolition okay. of mosque okay. he did not give the reference for demolition of mosque to be adharm okay, okay. so now yeah, suddenly you are asking point, for yeah. reference concept of avatar he okay. said he I said ram cannot be god krishna cannot be god you said you do believe it do you agree do you agree that dhanan saraswati said ram sir, cannot be I'll god krishna cannot be god swati sister ram cannot be god krishna cannot be god i'd give you the reference okay let's let's come back to the let's come friends Guys, let's come back to the topic mm-hmm. because uh, right now what we are discussing is, like I said, we are discussing Babri Masjid, you know, the Ram Mandir, and which and, is linked with and the very itself. subject matter of Ram, Shri Ram. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this: You believe point. Ram is an avatar of Vishnu? Am I right? Yes, I do. Okay, when you say avatar, do do the avatars commit sins? Mm. Sin which song is this? Sin. what do you uh, what do you mean by sin adharma 
adharma no no they never okay uh, by the way what is your understanding of sin i thought it's quite pretty standard no sin is not standard what is sin okay. for you for kufra it is not for me it is not standard what is your understanding of sin sin according to me is subjective and uh, for me do you believe being a subjective opinion is that un- causing unprovoked undeserved harm is a sin okay so when you say unprovoked and something mm. which is uh, undeserved undeserved okay mm. who decides that who decides somebody deserves being done wrong to or not if harming him stops more more harm from being done okay then that so when when uh-huh, somebody harm is when, justified when somebody harms someone deliberately mm-hmm. is that considered to be adharma or not for you deliberately uh, deliberately if he doesn't deserve it the harm yeah, who decides that that's the thing deserve it. who decides who decides they don't deserve it for example if i were to tell you Dharma according means. to the according to according to babar okay um the people mm. did not deserve to commit shirk so he decided to break uh, break the temple did they deserve that's it that's subjective yeah ah. that's yeah, subjective exactly. did, they, you, did those you, people you deserve what the demolition of the temple because babar oh, yes. decided oh, that they don't oh, deserve oh, to oh, have a temple hold oh, a minute that is that is what i call for the like for the lack of a better word uh, again i didn't hear you uh, for the lack of a better word clinging to a something that is not good right matlab i don't want to use that oh, all i'm asking you is what is, what constitutes sin you dharma. said you said harming lakshana, someone lakshana yeah. of dharma decide that if he deserves that harm or not okay i think you are entangling things a lot do you know yeah, no no he, he's saying he's saying I it just, deliberately because he realizes yeah. that he cannot answer the question who deserves the harm that who is a question I, he still hasn't answered and and the very simple question oh, is sin dharma again is the lakshans of dharma deserves the harm is sin different from adharma yes it's not very complicated we know it all yeah. you know when we say it in english language we say please don't commit sin please don't commit yes. adharma yes 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 so no, it's no, the no, same no. thing no it's it's a synonym sin it's not is, different sin is paap adharma is yeah. adharma okay let's let's use the concept of karma does hmm. karma punish adharma yeah uh, it does it punishes your deeds adharma no no just answer the be... question does karma mm-hmm. punish adharma no karma punishes karma matlab karma is not something karma bhog punishes what does that even mean karma punishes karma ah, okay, okay. Is you guys are got you see how he's entangled himself no 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 okay, i'm not entangling it again, what is terminology is a bit skewed so i'm using the hindu it. terminology right. karma no 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 you're not and i'm using karma. adharma Both are Hindu see, see, terminologies. See, see. They are so not just, from Islam. They are from Hinduism. Let me. Let me. Let so me once let again, me, let me just, does karma punish adharma? Karma doesn't. मतलब doesn't punish karma is the deed. Karma bhog is the punishment. Karma has the consequences. Karma. The law karma, karma has consequences. Is... For example, if you do that adharma, the consequence. The consequence of that is going to be bad. Am I right? Do do just hear me out, and you'd be feeling really good. Right. The principle after, of dharma in a very simple done, language. Right. No, no, no. The no, law no, no, of karma. Okay, let him so, uh, say, 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 let him say. There's, Go on, explain to us the principle of karma. Awesome, awesome guy, awesome. Okay. And how karma, it's related with dharma? How it's related yeah. karma, with dharma? Dharma and adharma. How is it related? Okay. okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Karma is deed. Okay. Karma it is called because uh, for short a we used to put a right with a. Uh, Fine yeah. on the A, it's, so it's the that is why that is, ha, that is how it. Uh, मतलब uh, it is now called karma. It's karma. Karma means deeds. Karma fal siddhant is that you'd be rewarded and punished according to your karma. Which is, is karma the law of karma. Yeah. Karma Which bhu. is the law. Okay, good. No, no, good, good. Karma so you'll be, you'll so be rewarded karma, or punished. Ram was punished. Ram was punished, Ram was punished for his uh, previous deeds. Wait, wait, Sam, by Sam, 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 Sam. Before yes, you go there. Yes. Yes, I want yes, to establish yes, the yes, principle yes, yes, yes. of karma. So he said you'll be rewarded or punished based on your deeds. Exactly. Now, sir. now mm-hmm. if I understand correctly, the good mm-hmm. deeds you are rewarded, and for the bad deeds you're punished. Am I right? Ha, huh, and it's okay. not. Okay. So you know, as earlier as I asked you the question. You. Okay. Yeah. Er- earlier I asked you the question that mm-hmm. what? How does karma punish? Or in the system of karma, how is adharma punished, 
or is adharma punished or not okay so that and you did not give an answer to that that is so sweet of you for asking that question because that would be enlightening a lot of us thank Good you God. for asking that question see karma uh, deeds characters and personality can be dharmic as well as adharmic depending upon the lakshanas 10 lakshanas of dharma clear of which so, ahimsa adha- parma dharma is very important uh, ma'am please could you shut up Hey, hey, so watch sorry. it, watch it's it. I'm going to kick you out otherwise. Dharam humbly, Dharam humbly. Dharam no, that is not your channel. This is not your channel. Dharam 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 Dharam. Hashim, Hashim, and Sam, and everyone, one second. What you've yeah. just done there, um, whatever your Rakkosh, your name is, apologize sincerely and profoundly to what you've just said. Before we say so anything that, else, apologize, apologize sincerely to the sister and to the whole of the people who are watching this stream. just apologize without any conditions i'm sorry i'd uh, prefer leaving okay it's okay. your wish but the thing it's is we wish. did not disrespect you we did not say shut up to you and i think you speaking of dharma and adharma should at least you know have the can i just ask the, grat- not- the gratitude of being on this uh, on this panel where we did respect you your opinions we let you Run share away. your opinions all i and said then was you just say shut I mean- up Yeah, uh, all I said was ahimsa is param dharm, and it it teaches us toleration. That's what one of the lakshans of dharm. Is. Brother Ashim, he ran away, or is he is he backstage? No, it's okay. Let him go. We we don't want to waste okay. time with him. I, I I have removed him because he preferred to okay. go. Okay. Yeah. So since he prefers to go, he can. Okay. We're not no taking any more guests now. Yeah. So, uh, Brother Mansu, can you just put that uh, banner for us, please? Uh, Sister Swati, very nice to have you after a long time, and I do apologize yeah. Uh, yeah. for these time. people disrespecting you because it's our panel and we are responsible for that. So, no, as you I can see, see, both uh, Hindus yeah. and sorry, Muslims and non-Muslims, we did not respect any of their guests. Okay, we never said shut up to anyone, and I would expect you reciprocate the same mannerism and attitude. If you don't, then this panel. we are you're not welcome on this panel go elsewhere i don't care which channel you belong to also i just wish to bring in something that you know we were talking about dharm we were mm-hmm. eager to understand each other about the particular and and because this issue is so important it i understand it flare tempers you know uh, amidst the people with regard to this particular theme but all that i was saying was i was not abusing he said don't yeah, cut absolutely. me off you you are asking just, questions here yeah, yeah. I was just saying, ahimsa is one of the very important dharm lakshan of this particular religion. If tolerance is not there, if we can't, you know, listen to each other, try to understand well, each other and explain, then what's the point of you know worshiping that or revering that Ram, who see, is basically a symbol? Who's if Hindus would say that you know he has lot of tolerance, he has lot of shama bhav, forgiveness. then that's what the followers also need to have within them if we are not following then how no matter how many temples we build it it's of no use if we are not if you if you are not following that path of dharma it's not Absolutely. propagating violence and that's what the, I, i think that maybe he did debate or maybe brahma rashi needs to ponder over this needs to think and reflect upon this aspect not to condemn each other like that but to think about it that maybe there there could be some hidden truth within that which we can learn from each other Absolutely no. Well, well said, uh, Sister Swati. And I think you probably got under his skin when you asked this question about ahimsa, about uh, non-violence, and this is something which uh, he he realized it couldn't tolerate it. But anyway, whatever the reason, he shouldn't have actually abused you like that on the panel, and that is very disrespectful. A person who's talking about karma and dharma and all that, he probably doesn't have the basic understanding, or he's a hypocrite. He talks about it but doesn't practice it. Either way. Uh, Rushi, you're next. Are you there? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thanks. Uh, you've been waiting long Thank time. I uh, appreciate your patience. What's on your yeah, mind? Okay. No, it's like uh, so. Like from the main topic, then I would like to just ask some question to Swati ji because I did not understand what she was trying to say. Mm-hmm. so with this particular uh, ram mandir issue so the the point i want to discuss or just convey is that and i don't need to say that because it's not a new information that this is a very sensitive uh, issue so i think what we should do is that do everything that is possible 
where there are no more emotions which gets played up which is what because... we were demonstrating rushi that that's what we were doing you know very very academically very intellectually and with a lot of tolerance i was just asking that what exactly is dharm what is that path and it's not just about you know doing a pran pratishtha or building a temple if you if you really are the follower of him then we need to you know follow the path which dharm is asking us to follow otherwise it's just name say that we are being you know the followers or the religious people so that's what i was asking about it that if dharm is about ahinsa is one of the very very main important lakshan of dharm and karm is very closely tied with dharm because that's how you achieve the moksha you know so so if it's all related with each other then it's important to understand that because that's how then you know we do the true worship it's not and you people understand it and you know that how idol you know a lot of people say that no it's not about idol worship we are basically using it as a focus point you know we are basically trying to connect to the lord to the supreme brahma so then what are if it's it's not bringing change in our personality it's not bringing change in our actions then it's all useless it's not doing anything it's not leading in fact to the very path of moksha which dharm in fact is propagating towards that's all i was trying to understand from that so i don't see you know i don't see reasons for flaring up for that so that was my only point you can please bring in what you wish to ask me no no so so ahinsa parmo dharma we understand quite clearly so i was trying to understand that like, like in what context you are trying to bring or what is its application yeah i was just trying i was just basically bringing i was just asking for my own understanding and for my own knowledge that if dharm is something which we really you know try to follow within this particular so you know sanatan which is the name itself is sanatan dharm the eternal dharm you know which tells us to follow that path so all of this conflict the violence the hatred the animosity which is building among communities and people is it worth all that is it actually leading us towards one of the lakshans of dharm is what i was trying to contemplate through this you know it's not about going to that particular place doing the ritual for maybe few hours and it not leading to any change within us then it's of no use so i was trying to and he was saying he is an advait vedant so advait vedanti so, try to go beyond rituals and ceremonies and that's what i was trying to ask and that's how ahinsa is related with this no see i think uh, i think we can have some agreement that with respect to violence or animosity so what i would point out here is be very crystal clear because i've been listening not to just stream but this entire saga for as long as i'm alive so one thing that can bring society together is to understand each other now this ran temple issue you have to understand that it is their holy place okay so we can ask all these questions which has been asked so far in the stream but that's not the point so these are debates you can have but you need to understand what is the impact when a hindu listens to that because what it is going in I his mind is that no 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 please, please. that particular religion rishi i do no, no, come no, from please, that please please see no so no I see you understand. have to understand the backdrop no no swati ji what i'm trying to say you have to understand the backdrop backdrop uh, backdrop of the historical injustice which is done where there is there needs a healing touch and that why i'm trying to bring a point here is that this particular issue here because it's the holiest site okay so if we say if we try to bring together rather than questioning no it's uh, not questioning when i no, no, no. see personally see, speaking, see, no no see, it's very really, swati ji swati ji see it's very simple see in islam mecca is the holiest place and uh, so that is very sacred and near and dear just tell me one thing just tell no, me one so thing so you need to you need to just accept the humanity thing. of hindus that I they have understand. sensibility i'm only asking i'm only so asking so i'm just asking really for think, compassion do, compassion is based on and honesty which is, and which is what i which is what i was trying to understand which is why i was trying to understand what exactly is it all about is it really you said you talked about healing do you really think this is healing the way in which it is i will it tell is, you know, how proceeding. to heal is it really healing you had also seen one of your can, fellow beings abusing you know sort of maybe it could be a slip of tongue maybe it was not deliberate maybe it was not intentional but that's what i'm asking that is this so, actually leading to the path of dharm that's what i'm trying so, to understand yeah so see for for that to occur so what i'm trying to say here is that 
when you recognize that uh, this is the pain point of hindus okay and if we be much more understanding it and could be that's the, the same no no no, the no let me also, Rishi, no 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 let me see see no 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 also. see, see ayodhya this entire ayodhya, thing then becomes very subjective when you're saying no uh, no no it's not subjective and, and no, okay, it's not okay, emotional okay, it, why, it's about accepting why. the humanity of hindus where but their holiest the, the place same, there let is the humanity be universal in nature then let it be let universal them, you need to afford it first you need to provide it first then everyone will come together so no, you I please understand hold on hold on please. guys guys just one second so when you talk about the humanity of hindus what about the humanity of the other people who are the minorities that's what i was asking okay because if you I'm, if you look at if you look at this um, this pran pratishtha or this 20 on the 22nd of january which is the inauguration of the babri uh, sorry of the um, <laughs> of the ram uh, ram mandir yes can you tell me why the shankracharyas the four main shankracharyas did not attend why did they boycott the event uh, because as far as i understand uh, they did for the scriptural reasons exactly. because i think the pran pratishtha technically has to be done by yajman and some and there is something the so it's on technical was not basis fully built. no it the basis the basis was no 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 no, no. Uh, hashim was, hashim it needs to be completed the the temp, the mandir is still yeah. the construction is still not completed so they said that no, no. how can we do pran pratishtha because i can't no, no, it goes against the scriptures if you do it with an incomplete temple so you know the big uh, tower yeah. of the no, temple no. it's so not yet complete i mean no it's no like hashim. a headless temple they're saying hashim what you're saying is correct but i would like to tell you that uh, there are temples like uh, the one i know where because the uh, temple structure is so massive so what they do they do the pran pratishtha of the idol the reason being so that it can start being worshiped no but you according still, to them this that is against happen. the scripture according no, no, to them they they are like the they, they are the, like the shankracharyas you know you are no, not you are not in the no, same no. you are not in the same level as their knowledge so they, they know no, the scriptures i'm not i'm not unless you are saying you know the scriptures better than them No, 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 Hashim. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying that on the technical reason they might be right. Uh, who am I to say, you know, where why the political reasons it is being done? So that's no, not, not the point. No, it's not a political reason. They are giving a religious reason, and the reason is Modi. No, is you're actually, right. What Modi is no, doing I, is wrong. He's saying it should not be done now. It should be done when the temple is complete. That's all they asked for. They did not say the event so, should be something I, that they disapprove of. They said it is according to the scripture. it is not right to do the pran pratishtha now it is I, incorrect it's it goes against the uh, against the scriptures and that's the reason they boycotted all four of them are boycotting the event now if the religious uh, what do you say the pontiffs if they themselves are boycotting that event and they say that this is incorrect to do it and it goes against the scriptures then what right do the political parties like the bjp to actually you know spend so much money on this event and to do it in a time uh, sorry in in a way which is against your own hindu scriptures no see i was if you ask me you know like now this is shankar i also read in the news so when i heard because it this was like mentioned like couple of years back this is going to happen in this year i thought the temple will be actually completed that's what my understanding was but the recent pictures what i saw is that it looks like it's like 70% done so the yeah. main structure is done and the garbhagraha is complete so you are right because shankaracharya see shankaracharya the scriptures no, that's what they are saying no hashim i'm not disagreeing with you that uh, that for according to uh, scripture is happening but i'm saying that it's not my decision right so it it might be wrong if shankaracharya is saying that then so here yeah, is exactly. a mixture between I mean, look, no I that but is, no but what's know, the point like wait, 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 wait listen to this if someone if you invite a guest and they don't attend that itself is a dishonor on your part you know because you thought that they would accept your invitation and after they gave you a reason from their own scriptures so it's not like from their own desires or from their own agenda or something like that they give you a scriptural basis for their refusal refusal of this invitation to attend the inauguration and the pran pratishtha okay so we have to accept that what modi is doing is based on he's making this whole thing as a political um, means for his election so there is an agenda for this and this is a political basis not a religious basis 
And no, it happens course. every time. Every time there is a general election, something or the other comes up where they actually stir up uh, disharmony among the, uh, among the different faiths. And I that's the reason we get communal disharmony. So what you said no, no. earlier that, yes, we should all be compassionate. But when you have no, no, no. when you have when you have leaders like Modi and the BJP and the VHP and all these other right wing Hindutva, then surely you cannot expect peace because there is no justice. No, no, no. Okay? see, Hashim, Hashim. Yeah. So see, see what you're saying. See, see, Modi being political, it's not a news. It's like normal. So what? See, I'm talking to normal people. So what I'm trying to say, see, the politicians they will do what they do so what i'm saying from the society and the community level what i'm trying to say is that to make sure that uh, this such kind of uh, particular events or particular topics we have to make sure that there is no animus, uh, animosity or someone trying to use it which is what Rishi, way. you know what this point is very excellent that you are making which is exactly what i was trying to say but did you see just in a small stream people start losing tempers do you see no, that see, so so that it's very, will, very so then that's that's what i'm saying it's not just about yeah. a political issue people sentiments emotions religion the very idea of what the sanatan dharma is all about is all closely tied with it you we can't make so bifurcations that's, see, that's why see that's why i'm trying to say is that so so what I'm so what I'm humbly requesting is that so the only I'm trying to say is that that this is the holy place, and uh, if we will be much more sensible towards that, because the yeah, verdict is you, clear. You're, you're no, actually no, so, missing no, the you're, you're missing the you bigger picture. No, 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 no let me complete. Like you're just repeating no, no. yourself because you said this earlier. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm saying no, no. You Hashim, said what I heard I'm you to say, say this is, earlier, so you're repeating yourself. No, no. What I'm no, no, saying no, the is the bigger point, picture is this: sentiments will be hurt regardless of what you say. When injustice happens, whether it's against the Muslims or against the Hindus or against any community, sentiments will be heard. And for you and me to keep quiet about it, then we would be complacent as well. No, because no, no. Is, we, sorry, complicit as well. Because the thing is, if you keep quiet in the face of injustice, no, and no, you, had the, you had the ability to speak out against it, then surely you are complicit. No, no. See, see, that's your what you're saying. There is nothing what you said is wrong. So what I'm trying to say is that when, like, even if you see in this stream, like whatever I was able to hear, the certain questions when you pose, you know. So the only thing I'm trying to say here is that try to understand how it will be interpreted, because uh, when you ask something that of is this condemnable or was this wrong, then the the general peop the people who are listening from the other side is that. Why is he only asking questions regarding this, but not that? So my main issue here is that instead of we doing that, even though the question is valid, but the problem is happening is that it has been selectively asked or on a selective occasion, but rest of the, uh, in that same category, the people don't ask that question. And I don't even want to So you're saying that we me. should understand the broader context, which is what I was trying to do, Rishi. I was trying to understand the very understanding of dharma. I was trying no, but to understand I didn't understand the your point. Like, no, no. By but the way, I Rishi, are you like saying that point. we are not allowed to ask questions, or are you saying that we no, should no, no, ask no. questions to both the parties? Which one is it? Uh, see, first of all, what happened? This is all happened in history. So I think the best possible uh, forward, like as a for cohesion, will be that yes, these things happened. They were right, wrong, according in that time, and but let's not use that today. But it's and happening today. Together. It's happening today. People sent That's why we have to work. That's why we have to make, make our effort. Which is what That's we are our, trying like, to understand. You see, you cannot, you cannot just ignore the past because it's going to come to bite you. And that is what karma teaches you. That your no, past that is what determines yeah. your future. If you're going to do adharma, you're going to be punished for it. If you do good, you're going to be rewarded for it. So karma itself is teaching you that your past matters. Yes, but... <laughs> No, this you're is very much from your religion. Telling. It's not from. Uh, it's not just from uh, our religion. It's also from your religion that the I consequences think... of bad actions will have bad. Okay, you're going no, to. That... You, you're, you're no, going you're to right. be punished for it, and it doesn't matter if it's in on this earth or it'll be in the hereafter. It's going to be the case no, see, anyway. That, that's but the anyway, best look, part. I understand. No, no, no see, I that's the that's the best part. Now, karma. That uh, whatever you message. do, you will pay for it. So yeah, yeah. Yes, but no. The thing is, we have to say that to bring it together. 
Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you something before you go. In terms of uh, Pran Pratishta, what is your understanding? So I have personally attended Pran Pratishta. It only means because I'm not technically like uh, well versed, but basically it's like you know the ritual from when you can start actually worshiping that particular idol. So that's the only okay. thing I know as a layperson. Right. Based on the definition of Pran Pratishta, it actually invites the deity into yeah, the true. lifeless idol. No, you do you do that thing in your home also, like when you do puja, they do the same thing when they set yeah, up. Yeah, but this is a general case. I'm not saying it's just in the temples, but mainly it's in the temples. But yeah. do you actually believe that? Do you believe in idol worship, by the way? Yes. You do. Um, does the Vedas advocate idol worship? No, no, no. I, Hashim, I was here last time. I said I'm Jain, I said to you. Oh, you're Jain. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were Hindu. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I, there's so many people who come. I can't remember everyone. No, it's fine. That's fine. Okay. No, but all no, because... I would like to all I would like to bring in here would be when you're talking about Pran Pratishtha, you know, the real true and in terms of really getting into the dharma of it, when you're saying, you know, adding or whatever, you know, putting life into it, let's put life into the dharma and what the dharma is teaching. Let's embody that into our own personalities and be the embodiment of that. So that when people see, they don't have to go anywhere to understand what exactly Sanatan Dharma is all about. Mm. Every Hindu, for that matter, can become an embodiment. You're saying, no, let's talk about it. Let's not accuse. Let's not blame. Let's be sensitive to each other. So that's what then needs to be learned. If you really want that this is something which is eternal, and we, if you really want this to be propagated and people to really follow, then let, then let the embodiment of it come from each and every being who's saying that we are followers of that. You know, let, why not focus on that? Why not work on that? Because this but, thing, in terms of ceremony and ritual, it is not, it is absolutely not going into that direction at all. It's rather taking Hinsa to be the Param Dharm. Uh, see, no, that part, uh, you know, see, 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 what you said to me is really, you know, I agree with that, you know, like, let's move or let's, people should, you know, practice more as, as becoming, it's basically means becoming a good person. Okay, that's what it basically means. So I'm totally with you on that. So there is no doubt, there is no difference between us on that point. Yeah, because that's you know that's going to be true. You know, in terms of if if I really respect whoever believes, like whatever Pran Pratishtha is, if you really want to respect that, then let's be the embodiment of that. Let let life come into the people of that true dharm. What that is teaching, that would be in true sense what. You know, putting life into it is all about. Otherwise, yeah, Swatiji, let, no, Swatiji, we can just hope for that, right? Let's hope for the best for in that situation. But that's, yeah, we can hope for it. But I'm just saying, you know, at least to work on that direction, talk about that, discuss about that. You know, how can we bring that into the picture? Because I'm only saying this because your very first point was, which is very correct, that let's not, you know, let's not play this blame game or let's not. And I understand sentiments of both the sides are hurt. It's flared up. And which yeah. is which is why I'm telling you that you know if we really want to work on something, let this be the priority, yeah. not in terms the way, of how we can put the, the other priority down. for the government not be yes. to to actually address the poverty, uh, unemployment, you know, education system, health system, all these things. You no, know, spending right. billions, the country yeah. spending billions on this temple, and I'm not saying they shouldn't build temples for worship. I'm just saying this is like. Ex extravagant now, you know, you're you're expanding no, more than I, necessary. So no, I think Hashim there are bigger, right, bigger yes. priorities within within the country. And no, Hashim, the like, no, Hashim, you said it correctly. You know, that the employment, no, employment, poverty, healthcare. If the Modi government has not uh, delivered, he will suffer in the electorate. Okay, that's for sure. That you can write it I, down. No, no, you 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 will be, be surprised that how this election campaigns work. It's not based on logic. It is driven through marketing, through propaganda, and this actually involves the emotions of people. Okay, it's it's a huge campaign. They spend billions on this. It's not something that you think people will think logically that he hasn't done much for education or healthcare that they will not elect him. And that is the reason. The reason he stirs up these feelings uh, amongst uh, and using religion and using. Ram, I don't. I, I very much doubt if Ram was around, he would agree with the methods used by BJP and the VHP. 
Okay. No, but also Hashim, like a, you have to think. They made this temple a political <clears throat> football, and this is what's happening. It's it's become it's it's clouded, uh, and put a smoke screen, and this is the reason they have lost the actual vision about the priorities of the country. And no, see, that's why that's why we need. Uh, they play with no, emotions true. of the people. No, no. See, also you have to also realize that the opposition is not as strong as it should be. So that is another reason because see, generally opposition in opposition towards what opposition towards no no opposition opposition parties opposition parties I mean in yeah. politics so the other side where I am supposed to vote is not strong enough because there is so many which is what politics fighting. is doing all that's why I'm saying that that's not, that it's not it's not which is why we need to then venture towards what dharm is and let dharm come into politics you know that's what Sanatan dharm says yeah. that yeah I, let I it don't be the want... life let let it be the way of life. So then, I don't I, I'm just, to... I'm just no, saying that right, these but... should be the these should be the matters which should be focused upon, you know, dwelled upon, pondered upon, worked upon. That's all I'm saying. For it to really flourish, if you really want it to prosper, flourish, flourish, then why not work on these aspects? Yeah, these are the real issues. They should be actually focusing on finding solutions to them, and they can only seek to divert public attention from these real issues. To non issues no, like will... power protection, building a Ram Mandir, you know, all these things. This is, you know, actually causing communal passions in the hope that this would get votes. So they're doing it for their vote banks. You need to realize this. I think the people of India should, the citizens of India should realize this. But let's, anyway, let's thank you very that much for your happen. time. Hashim. No, Hashim, let's, let's, hope not, for let's, the best. Hope, let's hope that the communal passions are not inflamed and hopefully it will be as peaceful as it will be. So that yeah, we, uh, we all pray that will not happen. But like I said, some people would do anything to win votes, to win the election. It's all for the chair. I think it's all for 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 getting the a, winning the uh, next election. No, but uh, uh, it's a completely different topic. But I under realize that you have been speaking for a long time. But I don't think uh, Modi is that stupid to use a communal flair because he wants Muslim votes. And, no, uh, no, no. It's not for the Muslim people. votes. He wants the majority votes, which is the Hindu votes. He doesn't no, care. No, we need Muslim votes because there are crucial seats where the... It, it doesn't the matter. The majority in every state is still going to be Hindus. So as long as he gets not, their votes, you know, for, it doesn't matter to him. For, no, but for long-term gain, politically, he wants Muslim votes. So that's why he's doing the, all the... Why would he care about Muslim program. votes when the majority are Hindus? No, because the, the, the idea, divided, the idea right? in a the democracy are is divided. the majority wins. No, no, the seats are divided, right, between the individual seats. No, it's so not based. Also, the seats are not based yeah. on, on religion. No, 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 no. Like, for example, if you're in uh, Uttar Pradesh, so there yeah. are more seats where the Muslims are uh, uh, in majority. So actually, politically, no, no, means like if, let's say, Aligarh or any other Lucknow area, if there are yeah, more Muslims in that particular yeah, constituency. I don't think the Muslims are the majority. It is a Hindu no, no, for the majority. You should go to those areas. No, no. no what I'm saying is that he will try to get their votes as much as they can try to win but their any, confidence. But in any case, Rishi, I would just like to say, but in any case, this is not what Dharm teaches. This is not the kind of politics that we should aspire towards. So he all is a I'm saying is, if, so. if, 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 yeah, which is what? And you know what? And which is why, you know why? I would say that initially, that's the reason why Dharm was not, you know, politics was not bereft of Dharm. If you, if you would read your scholars, your own scholars and the religious figures, that's what they had said. And that's why Sanatan Dharma also says that it's a way of life. It's not different bifurcations which are there to be used in different segments of life. It's an overall way of living, which includes politics, which includes economy, which includes society, everything, all parameters there. So it should actually inculcate every aspect of the life which is not happening. So then the question arises, what's the point of doing the ritual, which is not bringing into the dharmic aspects into the lives of people? Are we really bringing Sanatan Dharm then into its truest form or not? That no, I mean, I I'm just saying, I'm just saying I, these, these, these needs to be really, you know, people who are really truly passionate about Sanatan Dharm, they need to really think about it and not get fooled by the, you know, petty politics, which is going on. No, you're right. And also, I do not support mixing religion with politics. I support the secular democracy. But on the lighter note, Swatiji, can I ask one question? Like, do you, yeah, you know who is, the, who is the biggest... It's just on a lighter note, okay? So, like, you know who is the biggest vote-getter for BJP? It doesn't a, matter you know, to me. Doesn't no, 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 just a, on a lighter note, like, 
just a humorous just a, you know who it is who it is rahul gandhi <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i mean that's what i'm saying you know it's all it's all just sort of kind of you know putting you know each other down in terms of cutting off and stuff yeah. like that which is not sanatan dharm i mean i'm just saying that if people who are really passionate who really want to follow let's just do it in the true sense if, if and and i'm only bringing this point because i'm trying to not petty this out not hurt the emotions of anybody but to you know take everybody who's following this towards something which is of interest to everyone and which can actually make the change which we are all looking for yeah the thing is um, look if, if you have a leader who is a leader of a democracy that is secular and is always promoting the the hindu stand for example recently he said everyone should light diyas in their homes which is which is a, a religious practice okay now ima- imagine when you are given a position of leadership in a country in a secular country not a hindu country and you're always promoting your hindu religion as a secular leader it clearly gives wrong signals and most states in india you know they actually vote basically largely on caste or communal lines this is well known in india and in many states particularly in the big states like the like up and bihar the vote bank of the bjp is that the hindu upper caste you know the brahmins rajputs banias uh, the thakurs all these guys which are they collectively 20% of the population yes even though they are minority these people are the ones who are in charge of most most of these events and these rituals uh, but anyway rushi bhai thank you very much uh, for your time and do come back again appreciate your uh, your sharing your your opinions and uh, comments on thank you Yeah thank you all thank you for your time all right see you right uh, i think some uh, okay digital human has been waiting for a while hello assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how are you brother uh, how are you yeah very well thanks how are you doing yeah i'm also good right you've been waiting in the back chat for a long time in the back studio yeah yeah actually uh, uh i thought like i thought this thursday i last something about like islamic question but uh, then the stream was something else and i have i also have an opinion about this okay so my opinion is if the uh like babri masjid was built on the temple any temple it was wrong okay and uh, we know that the judgment of supreme court was in favor of hindus and average hindu believes that it means the babri masjid was built by demol- demolishing the ram temple okay but it it is not the case if you read the supreme court judgment i have shared few links okay uh two links of newspapers mm-hmm. if you can open it and show it just just uh, summarize it for us because uh, yeah. there are a lot of people waiting so i want to okay, okay. F- end the stream quickly because it's already been 6 hours okay okay so uh, in the judgment the supreme court said the uh, supreme court said AS, asi the archaeological survey of india they have never concluded that the babri masjid was built on the ram temple by demolishing it okay and they have found some artifacts okay uh, uh these artifacts may belong to the buddhist or jain also okay yeah. so i have opened this uh, i have full uh, the verdict from supreme court on page number 595 uh it is written on uh, bullet point 7 that these can be of buddhist or jain origins also okay yeah and on That's the, what the other jain guide said when yeah. he joined yeah and on the same Sorry, page to this guy yeah yeah 595 uh under 0.509 uh it said that there is no specific finding that the underlying structure was a temple dedicated to lord ram and exactly. the next point is significantly the asi has not specifically opened on whether a temple was demolished for the construction of the disputed structure okay then it keeps on saying that the asi report has been criticized on the ground that it fails to answer the question as to whether the disputed structure of a mosque 
was constructed on the demolition of a pre-existing temple at that site. Okay, so and there are other points also like uh, the ju judgment was not given on the basis of whether the uh, this mosque was built on the temple, but it was given on the basis of faith. Okay, and the exact line which Supreme Court said in its judgment was uh, uh, the court said that the faith of Hindus that the Lord Ram was born at the disputed site where the Babri Masjid once stood cannot be disputed. Okay, here nowhere it mentions that the here it uses the word faith. So it is based only on their faith. Nowhere Supreme Court has said that the Lord Ram was born there. Okay, so it was just a matter of faith. Yeah, I I think that's uh, that's what we mentioned earlier as well. So really good points there. And look, even if there was a pre-existing temple, uh, it could be like you said, it could be a Jain temple, even it could be a Hindu temple. The question is like, what is the evidence that Ram was born at this particular site? Yes, he's he was yeah. supposed to be born something like 7,000 years ago. Who would have made that note? You know, at that time, even languages didn't exist. Even Sanskrit is only 5,000 years. So who wrote where and when, where Ram was born? There's no so, evidence at all about his yeah. exact birthplace. So, so when it suits them, uh, they can us northwest, east, south, giving you yeah. general, general location, not specific location by longitude and latitude. So it really yeah. doesn't let actually me, help let, at all in their case. Uh, brother Hashim, sorry, sorry brother Hashim. Allow me let to me add this thing as lines. well. Yes, yeah, digital right, brother. Just a minute. Let me add one more thing. This will be a part of uh, our record. So I just uh, search on map, Google Map. The, the the verse which uh, he quoted from uh, Skanda Purana states mm. uh, three four names. One name is uh, Vashishta. This is the Guru of uh, Ram, Guru of Ramji, and it states about the uh, Vashishta uh, Vashishta Kand, which is a school name Vashishta Kand. Uh, from Vashishta Kand to Ram Janma Bhumi, it's fifty kilometers. Wow, fifty kilometers. <laughs> fifty kilometers. Okay. And, yeah, yeah. I and mean, that's the, the thing, you know, they give you, they give you, the thing is, look, who wrote this Puranas and when? They don't even have that evidence. So it's 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 yeah. like uh, digital human said, like this is faith based, you know. So based on their faith, they believe this. It's not based on evidence, certainly not archaeological evidence. Because so, if so that was the case, then they wouldn't know. have spent, you know, so many years and decades uh, just to come to a, a particular conclusion and a verdict. Uh, but look, it's the the thing is it's it's been done. Uh, the same Supreme Court also said that this car works, they actually demolish the the masjid, which was illegal for them to do so, to demolish it. None of the leaders of these parties, either the BJP, the VHP, the RSS, none of them actually were brought to justice. I think LK Adwani was the only one who spent something like a month in jail because he took the Rath Yatra to, uh, that was in 1990 when he was planning to uh, demolish the mosque at that time. And that was only for a month, but then he was back in power. So it really is like shambles. You know, if you're going to believe the verdict of the Supreme Court, then the Supreme Court should actually step in and hold the people who had done something <laughs> illegal, hold them to account. Otherwise, if they're just, you know, let free, then what's the point of the Supreme Court giving a verdict that this is uh, what the uh, that deeds are actually something to be uh, uh, actually it's it's illegal and anything that's illegal, which means you're breaking the law. If you break the law, there's a punishment for it. The fact that none of the leaders of these parties, BJP, VHP, RSS, Bajrang Dal at that time, none of them were actually arrested. So it just shows that this is a complete shambles. Uh, but anyway, Jazakallah Khair, Brother Digital. Uh, uh, I want to add one more point, if you can allow me. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, there is one uh, like judgment from Allahabad High Court also, Okay, the before the Supreme Court. So, the Allahabad High Court said uh, that the this structure was constructed, like Babri Masjid was constructed several hundred years ago. And it is difficult to conclude with any degree of certainty whether the underlying structure on whose foundation it rests had collapsed due to natural causes or whether the structure was demolished to give way for the structure of the mosque. So the ASI has not concluded anything about it. 
Yeah. By the way, I don't know if uh, people were actually following uh, the news. Uh, there was a time when Modi actually, uh, you know, he, he destroyed a number of temples for the Vishwanath Corridor. Go and look it up. Yeah, it's yeah, actually, exactly, exactly. It's, so when, when Modi destroys temples, it's okay. But when, when Babur and his uh, commander does it, yes, when it was not a democracy, then it's not okay. I mean, look at the double standards of this, you know. Even the poor Shankaracharya Yeah, and uh, you know, even people like Aurangzeb, he actually gave money to build certain temples. He might have destroyed temples. I'm not saying there were Muslim uh, emperors and rulers who destroyed temples and destroyed and killed people, you know, during that time for whatever reasons, but. They also actually gave money for building certain temples to maintain the the harmony within the communities. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think go and look up this uh, Vishwanath corridor where Modi himself destroys temples and not one or two, quite a few of them. They might be small, but it's still a temple at the end of the day. Okay. All right, digital bye. Inshallah, yeah. until next time, you take care, brother. Yeah, Salaam alaikum. All right, uh, who is next? case. This Mahadev guy was very impatient. Let me bring him in. Mahadev, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. Stop muting yourself. Speak up. Hello? Uh, can you just wait a second? All right, if he's busy, I'm going to take somebody else in. Hello. Yeah. Are you Hello, okay? brother. Oh. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm from India. From, from India. You need to you need to sit down, man. There's a lot of noise. There. Go somewhere where it's quiet. Uh, can you guys listen to me? Yeah, we can hear all the noise. Am I uh, audible? Yes, you are. Go ahead. Yeah. What's on your mind? Hello. We can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I have. I have to ask a question. Nabi's real name is Kasim. Say again. Because I am seeing the stream of Adam Seeker. He just to. He's deviating from the Nabi's topic. real name it's is Kasim Dirt. It's not so it's, it is true. It's not on the topic. Oh, oh, can you can topic. you stick to the topic? The topic today is about Ram Mandir, about Babri Masjid, and about Ram. Your Islam. voice is breaking. No, because your internet is not good enough. Probably the next guest could be taken then. As it is, the question. Is what is, what is? Have you got a? Have you got a question on the topic, or is something else? Nabi. No, it's, time, it's, yeah. Okay, next, Satya Singh. Hello, hello everyone. How are you guys doing? Yeah, very well. Thanks. Where are you calling from, Satya? I'm calling from Canada, but I'm an Indian. Okay, good. Yes. What's on your mind today? Oh, I was just uh, I was listening to the conversation about uh, whether um, it's right to build a Ram, Ram temple or not. Mm -hmm. What's right. your view? I mean, if Hindus will not build a Ram temple in Ayodhya, where will they build the Hindu temple in Makkah? No, there are thousands of Ram temples in India. Why do they need another one? Even, even in Ayodhya, there are many Ram mandirs. Yeah, thousands yeah. of them in India. Yeah, I why understand they that. Another, we, why yeah, do they need another Ram temple? We we needed that because we 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 thought that this was our place, which was demolished by Babur. And there was a temple, uh, no, there was a, a masjid built on the temple. We fought the case, we won the case, and now we're building it. So what's the problem? The problem no is, the pro no, no, the problem is, was it worth for thousands of people to die? For Ram? Yes, we are willing, we, we all Hindus are willing to die for Ram. No, no, no. Without no, Ram, we have no existence. 
Did when did Ram without Ram, the... without Ram, we have did no Ram existence. Did Ram say that kill people for me? Did Ram yeah. say? Did Ram ever tell you to build a temple? No. Where did Hindu kill? Okay. Did we kill people? Where did we kill people in in Ram uh, in Ram temple? Dude, do you not know the riots that ensued after the destruction of the Babri Masjid? Yeah. It's who who started that that riot? Well, what do you think started the riot? Who started riots? that riot? Who started that riot in Mumbai? Who no, no. propagated that riot? Why ISI? That, why, why did the riot start? Why did the riot start? I yes. Yeah, that that was a triggered point. But who started it the riot? Seems, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Like what was the trigger point? Fight. Let's see. The demolition. Fight. What was the but, trigger point? The demolition was exactly. a trigger point. So my question is valid. No. So we was demolished a building, and you started killing people. Dude, the Muslims started shouting. killing people. You're not here to shout. I'm not Doesn't shouldn't 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 shouldn't
Why when the are you, when why the Monday, are, why is when Pakistan the Monday, rent free in your head? Even if you're no, living no, no, in no, Canada, no. So, so far away, Pakistan is still rent free in your head. Why is India is rendering in your head, buddy? Why is India rendering in your head? You're not in India. You are in British. Yeah, but We're we Britain. can talk about any topic in Britain, unlike you. So, so we can talk about any topic so do, I'm in Canada, as well as in Pakistan, as well as in India. You are the one because complaining. Go no, to I'm not complaining. Stream. I am telling you that you are being hypocrite. Open the stream. Go talk about it over there, which you guys do anyway. Look every what? news. They all talk about Pakistan. I'm not a Pakistani for your information. And and right now we are talking about Babri Masjid, which is not yeah. in Pakistan. We are talking yeah. about Ram Mandir, which is not in yeah. Pakistan. So yeah. why are you bringing irrelevant topics? Into I'm not bringing irrelevant topics. Why are you if so you are, angry? If you are, if you are, if you are, if you are, you are, are. anyway, this guy is a waste of time. There was no point. There was no dialogue which was happening. Exactly. There. Yeah. He's so angry. He's he's like one of those hate preachers, you know, Hindutva out there. No, no one willingness to listen. Kush, you're next. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Uh, I have a question for Sam Stolen. Sam Stallone, yeah. What's your question? No. Is it related to the topic? Yes, bro. You are asking evidence for Ramayana. Yeah. No, the evidence. Sorry, the question was the yeah. the evidence. Do you have evidence for the existence of Ram? Yeah, he was yeah. asking now. Yeah. What's your evidence for the existence of Ram? I I just come here to tell him one thing, brother. You often come to Sanatan Samicha. Come here tomorrow. He give you evidence. My what? sorry, you but don't have my, evidence. My, push. I am not. Do you not have evidence. A, not that time. I don't have a reference. But why did you come, come to, to the stream? May I ask you? Why did you come to the stream? Just to tell him, man. He often okay, so you come wanted to, to give him a message. Is that all? It's a art. That was all. Okay. Bye bye then. You served your purpose. <laughs> Goodbye. You came as a pigeon. <laughs> he's, he's like a postman, you know, sending messages yeah. everywhere. I hope they pay him for that. Uh, who is this guy? Ben Dover. Ben, you want to bend over? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so clearly, okay, listen me carefully, okay? Is, is it a question or a comment? A comment. Okay, first and foremost, is it based on the the topic at hand today? Yes, of course. That's okay. why I'm here. What is your comment? Go on. So my comment is, I don't care about Ram. I don't care about Allah. I don't care about any religion. Okay, first of all, not even... We don't care about you then. Bye-bye. Lots of trolls out there, man. Seriously. Right. Uh, I think that is it. That was the last... Yeah. Uh, Last guess. Uh, really enjoyed uh, having you both on the stream. It's like the old times, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> Sister Swati <laughs> and uh, we, we really missed you guys, you know. I've seen a lot of comments. Every <laughs> single stream, even if it was a non-Hindu stream. Where is Sister Swati? Where is Brother Sam? <laughs> have you guys. Uh, so hey. we're going to close now. Um, any last words before we, we go? Yeah, something which I, for which basically I had joined when I was going through the discussions which were going on. You know, once again, some very point which I was making, which I don't know why agitated uh, people, Brahma Rakshas, heated debate, and other people who are actually propagating about Sanatan Dharm. I just wish to say this thing to everybody who's a follower of Sanatan Dharm. That you know, when we when you say that Vedas are this, uh, you know, one of the very very important um, uh, traditions, where Vedas are very important scriptures within Sanatan Dharm. So the very first sukta of the first mandal of Rigved, which is the foundational scripture of the Sanatan Dharm, there the prayer which is made to the Creator, uh, to the Master which you call, to the Savior of the universe whom you call, who is supposedly completely free from the evil of violence. The prayer in itself is to get the humanity free from all kinds of violence. You know, the very term Advaram, which appears in the fourth mantra of the very first suit of the first mantra of the Rig Veda Mandal, it is talking about this very fact that let's free from the evil of violence. So I really would, you know, sort of want to ask to reflect upon this when you do, you know, when, when people of Sanatan Dharma, when they do the streams, when they you know talk about these things just reflect about it that is it because if 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 that is not being followed if that's not being strived for if that's not being embodied 
if that dharmic lakshan is not coming within the people then all of it is of no use the entire pran pratishtha is of no use again i would reiterate the same thing L try to put life of that dharm which you talk about is eternal which is a way of life into each and every being only then probably if you really want it to flourish worldwide probably it can so uh, otherwise all of this which is creating conflict which is creating violence which is creating animosity is of no use and all these kinds of reaction streams which are then made to you know sort of condemn put people down humiliate that's not going to bring anybody closer to dharma so what kind of dharma are we talking about what kind of lakshans of dharma are we moving towards and if not then what's the point of it all you do all the ceremonies you do all the rituals you build thousands of temples if it's not going to change anybody if it's not going to evolve and in in the in the hinduism terminology if it's not taking people towards that path of moksha you know moksha also comes like that so towards that salvation towards that true liberation then i think it is of no use at all so that that was the only thing which i really wanted to bring in because somewhere i see that's totally sidelined that's the crux of it that's the you know so called beauty of it if that's the beauty whatever is there within that particular you know dharm so bring that out rather than and and that's why the stream was all about you know the title of the stream from desecration to consecration what you really need to then see what exactly has to be totally destroyed that's what you know one of the deities is all about the destroyer the shiva so let's see what has to be destroyed and what really needs to be put the breath of life into if that's not understood then there's no point of it all that's the only message that i wish to share here through the channel all right jazakallah khair sister thank you very much i really appreciate that um i think that's uh, quite important you know because many people you know when it comes to politicians they don't realize how they play their games and this is not only in the case of india i think in most countries this game kind of they they plan how to play on the emotions of people and there was actually an article in the in the hindustan times uh which uh, was i think published recently and it it had a one of the paragraphs really caught my attention and i just want to read that it says in a sense the self appointed guardians of secularism and those who claim to be the protectors of hindutva nationalism have fed off each other for decades a true secular order would have ensured equality and justice for all without any form of religious discrimination this would have meant that those responsible for the criminal act in the words of the supreme court of the babri demolition would have been prosecuted swiftly rather than being protected and patronized a principal secularism a principled secularism would promote ideals of pluralism based on tolerance and mutual respect for all faiths not one where specific religion based politics is openly practiced to consolidate vote banks religion is a personal matter but as cynically exploiting it for votes it becomes an instrument of divide and rule and this was actually uh, by rashdeep uh, singh sorry uh, rajdeep sir sardesai and absolutely that's what's happening yeah rajdeep yeah. sardesai this is what is happening divide and rule that's what the politics is you know the politics exactly. which is being played through this where is i want to see where is dharm in it you know the, on the basis of which everything is happening that is totally fizzled out and nowhere to be seen and nobody is even interested in reviving that so where absolutely. is that dharm it's not there and there was another story in another newspaper which i read that um, there were certain dobis and uh, forgot what the other caste was uh, where these people you know from the akara what is what is the name of the akara who is in charge of uh, who was one of the people uh, associated with the ram mandir they came for donations to collect donations from this dobi who are actually work with the you know the uh, the laundrette and so on and they gave the donations happily saying that this is for a good cause is for the ram mandirs we'll give it guess what the very next day they came back and returned the money saying that your donation will actually make the pran pratishtha impure 
will make yeah. the uh, <laughs> so this is a, you know like i said earlier this is an event which is mainly orchestrated by this upper caste hindus they don't even take the donations of the uh, of the of the dalits and uh, because it will make their ceremony impure and it will make their you know um uh, their pran pratishta and all the other rituals impure just because they come from outside the caste system you know because dalits are they don't even belong in the first four categories of the caste uh, uh, and it just blew my mind you know when i read that Absolutely. i said this whole thing reeks of evil from inside out yes so and it's it's meant to be a religious uh, uh, event and a celebration for the ram mandir but look at who is actually orchestrating all this it is not the people who want harmony even within the hindus because these people were hindus yeah. who were from the chamat and from the uh, what do you say the um, uh, this this caste you know the dobi caste and so on and it was this was in rajasthan where they collected the money from and they returned the money saying this we we can't accept it because it make the whole thing impure absolutely and that is what we're dealing with sambai you got to got yeah. any thing to say before we yes, close the show point uh, kept by swati so that's very important what she has said and yeah. uh, i would add few more points uh, related to religion concept of uh, god and uh, ram mm-hmm. being really god or not we need to just think and ponder upon uh, scriptures even the scripture doesn't say that ram, ram is god because uh, the, the the god is uh, someone different uh, who cannot be a human being according to vedas and according to uh, maharishi dhyanand saraswati he condemned uh, all this sort of things because it's it it only creates a uh, 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 unrighteousness uh, filthiness and uh, violence construction of a uh, ram mandir has uh, cost uh, crores and crores of rupees which can be used uh, for helping other people right now in ayodhya the government is uh, destructing poor people colony the entire co- colony of like uh, at least uh, 50 to 60 houses they have uh, demolished and they constructed in ram mandir and most of the people they are uh, hindus they are saying that how will ram be happy when the, when you are de- destructing our colonies or houses and you're building a lavish uh, temple for ram ram has lived his life in a very simple manner why he need a uh, house or a temple of a uh, crores of rupees yeah this question question was uh, posed by those same hindus ram lived his life in jungles for decades he never uh, required a luxurious life he lived a simple life a beautiful life according to those people why are you making his house a luxurious thing so there are many That's points so that, yeah which which those people uh, put across to the government and uh, the hindus need to ponder upon it building house of a uh, uh, poor people is more beneficial and uh, uh, will give more happiness to uh, everyone rather than constructing a ram mandir on the basis of political and uh, divide and rule policy of uh, politicians that's all Okay, Absolutely. interesting. So I just wanted to uh, ask Brother Mansur to give us some closing statements before we leave, inshallah. It's very nice to have Mr. Swati and Sam Stallone, uh, brother. Nice to hear and see you in mm-hmm. our channel. Everything's going well, inshallah. And mm-hmm. it's been sort of eye-opening for many people to hear and see the attitude and behavior of many of our brothers in humanity and yet uh, they may be following another religion due to just because of religious affiliation affiliation and geographical affiliation to a particular place and so on people can be often seem to be very you know extreme in their views and this does not in any way or shape bridge gaps that are so you know dividing the humanity human beings across the planet we cannot 
effort to create gaps and build tensions and have human beings fear one another, have hatred of one another just because of our differences. At the end of the day, it may be that, you know, if I needed blood transfusion, your blood matches with me and you are a Hindu, a Sanatan, Sanatan, or vice versa. If we are human beings with some common ancestry to a common father, which absolutely is the case because this is how human beings descended from the first parents, then we need to really think twice and ask ourselves, why the hatred? Shouldn't we be uniting under one ideology? An ideology in which something that makes sense to our minds and our hearts, a belief system that is coherent, a belief system that sets us free from these intolerances, sets us free from these racist attitudes, from the understanding that we are different just because we have a different ethnicity, different color, different language, or a different belief. It should be based on an ideology in which the ideology is rooted in reality. And that reality is for sure that we are a creation of a creator. And that creator is definitely, without a shadow of doubt, absolute, independent, self-sufficient. And it's not like anything that you can imagine. If such a belief system is understood by human mind and psyche, then you know, why do people still try to follow their forefathers' religion of worshipping idols, worshipping the forces of nature, worshipping something that you know doesn't deserve to be worshipped, gods fighting with each, each other, avatars of gods, demigods, semi-gods. This belief system needs to be really understood from the very core and people need to ask themselves, in their heart and their mind, am I following a religion because my forefathers, my parents were in that religion? Am I following a religion because I came from that geographical area? If this was the case, then of course, truth will never be found, will never be established, and you will never see the fragrance of true reality and true truth. So, what we are asking in Dawawise, we are sincerely inviting you to have a discussion with us in a way that you can learn and we can learn from you, that we can empower ourselves to really cling to the truth when we see it, accept the truth when we find it. And truth is something that we should be all aspiring for, we should be all aspiring to, because one day you will die and I will die. Your understanding of karma that you know you think you know is going to believe um, by your psyche that will bring you back again. Why don't you remember your past lives <clears throat> if that was the case? If you think really karma is an operation, then why don't you remember? Why does no one remember apart from some claims and so on? The only belief system and ideology that makes sense is none other than the pure submission and surrender to the one and only God. And that religion is no other than the religion of submission and surrender. In Arabic, it's known as Islam. So don't be disappointed by this terminology. It's an internal realization. It's a conviction of a conception that an ideology that you will accept and it will be finely tuned with your heart and mind to submit and surrender to none other but to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And that creator, I'm telling you, your heart will not rest until you accept that that creator is unlike the creation. That creator does not share the properties that you give to the creation of limitations. The creator is weak, is finite, is really someone who is imperfect. So we invite you openly with, with all sincerity to really embrace the ideology, that belief system, which is coherent, sensible, something that really makes sense 
to your heart and mind, not only emotionally motivated to believe in a belief system or a religion, but something that your heart and mind at the same time agrees and says, I feel content. Look at the belief that you have. You believe in idols. You believe in idol worship. You think they're going to draw you closer to the absolute reality. And yet the absolute reality it's something that you don't have a clear, clear understanding of because your understanding of absolute reality is something that you are part of. You believe you're part of God and God is part of you or along these ideas of pantheism and panentheism and the mix that you are in. So we request humbly our brothers and sisters in humanity, those of you who call yourself Sanatanis, come back to the sincere submission of yourself to the one who deserves your submission. Sincere submission to the one who deserves your worship because worship of a rat, of a, you know forces of nature, worship of something that you idolize is not something that is your mind accepts. You are just doing this because you have been seeing people doing it. So we can only request you to really come with all humility and humbleness that truth is what matters. It's not that you are born in that region, or it's not that you come from a family who believed in this, because if that was the case, then every single communities in, in the earth will consider their religion to be true. But look at Islam. Islam transcends race. Islam transcends culture. Islam transcends people's ethnicity, people's geographical region, whether they're fat or thin, whether they're rich or they're poor. It is universally acceptable. It is something that the mind and the heart, why am I keeping repeating these two things? Because you should use both your intellect as well as your feelings to drive you to accept the truth. It is the only religion that can set you free. And free is something that we should all be aspiring for. But I don't want to leave um, to any more discussions any further. I want to thank everyone who's been watching our streams and learning and benefiting, and those who are moderating our chats, especially lots of sister Bushra and Iram and other sisters. I can't uh, see the names now, and, and many others. Um, your your participation and your contribution is really appreciated, and those of you know, the brothers and sisters who are sharing and subscribing to our streams and commenting and as well as letting others know in which they will see the light, the light which will set them free. So we are really grateful for your, you know, humble efforts and contribution uh, with us. You are one big family with us in Dawawais family. You're more than welcome to call yourself the family of Dawawais. So I would like to thank you and thank you for the panelists that has joined um, Sister Swati and Brother Sam and also Brother Adnan Rashid and Brother Morris and Brother Brandon who joined earlier. And of course, not to mention Ustad, Brother Hashim, who's been really as a one man um, trying to you know keep the floor um, at bay and in control while I was trying to moderate something uh, differently um, you know, on the backstage as well. So once again, thanks everyone. Alhamdulillah.